The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Feel Good Friday, January 5th, 2024, this sports program starts right now. Football is happening in a massive way this weekend and into Monday. We have week 18 of the NFL season kicking off tomorrow. And this city, Indianapolis, will be in prime time tomorrow night as they host the Houston Texans. And the winner gets a spot in the playoffs. The winner could become the AFC South champion, especially if Jacksonville loses to the Tennessee Titans with Doug Peterson Mm -hmm. saying that Trevor Lawrence is questionable, will be a game-time decision. This one's on ESPN tomorrow night. It is going to be a Electrifying inside of the Lod Haas Lucas Oil Stadium, but that's not the only game. There's 11 different teams that have things on the line this weekend to see if their season will continue into the postseason. And once you get there, who knows what can happen? Once you get into the dance, who knows who will do see do their way to hoisting a Lombo because injuries can happen. We hope they don't. Mm-hmm. We hope Please they don't. No. Teams can get hot. Matchups can be a problem for one team where if they actually drew another seed, they would have been able to get through. All chaos can happen once you make it in the playoffs, and there's still so many teams that are hoping to do as such. We'll talk about it all today. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here as well. And Tone, I want to let you know, whenever I look at this slate for this weekend, mm-hmm. coming off a 10-6 and six weekend, oh, yeah. we Ooh. think to ourselves, damn, how are we going to predict any of this? I have no clue, no idea. There's a graphic that we have with all the backup quarterbacks that are going to be starting this particular weekend, but that doesn't mean they're going to lose. Mm -mm. Backup quarterbacks have come in and absolutely destroyed dreams for teams. Mm -hmm. It's going to be difficult. What should we be looking at, Tony? I would would focus on the games where you know team. both teams are trying and both teams are playing their starters. Obviously, Texans and Colts, it starts with there. And then you go to the Jags who have to win against the Titans. If I would, you know, it doesn't mean the Jags are going to win, but if you like the Jags, you know, go that side. Bucks are in the same situation uh, against the Panthers, I believe. There's a couple, like, obviously, Buffalo and, and the Dolphins late night. That one's for the AFC East, but there's a there's a chance we get to Sunday night and the Dolphins, they're already in the playoffs. So, like, there's, I, there's not a ton of games where, you, like, Green Bay needs a win, okay? Mm-hmm. You know they're going to try. Seattle mm-hmm. needs a win. You know they're going to try. I would... Just stay away but from But on the, the opposite side, can destroy dreams. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, just a week ago, we heard a team, I forget who it was, saying they ain't dancing either, or whatever the case is, because mm-hmm. they weren't sure. going to get in there. And also, this is your last game. Yeah. Everybody knows playoffs. If you're not in the playoffs, you got a whole offseason. Let's lay it all on the line. Yeah. Come right. on. What are we saving it for? Trying to put out good films so we can get on a team next year? Definitely. Mm-hmm. Trying to win one so the offseason's a little bit more positive? For sure. Maybe you're willing to roll the dice a little bit more because you got five, six months afterwards. We shall see. I'm excited for the games to unfold. Forward, and hopefully they will be as electrifying as the NHL had last mm-hmm. night. Wow. 7 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Brad Marchand, captain of the Boston Bruins, guest mm-hmm. of our program yesterday, and his Boston Bruins took on the Pittsburgh Penguins at home. When they were playing at home this season, what was their record? Uh, 11, 2, and 3, I believe. Wow. wow. Tough hey. barn up Pretty there good. in Very Boston. Tough. One of the toughest. And after chatting with Brad yesterday, I thought to myself, wow, I love this guy. The man. He is much more handsome than I thought he was. You know, a lot of people called him a rat, so I just automatically thought this dude was not attractive. He comes Mm -hmm. on the show and he said, people say I'm attractive. And I looked at him, I'm like, yeah, I can see that. Sure. He is pretty attractive. Yeah, absolutely. He's a good leader. Handsome. Good conversation. Mm -hmm. 
took time out of his day on a game day to come chat with us. Mm -hmm. We appreciated that. Come on. But the Pittsburgh Penguins go into Boston and get a massive win. And I know there was a lot of people that was watching this game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we talked about it. There was no sports on. You know, it was like kind of the perfect. It was. It was kind of the perfect recipe for people to get introduced to hockey. You have two teams that are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Two teams that are littered with goats. Two teams that are going to be in this thing in the end. All on a showcase on Thursday night on ESPN. Mm. Let's get to the game. It lived up to the hype. It Man. certainly did. Let's go. 41 seconds in. Guy that was on our show. 41 seconds into the game. Brad Marchand. How you doing? Keep it moving. Goal time. One nothing in Boston. Woo! The captain, you know, we didn't know if maybe we affected his entire day of uh, game day and maybe he was going to be off a little bit. Didn't matter. Nope. Scores a goal 41 seconds into this thing. one nothing. Boston. Then let's not think the pens are out. Uh-uh. Just moments later, Drew O'Connor. Gets the rebound, back of the net, 1-1. One, one. Oh, Damn. my God. Wow. Hey, we're five minutes into this thing. We already got two goals. Yeah. Lightning. We might have a fireworks tonight. Classic. This might be a real game. Well, let's not stop there. The Pittsburgh Penguins, that was fun. That was cute, Marshan. Scoring 41 seconds in. We'll take the next two. How about Ryan Graves? Jeez. Oh, we. Brother of Corey Graves. <laughs> C&I. 2-1. Pittsburgh Penguins in Boston. The number one team in the league, I was told, the Boston Bruins. Most points in the league, uh -oh. I was told. The yeah. Pens are dead. The Pens are old. Uh-uh. They move on. Then the Boston Bruins are going to do what they've done a lot. They answer Pasta. Ooh, yeah. The man whose jersey is in the rafters here because he's so phenomenal. David Pasternak ties it up. Our goalie, not supposed to be there. No. <laughs> no. That's not a good spot. No. But if you've seen old Pasta, he did a little, yeah. a little dangle. Peak. Some sauce. A lot of sauce. Yeah. 2-2. Two, two. Holy hell. This is still the first period. Let's keep it rolling, shall we? The Pittsburgh Penguins ain't no bitches, are they? No way. No. Sidney Crosby, but Jake Gensel. We've done that. He's from Gensylvania, baby. 3-2. Pittsburgh Penguins. What a pass. Man. What a pass. Here we go. Put it right there on he stick 3-2 Pittsburgh Penguins. Is it going to get even better? It is. Lars Eller. 4-2 Hell. What a shot. Taped it. Snipe! Snipe! Come on, boys! <clears throat> Doesn't stop there, though, does it? No. Here's Jeff Carter. It's already 4 2. Oh, this is getting ugly, isn't it? Oh, big dog. Well, Chris Latang puts one in. What happens? Oh, uh, Jeff uh, Carter puts it away. Boys. 5 2 in Boston. It's becoming embarrassing. Clean up I'm, the garbage. I'm FaceTiming Connor Campbell right now. He's cleaning up his apartment, moving to a two bedroom. Okay. okay. Hey, oh. Moving on up. Yeah. Had the family helping him clean it all up. Yeah, I'm FaceTiming man. 5 2. 5 2. Uh, you guys didn't even show up. No. Nice. Didn't even show up. It changed quickly. Oh, yes, no. it did. It changed quickly. It goes from 5-2 all of a sudden after geeky, oh. a Boston Bruin oh. slides one home 5-3 all pass. of a sudden. Now, a two-goal lead is obviously the most dangerous. Yeah, that's right. Because all they need is one more goal, and then all of a sudden, what are we in? A dogfight. 5-3. Mm -hmm. to three. No, Boston's not going to score again. Is that wagon going to continue? Uh, second, second period. Time left. Boom. Uh, <laughs> what are we doing, <laughs> boys? Jake Bob DeBrusque. Boom! Gotcha. I don't know what our goalie's looking at. Okay, we're trying to stop the puck, pal. We're not looking into the crowd. Come on, All Ed. of a sudden, we're 5-4 going into the third. Look out. That's nine goals already. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's electrifying. That's exciting. That's dangles. That's everything. 5-4, they're not going to tie it up, are no. they? Ah. No way the Boston Bruins can tie it up, can they? On. Oh, the guy that came on Ooh. our show. Shorty. Wait, Shorty. What are we doing? The guy we had on our show. What a play. Brad Marchand, filth. Latane. Disgust. Oh. Cook. Chris Letang. And I don't love that. <laughs> okay, and Brad Marchand comes on the show, has two goals. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. But in the end, man, it's 5-5. Five, five. Who's going to change that, I wonder? Oh, I know. Sidney Crosby. Duh. Hits it off a guy's dong. Wow. Skips through the goalie's legs. Come on, 6-5 in Boston. The Penguins knock down the league-leading mm. Boston Bruins on a Thursday night showcase that the NHL couldn't have dreamt of. Stars all over the ice. Goals all over the place. Conversations taking place. Steve Levy on the call in fantastic fashion. Appreciate the love, Steve. We love you as well. And then the Pittsburgh Penguins, the greatest franchise in the history of hockey, gets a big-time dub. What a win for the NHL, Connor Campbell. Yeah, uh, I said this to Nick when I, when I walked in this morning. That Bruins lost us. It was uh, the most devastating loss that I have experienced uh, between the Patriots or the Celtics this entire season. I mean, there hasn't been one game. A lot like, of eyes on that game last A lot night. of eyes on the eyes. game. Only thing on, this is kind of the preview of what the 
you know, post NFL week 18 weekdays are going to be like, which is incredible because, you know, hockey, as everyone could see, is one of the greatest sports on the planet. Now, Brad Marchand, you know, one of the Marchands last night who scored goals, the other, you know, little rat. And to be completely honest with you, oh, yeah. when we do score that fifth goal, yeah. there's not even a question in my brain that we are losing that game. <laughs> not even a question. Even when you scored six, when Sid put that one home and Sid – I mean, Jesus. Off guy's we, zong. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, the, the yeah. hopper has to get out of the way of Swayman. You need to let. You up. think that's easy to do with Sidney Crosby with the ha ha? Uh, I'm aiming dong. Swayman's his name. Swayman's his name. Swayman's oh, so boy. Swayver for the Bruins. Oh, 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 gee, not even close. We're in first. This is this is a win for Pittsburgh. That personally, for me. I think is going to propel them out of that bottom three in the Metropolitan Division. We're not worried about the regular season. No, no, no. Marshan said that yesterday. No, mm-hmm. no. Who is playoff hockey? He yeah. said, "Who cares about regular season? You're just trying to get into the dance." Yeah. He said, "That ain't worth nothing but a, a velvet painting of a whale and a dolphin getting it on, pretty much." Yeah, mm-hmm. great, great saying. So too. everything you're saying about the bottom three, who cares? No, no, and that's it's what Brad January. said. That's what Brad said. Brad said, "Hey, maybe last year we got a little too caught up in those records, and yes, we sure. set them, and now we don't have to think about them anymore forever because they'll." Never be broken, but for Pittsburgh, it is great because they have been hot. Nick said it yesterday. They're seven two one in their last ten. That's only getting better. They are a fantastic franchise, yep. even though a lot of the people who work there might suck. But at the end of the day, when you think about a couple properly, well, couple place, may, yeah, maybe because who knows who put them there? Who cares? Whatever. Well, I and guess you're right. We didn't even go up the chain. Who, who knows? Well, they, who knows who they the hired as well? You know, below them, those people. Who? who, know, who <clears throat> that's not what it's about. It's about the Hawks. <laughs> On the ice. And I am just glad that we got to showcase how great the game is as Last a whole. Night, yeah. Big one. Because really, there wasn't anything to watch. Now, if you're like Gumpy and you want to take Austin P plus 18 and a half on the road at Sacramento State, that's one thing. But when you have. Bruins, Penguins playing in prime time. Not just Bruins, Penguins. A prime time player like Sidney Crosby, Brad Marchand, because going pasta, for, pasta, what? Getzel, what? Getzel, what? All the big names showed up. Yeah, it was incredible. It Except was, for Gino, I guess Gino could have scored. If Gino scores, you have all the big names basically doing their job for the NHL in a prime time game with a lot of eyes. Yeah, we know why Gino didn't score because Brad put the word out on the Bruins bench, like, hey, we're not, we're not saying anything. To Gino. Sure. Gino is not. I did see some people say that one of your tweets potentially pissed off Sidney Crosby, and that's why he went full madman and took over the game. Which one? What tweet? I only You're getting real arrogant all year. Really? I only complimented yeah. him. I only complimented him. I didn't say no, anything bad about this. No, you said we suck. Yeah, bingo. When did, when did I say I that? I think you actually said suck it. Super penguins. early. Yeah. I, don't remember, no, I don't remember doing that. That never happened. You guys were lying. That, that, Still on made that up. Yeah, those things are real. I never said suck it. I never said it, suck it, Sid. Never. Ever would no, do No, we never said you said suck it, Sid. What did I say? We're talking about you saying the penguins Penguins suck. Well, I did say that, and it does. That was record, at seven twelve p.m. Does their record? That was when they were probably up one nothing. Right Forty one seconds in, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that yeah, was like real high life. That was my favorite part of the game. One nothing. I Facetime Pat, laugh in his face. Two one. Pat Facetimes me, laughs in my face. Wow, that second Facetime's going on. Pause the goal. Two two. So I think after that one, mm-hmm. after the two two Facetime, there's like, no yeah. more Facetime. Uh, uh, yeah, let's, let's meet at the end of the game here because clearly it Mackenzie, was... baby girl, was even laughing in his face. Yeah, she was <laughs> laughing right in his face. Oh, his no. face popped up on a Facetime, mm-hmm. and she got <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. laughing right mm-hmm. in his yeah, face. Yeah, quick cackle. The cr- craziest thing about that Facetime was Mackenzie's first words were "Go Bruins." So I, it was Whoa. an awesome little night for all of us. Nice. Pretty early for that. So thought, congrats to you. I thought yeah, it yeah. been certainly being able to say that many syllables. Yeah. A smart baby would be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but she is a smart baby. That's why she'll never say that. Well, I don't know. I, I thought I heard it yesterday. Anyways, go hockey, dude. Yep. Oh, oh, great awesome. work, Good hockey. hockey. It was great hockey last night. Nick and I, to your point, we thought that was going to end bad for the Penguins that as we were watching. Very bad. If you remember last year in November, the same thing. Penguins were up 5-2. Boston comes back, wins at 6-5 in OT. Oh, couldn't forget it. Hey, stick taps for the hockey. What great work, that? hockey. Great work, hockey. Great night. And it, the hero won in the end. So yeah. Sidney I don't know Crosby about that. did what Sidney Crosby does and has mm-hmm. been doing for the last 18 years. Actually, you are right. The hero did win because, like all sports in Boston, it's Boston versus everybody. And Detroit mm. can act like they made that, but they didn't because the Bruins have been at the we top did. of the game forever. Uh, and so have the Patriots. And, oh, yeah, the Celtics are in first as well. And the Red Yeah, Sox. I would deflect every other sport as well. How's Boston College doing, too? We're just going to oh, start man. adding. They're, they're what about the New Hampshire team? Yeah. Are they Boston live for your dying? Right, Boston right. College is looking at this stud linebacker from up north in Indiana, Noah, who everyone right now. Well, wants. he's going to West Virginia from what I heard. Yeah. I don't think so. A lot of naysayers are saying he's not going to be able to make it potentially athletically, well, but I'm thinking uh, I know a guy. Yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I, I'm thinking there's a chance. I know a guy, too. They're saying coming. this guy. 
Not fast enough, can't jump high enough, can't really? dance. Yep. But the thing about him is lunch pail guy. Well, yeah. He'll be the first one in, yep. last one out. Mm -hmm. He's going to do it all. He's going to give his best. That's why he was taking a recruiting visit to West Virginia. Yeah, well, I mean, yep. when your name is like that, some names are destined for greatness. And we, I think everyone who stumbled upon his name last night knew this guy's first round pick, bona fide. Yeah. He's going to BC. He's going to break all Luke Keekley records. I know that's what he wants to do. I, I honestly don't know how that one's going to go. Me neither. I'm pretty excited about it. No, yeah. he's from Indiana. Right. Mm -hmm. He's visiting West Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, college football. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> that's coming right down the pipe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For us. It certainly is. Kind of a perfect storm. Boy. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of things. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cross Not going to get me. No hey, way. Not going to get me. Not a chance. No way. Mm -mm. I had some people, you know. After the whole Lank situation, mm -hmm. sure. Say, uh, well, was was Pat going to say instead of Reese? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Let me uh, let me go ahead and let that be known uh, forever. That's why this Noah uh, situation no. that's happening forever. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly one that we'll figure it out. Hey, yeah. listen, we just yeah. learned of it yesterday. Exactly. We just exactly. learned of it yesterday. We will figure out a way to make sure we're not just getting. Yeah. Just that one. Right. Mm -hmm. Every time. Got to say the name real quick. It's almost like it becomes Polynesian name all of a sudden. Yep. Yeah. First name, last name, just kind of. Right. You know, all, putting it all, all in one. We'll yeah, exactly. Might be a tiger situation. Well, they, his name might be No And. Yeah. You know, yeah. And his I, last name I is, so. is, is the last half mm -hmm. yeah. yep. of his name. Might have to do that. Yeah. Anyways, no, not your fault, pal. No. no. What are you going to do? Your fault, but good luck out there, man. Mm -hmm. You got this. Maybe play another sport too, you know? That'd be better for all of us, for yeah. me. Yep. Yeah, for, for sure. God, could you imagine Reese Davis? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to find Chris, out. Chris Fowler. <laughs> Heaven forbid he's a good football player too. Yeah. If he's, if he's yeah. damn good. Uh, you know, just first look at him, and I don't want to be too uh, racist. Sure. I'm not sure. You know, I, linebacker, uh, he's a big white. Yeah, but he might be. You're right. I have no idea. I'm just looking at one photo. They, mm -hmm. I, I only seen one photo of yep. this particular uh, uh, fella. Sure. Uh huh. Noah. Noah. Mm -hmm. Known. Yeah. Yep. Known. 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 Yeah. Known. Known. Yeah. Known. 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 Yep. That's going to be fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. But I think our society is ready for it. Yeah, it's his name. I, I mean. No, but I think our society has got to a point now where I think we're ready for it. Now, there's always going to be, right? I think that, that Lang situation mm -hmm. was one of the best that I've seen in a long time where, like, Okay, yeah, we're all having a good time with this. Mm -hmm. Now, there's always going to be the people. Outlaws. Of course. There's always going to be the people. No matter what. Okay, we need to not let those people make us think that that's a majority of the people. That is not. Because when a situation like that happens on the internet, everybody needs to have eyes on it and be like, oh, look at us come together here. Mm -hmm. This is a good time. Yes. This is what relationships actually look like, by the way. Mm -hmm. Whenever we all come together, we're going to continue to do that. Yep. That's why what happened immediately on Tuesday following that is like, ah, oh, come on, let's yeah. go. We can right. still do this. But to be clear, they, yeah, huh. What's going to happen on Tuesday? I can't wait. <laughs> we'll find out. We certainly will. A mm -hmm. lot of talk, <clears throat> chatter about that. But we want to do this, continue to do this. And we thank everybody for joining us and being a part of it. Now, with that being said, shout out to the NHL yesterday. They had a massive game. They'll continue to do that all season. It is an electrifying sport. The NFL's got some drama kind of cooking. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. You know, you got some drama kind of cooking. We got a head coach where all of his players are calling for him. We'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. And then we got Jamar Chase happening, yeah, no. uh, doing a conversation, a press conference, an interview at his locker. That's maybe the most uncomfortable I've ever... I've ever witnessed in my entire life. Weird. I don't know why everybody's just so comfortable to ask like very personal business stuff like so publicly. And I think Jamar Chase handled this very, very well. But I don't know how any of this is like proper locker room questions to a player that's potentially staring down a contract. Here's Jamar Chase in the locker room talking about his contract for some reason. <clears throat> we'll just apologize up front. How do you want your contract? Probably so, yeah. Would you want guaranteed money in year two? Like, what is this? I don't know. You're going a little Specifics. too far now, buddy. <laughs> I don't know. Gave you a little spice. Don't take all of it. <laughs> you taking less if it meant they could keep taking less? T. Higgins, T. Uh, hmm. That's a good question. You know what I'm saying? Uh, who knows? It depends how much I'm taking. It depends at the end of the day. Because then I might not really be taking a cut. How about you? Are you, you going to write three somewhere. less articles somewhere. so that this you know person can write more? from mm -hmm. somewhere else. How cognizant are you that you know, this it looks like you and Joe are going to be you know, the foundation of whatever this is going to be like? <clears throat> like it's be a that's a good question. Uh, I mean, that's mm -hmm. cool. I mean, make everyone else around us better. I mean, that's the whole objective. That's the reason why they got us. You know what I'm saying? we, we got to lead by example. They look at us as leaders. So... 
That lead by example. That was a great answer. Yeah. That was a great question. T. Higgins might have literally been playing ping pong two feet away. Uh, yep. And they asked, are you willing to take less money so T. Higgins can maybe get paid? It's like, <laughs> how is that okay? You know what I mean? Like, how is yeah. that an okay question? And how do you want your contract to be structured? You want my guarantee second year? Second what do you want second year? It's like, get the hell out. What are we even doing? I guess it's the end of the year. You don't have much to play for. But that's a wild position to put somebody in. Now, for the media people, I guess they have a good relationship. And Jamar Chase handled that very well. But what if he would have just flipped that thing? Well, I don't know. Are you willing to ask less questions so this person can mm -hmm. do it? How about you take a demotion so that this person can maybe get your job? Because you've been holding this job for 35 years. There's only one of you. This person's looking for it. Why don't you get the hell out of there? And you? Okay. What if, uh, are you willing to help out somebody that's below... Annie Agar doesn't have a job with any. Are you willing to? <laughs> are you willing to? So she can maybe get in there to that. Like, why is that? Why was that okay? I have no idea. As I was listening to it, because the the thing was, T uh, Jamar Chase teases about taking less money for T Higgins. It was like, okay. So as I'm watching it, I'm like, why is that even coming up in a locker room conversation? Why is it happening? And as I watched it, I got more and more mad. And I'm like pumped for Jamar Chase the way he handled it. But like, that is not normal. I don't think that's normal conversation out there. That's a bad spot to be in. Yeah, especially asking like the, you make them heal real oh, yeah. quick. Yeah, the specifics real of quick money like the guarantees specific in year one or two. That I just wish Jamar was like, hey T, come here. Like, let's talk about this. They're asking, so let's just talk about it together. What do you want? What do, what do I want? Let's see how much where we can meet in the middle here, man. Hey T, you know how general manager's job is put a roster together and utilize the salary cap gymnastics that everybody else has been able to do. We're both going to be able to get paid, right? Other teams have been able to do that. So why don't they go ask the GM how they're going to yeah. pay both of us mm -hmm. instead of asking Jamar Chase if he's willing to take like, that's a t they're setting him up for bad leverage too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In his negotiation. I mean, they set him up to be a bad guy, set him up to be a bad teammate. Bad friend and also bad leverage business wise. It was like, how is that anywhere near acceptable in that locker? Well, that's what I can't stand is like, as fans, obviously, you always talk about like, yeah, you would love to have a guy like Jamar Chase take like a hometown discount, but for like a reporter to insinuate that like that's almost his responsibility to do mm -hmm. that so T Higgins can stay there when he's still on his rookie contract and who knows how much he's making in endorsements and stuff like that, but like he's earned whatever money he's about to get. Like he's unbelievable. So like to sit there and, and like, like you said, insinuate and kind of put him in a position where it's like, okay, well, if I say the wrong thing here, then like when I go to negotiate, is that going to be held against me? Like that just, I don't know. It's it's just bullshit. Hey, will you take a pay cut uh, for your job? Will you do that mm -hmm. with what you've done? We're not Let's talking go. about me. Why don't you go on a record? You want to go on a record and say that and just put yourself behind the eight ball before the negotiation even begins for the next one? It's like, I understand the thought and the hope is that you're looking out for each other. And I assume Jamar Chase will think about that mm -hmm. as he goes in there. I think Joey Burrow thought about it a little bit whenever the way they structured that whole thing. So I believe that is a thought over there, but that was weird. I don't think that should become normal. I would like that not to no, become normal. No. If guys are representing themselves, like is Jamar Chase have an agent? I would assume Jamar Chase has an agent. I assume probably. as well. If Jamar Chase is representing himself, I think that's fair game. If he has an agent, though, I think those questions – are directed at general manager mm -hmm. who's going to have to make that decision, an agent who's going to be negotiating that. I just didn't like that, but I did appreciate how Jamar Chase handled it. Way to be an adult in there. Good work, Jamar. Way to be an adult in there, Jamar. Speaking of adults, ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is a man who's potentially going to be a governor, maybe even president of the United States. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so. This man is one of the greatest Texas Longhorns to ever wear the Longhorn on the side of his helmet. The way he won out actually led people to write country music songs mm -hmm. That's right. about how sad they were about the ending of his collegiate career, which was one of one, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. He would go on the NFL and play how many seasons? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say 13. 13 seasons yeah. in the NFL. Nobody's going to talk about that. Able to handle a brand new system, brand uh -huh. new culture, right. brand new locker room. Right. Was friends with everybody. Mm -hmm. And on Monday, he was on the sideline of the Sugar Bowl. Yeah, he was, Hell yeah. Right? watching his Texas Longhorns lose to the Washington Huskies. Mm. But every rose has its thorn, and every cowboy has a horse that bucks too hard. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, Colt McCoy. Yay! 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 What up, guys? Hey, Colt, thanks for joining hey, us. Hey, hold, hold on real quick, man. Yes! Yeah! yeah! <laughs> there it is. All right, all right, cool, cool. We feel, hey. This was awesome. You should have seen the mad scramble before the show started. How many cowboy hats we got in here? We need to show proper respect to Colt McCoy. Colt, thank you for joining us, bud. We're yeah, big fans. Yeah, yeah. 
Woo. Hey, man. Thanks for having me this morning. How you guys doing? Hey, we're great, man. Thank you for doing the Sugar Bowl on Monday, especially with Texas being in the game. Let's talk a little bit about that because as I introduce you, I talked about how you at Texas being a Longhorn legend forever, you are, and how the end of your run with Texas, actually, Marty Smith actually wrote a uh, country music song about the end of your career at Texas. I don't know if you know that, if you've heard it. Uh, he told us that was the case. Getting back in there now, and you're in the NFL for 13 years, so obviously your fall is a pretty pretty big busy getting back around the texas program here on monday is that normal have you done that and what was the experience like getting back with the longhorn folks dude first of all thanks for letting me do it thanks for asking it was incredible i i think it's been so long since i've been in the college football atmosphere like being in the sugar bowl i know it's a it's a playoff game but um just the texas fans the vibe the energy uh the game it was nothing short of incredible. Like I had goosebumps the whole game. And, you know, a lot of people have been giving me heat because they were like, you're supposed to be neutral. You're supposed to be calling this game. I'm like, no, no, I'm a, I'm a Texas fan. Pat McAfee told me I'm calling this game like a Texas boy. And it was a phenomenal game. You know, we came up short, uh, had our chances in the end. But uh, just, just the overall just feel, energy, um, it was it was incredible. Did you Nothing do it? Like it? Did you have any uh, nostalgia, little glory days? Because we were at college same time, mm -hmm. you know. So I got a chance to witness the Colt McCoy led Texas Longhorns team in real time. Got a chance to meet you a couple times. You were a good dude. You handled it all very well. Had a lot of highs, obviously some lows. That's football. Did you do a little nostalgia, a little trip back? And how often do you get to do that? You know, I guess I, I didn't really know what it was going to be like going back to a game. Really, I, I'd only been to like one game in 14 years since I've been playing. So this was the first time to be like on a sideline. I mean, everywhere I went, people were calling my name. Cole Kublik thought they were saying his name, but we were, it was like. Good self-awareness, we Cole. Yep. Good self-awareness. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, it was great. A lot of the fans are amazing. The Texas fans uh, are the best. Um, you know, I, I, I have so much respect for them and, and I'm so humbled and grateful for the times that we had in college. And, uh, those were, I mean, as you can say, those, were, those were the times of our life, man. It was, it was, that was the glory days. Yeah. I had a blast. Uh, I don't know if you spent your college career the same way I did. Uh, uh, I think you had a little bit more responsibility than I did <laughs> and you handled it much more mature than I did. You would obviously then go on to the NFL 13 years. Phenomenal way to go. Hey, way to give back to football. Hey boy, yeah. oh. Way to give the football. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the football. In the conversation we were just having was Jamar Chase being asked about his contract at his locker going into week 18, which is just an absurd thing. But you played football from a generation before to a generation now. How much change has there been in locker room, in kind of how the day-to-day -day is for the NFL for you? And do you plan on still playing in the NFL? Have you officially retired? Or where are you with all of it? Yeah, man, great questions. I think I think the league has changed a bunch. You know, when we first came in, it was two a days, right? You know, your 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 laundry still wet from the washing machine afternoon when you're going out to practice, right? Those days have changed, um, and I think just the league has changed a, a little bit from X's and O's, from philosophies. You know, the speed of the game. You know, you know, coming into the league, it was a lot of twenty-one and twelve personnel, kind of downhill football. Now it's spread them out. Lots have changed, um, but I still love the game. Like the, the, I love the NFL. I love the X's and O's. I love preparing, um, breaking teams down, matchups, all of that. Like th that's that's really what I love about the NFL. Um, and so I'm not saying no to play. You know, unfortunately, I had elbow surgery last January. I battled through it. I, you know, I had a good training camp. Ended up getting released by the Cardinals, and um, I just wanted to make sure my elbow was um better than what it was when i ended at the cardinals it just didn't feel great spending a lot of time on rehab like i've gotten some treatments uh all year long and if the right opportunity comes up next year you know i might jump on it um but i've really enjoyed my time with my family my kids experiencing a little free time some business stuff like i'm i'm in i'm in a really good place and i would say i'm just very thankful and and you know over the top grateful for you know getting to play 14 years in the NFL for sure. Okay, so door's still open, but would have to be the right opportunity, obviously, at this stage of it all. what Did you get Tommy John? What happened to your elbow? No, Tommy John's over here on the inside. I tore the tendon on the top of my elbow. Like, it, you know, it's, it, when you're dealing with tendons, they just take forever to heal. 
Of you know, you've messed with him a couple times. Like it's okay. Like I can throw a football. It's more the can I do it three, four, five weeks in a row, practicing all week, playing in the games. Like that's that's where I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And I, you know, managing that, feeling that out. I can say that's feeling a lot better now that I've given it a lot of time off. But you know, if the right opportunity comes up, we'll see. Okay, I love to hear that. You know, you were a backup quarterback for a lot of that. And obviously, your last in at the Arizona Cardinals, you're a backup quarterback. And you just talked about, I love the X's and O's. I love breaking down the game. That's a massive piece of the backup quarterback's mm -hmm. job. Almost like giving jobs and, hey, we need you to figure this out. We need you to do this. Also, need to run against our defense. There's a lot of different titles. And a lot of people assume the backup quarterbacks would be great coaches if they were to get into that. Has that crossed your mind? Have you thought about being a coach? Because a lot of people say, Cole McCoy's going to be governor of texas uh -huh. and they automatically just put you right into the political world yeah. uh which yeah. hey good luck hey good, good luck, good luck. I, I heard yeah. they hate they hate people over there. Yeah, it's tough it is a, i've been in there a couple times they've dropped me in there a few times we've got in there a few times oh, they're mean over there it's a real deal now i understand oklahoma no probably says some terrible things to you as well mm -hmm. but i'm just saying it's real what is the future have you thought about coaching because it feels like you'd be the perfect guy in that whole thing yeah, man, that's a great question. You know, my granddad was a coach. My dad was a coach. Um, I haven't really thought a whole lot about it, but I can say is that the older I got in the NFL, the more I was, you know, kind of in that backup role, um, the more I really enjoyed, you know, each day, like going to practice, running the scout team, seeing the looks that our defense was going to show the, oppo the opponent that week, being able to give some feedback to the defensive coordinator, Hey, I saw this easy. You should switch this up, blitz this out of a different front, all those types of things. Like I, I really dug deep in, into the scheme and philosophy of different coaches and systems. Um, and I, I enjoyed that piece of it. Right. I, I enjoy seeing matchups and, and, you know, formation things to get the look we want. And it happens in a game and we hit it like th those are all like really, really fun things. Fulfillment. So That's the fulfillment door. there. Right. That feels like real That's fulfillment. fulfillment. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to close the door on coaching. I'm not going to close the door on anything, right? Whether you, you know, politics, coaching, Ooh. I don't know what the future Ooh. holds. But Ooh. for me, like you asked the question about football, I love the game. And so regardless if I get to play again next year, if I go into coaching whatever, I want to stay involved in some capacity because it's been what I've done my whole life. You said your grandpa was a coach, your dad, your father was a coach, your father's father was mm -hmm, a coach. Mm -hmm. That's done in Texas. Are we are we talking like fire that pigskin boy type type like always going to be <laughs> quarterback? Is that life? Uh, hey, I have three girls and one boy. And everybody always asks me like, is you, are you going to let your son play football? I'm like, man, listen, the lessons that football has taught me of discipline, of responsibility, right. of dedication, of teamwork, of leadership. I, mean, I could go down the list over and over and over of, of what football has meant to me. And does that all outweigh the risk of getting hurt? Of course it does, right? If you sign up to play football, there's a 100% chance you're going to get hurt, right? We, we all know that, right? But I feel like I became the, the man that I am and, and, you know, the competitor that I am and learned a lot of the lessons you know, in my life through playing sport, right? It's the best thing ever. Hell yeah, Cole. Cole. Hell yeah, Cole. Cole. <laughs> Hell yeah. Another thing you added in there, you didn't add in there, is like working when you're tired. You know, like there's going to be days where you're not 100%. Mm -hmm, you're, mm -hmm. you know, like you're tired. You didn't sleep well. You're sore. But, oh, but the game's going to happen. The practice is going to happen. So, like, battling through adversity is another thing that sports, like, automatically gets. So, I think, like, mental toughness even grows a little bit. Physical toughness. Absolutely. It's like sports are the greatest, Colt. I'm so happy to hear that from you. And I, you heard that little. Oh, yeah. I see him at a. Uh, podium, no, yeah. <laughs> bolo tie, bolo, yeah, for sure, uh -huh. for sure. American flag, yep. oh, pin, pin mm -hmm. right here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Texas there's gonna, pin on the other side. There's yeah. gonna be three doofuses standing on that stage. Where they got no idea, what's coming. Star, <laughs> they got no idea what's coming for Colt McCoy. Connor has a question for you, Colt. Yeah, Colt, obviously, you mentioned it. You know, you, you were in Arizona this training camp in the last two years, and during that time, it felt like the Kyler, you know, noise around him got so loud, whether it was the stipulations 
in the contract or, you know, what he was doing in his free time. And people were kind of piling on him a little bit uh, as someone who is as close to anyone to Kyler, especially just seeing his day to day process. What is that like? What did you think about, you know, what people were saying about Kyler, especially as someone who knew him pretty closely? And then since you had the training camp, uh, Jonathan Gannon, when he came in, what was kind of the shift in the building, would you say, from the previous regime to the now Gannon regime? Yeah, good questions. I think I'll hit the Kyler one first. Um, listen, I, I was I had I was around Kyler for you know two full seasons, almost three, and you know I I love Kyler. I don't think people understand um, first of all how intelligent he is, how smart he is. Um, he knows the game really well. Uh, he plays it off of feel better than anybody I've ever been around. Like things that he can see and feel that's coming, like. I think that's why you know the offense with Cliff, he, you know, he gave him some flexibility to be able to see and get to things and check out of some things. Like he, Cliff trusted him to do some of that. Um, you know, then he experiences his his ACL and his knee, and anybody who's gone through that is you know obviously a really tough thing to go through. Uh, but he's worked really hard, and and I would say that he's played really really well um, coming out of that. And um, listen, I Kyler's a good person. Like you know. He's super sweet coming over to the house, hanging out with my kids, you know, playing wiffle ball with my son out in the front yard. Oh, like, we spend a lot of quality kid. time. He's together, cooking your cooking kid in wiffle ball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hate, hey, hey, my boy Jed's got a swing now. He, he might be, he might be a baseball player. We'll see. Oh, hey, well, um, hey whenever. Fire that pitch, you know, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine you know I mean? But, but I'm just saying, like, you know, Kyler's the ultimate competitor, right? He gets inside those white lines, like, he, he wants to win and he holds people to a high standard. You know, he holds himself to a high standard. A lot of times that comes off as like, you know, you know, kind of extreme, you know, body language, those sort of things. But it all comes from a good place. And I, I mean, Kyler's one of the best athletes I've ever been around. I mean, he does things that, um, you know, nobody that I've been around can do. He's fast. He's quick. He's shifty. And he puts the ball in the money. He's accurate. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, for me playing quarterback, I don't care if you're 6'5 or if you're 5'10 like Kyler, like putting the ball in the money is what the game's about. And he does that consistently. And it's, it's impressive. And, you know, listen, I, I got a front row seat to it. I hope that he, you know, continues to play great and has a lot of opportunities and stays in Arizona and all those things. But I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a fan. How about Gannon whenever he came into the building? And Gannon and Kyler have had a little back and forth now where Gannon came out and said he's a 1,000% sure that Kyler is the start of the future. And then Kyler came out and said, I run through a wall for Gannon because I know he always has my back. Did you get to experience that? Did you get to meet Gannon at all? And what are your overall thoughts? on? Because all we saw from him early was when he was introducing himself mm -hmm. uh, to some players. And he said, pew, pew. Shock, yeah. shock, <laughs> explosives. It was hard. That was tough, dude. We all saw. We <laughs> all saw. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't yeah. want to. We didn't yeah. want to. We had to, though. We, the, the Arizona Cardinals putting that out, too. Social media today. That's a whole other animal. But, like, what is? it seems like him and Kyler are working. What do you know about it? And have you heard from Kyler throughout this season? Yeah. Hey, listen. I, again, it's a great dude. I, I think that whole staff, Monty, the front, you know, leading the front office as the new GM, hiring Gannon and his staff. Like they're all really, really good people. You know, I know they, they released me, but um, I think anytime you have a new staff and new regime, like you got to give them some time to do what they want to do and get their people in there. You know, I've unfortunately been through coaching changes a lot in my career, and I was there to play for Cliff and for Kime and for that staff, right? Um, I would have loved to stay and, you know, kind of lead the way until Kyler got healthy this year. But I, I totally, you know, I, I'm good with it. Like, I know I know what that's like. I've been around long enough. I'm a vet. Like, um, and I think Gannon's a really good coach. I think, you know, he came in and he set the expectations uh, and made it very clear to everybody what, what the goals are, how we're going to do it, what, what, what it's going to look like day to day. And um, I know that Gannon has a picture of, of uh, what the Arizona Cardinals team needs to look like. And, you know, he's, he's on his way. I mean, they had a huge – Huge win last week. They've yes. they've won, you know, some – they've been competitive, right? Their offensive line is playing good. Kyler's playing good. James Conner's a monster. Um, they've got some good receivers. Like And, and Nick Rollis as a defensive coordinator, young guy, got to spend a ton of time with him, you know, talking ball. And I think he's he's one of the best young coaches I've been around in a long time. Brilliant. And so, I I, okay. I, I mean, I'm I'm bullish on the Cardinals. I think they're, I think they're a good staff. And, 
Um, I think they'll, I think they'll figure it out. And again, like I have no hard feelings. Like I love the game and I know where they wanted to go. And, you know, my elbow was banged up and I, you know, I get it, but, um, I'll always love the, love the Cardinals. I love to hear the way you described that whole thing there, because there was probably a conversation where you're like, I, you know, you guys are trying to find your guy. Like I could potentially be mm-hmm. to help out your guy too. <laughs> you know I mean? Like there's a chance, but then you said, I get it though. You know, cause that's what happens. Regime changes. There's a lot of, I mean, and people don't want to talk about it. It's certainly ego, you know, mm-hmm. they, they don't want to chat about it, but it's like, who's going to get the credit for this team? You know, mm-hmm. if it happens, that's just a, a matter of reality right. for the judgment of general managers. That's just how it goes. It's even still happening in Pittsburgh, kind of, all the way up until this point, about the beginning of the Tomlin era mm-hmm. and everything else that's kind of taking place. That's how they're judged. So I see why they do it. But every once in a while, you think, you're, like, whenever the coach changed GM and head coach, I mean, Peyton Manning got cut, obviously. Yeah. And everybody talks about <laughs> yeah. that. But, like, he's not the only one. Like, Dallas Clark, get the mm-hmm. hell out of here. Gary Brackett, get the hell out of here. Charlie Johnson, Jeff Saturday, what? like, legends. Ryan Dean, get the, like, mm-hmm. Joseph Adai. What? Yeah. Dominic Rhodes, get the, like, what? I'm just going through it. In my head, our whole team, basically, just got <laughs> cut except for me, Robert, Reggie, and Adam Vinatieri. That was pretty much it. It's like, I was way too young and dumb to say anything, but that was, like, my first time really seeing it all take place. Like, oh, they want this to be in their image almost, mm-hmm. in their name. And obviously 13 years at a quarterback position, you've seen it as well. I appreciate you not having any hard feelings. And I think that Cardinals team has a chance. Oh, yeah. Hey, that city's awesome. We love Phoenix. So I hope that team gets going. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it could be the greatest destination for any free agent. I mean, Phoenix, Scottsdale, <laughs> the weather's phenomenal. Like, indoor stadium, on grass. I mean, what? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great place. And all I see, yeah. you know, golf mecca. <laughs> yeah. Do you golf? I assume you golf. Yeah, I love to golf. Here, here we go. Got to put my Matthew Travis. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, go play some golf. Yeah, you know, it's going to be tough to golf in a cowboy hat. But yeah, every person <laughs> that ends up going to the Cardinals, all their social media turns into in the off season is them golfing uh-huh. at five star yeah. golf clubs every single place. That's right. You're going to have to figure That's it out right. at some point over there. I hope they do. Ty has a question for you, Colt. Colt, when you look at the landscape of college football right now and like where Texas is at, we know that their you know kind of their boosters are one of the most powerful in the sport. We had Mac Brown on a couple. Couple years ago and he basically said during you guys' run like hey every time we won we were relieved and then if we lost you know we were just devastated so you, you almost didn't even get to enjoy it but we've heard a lot about them being back in recent years and obviously they go to the college football playoff this year do you think with you know NIL and everything that's going on there that Texas is all the way back and we've heard how much you know Arch Manning is reportedly making from NIL when you see that do you ever think to yourself like well, shit! If that would have been around when I was playing, I would have been. I, yeah, I would. I would have been making twenty million dollars a year playing. Yeah, man. Uh, whew, you're hot guys, bud. I wish you guys yeah. could score some points. Yeah, me Cole. too. Um, me too. Oh, jeez. Damn shame. Jeez. <laughs> what was the score of that bowl game? Thirty-five nothing. What was the score of the Big Ten championship? Twenty-six nothing. Jeez. Oh, boy. Jeez. I mean, it was a bowl game. But yeah. I could have been five wide. On his way up. You look sweet in a cowboy hat. Playing with a third string quarterback, you know. I mean, guys never going to take whoa, a snap. Whoa, 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 whoa. Third whoa, whoa, string whoa, quarterback. Whoa, whoa. whoa, I heard that's a OK. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, typically it is, but not when you got Deacon Hill back. You, only, you can only do so much. You can only do so much. He said some things about Deacon Hill this year. I don't think Deacon Hill was ever going to have the confidence to maybe do anything no. No. on that particular field. Shut out the last two games. Yeah. <laughs> oh not great. God. Not great. <laughs> that's Good how run. Buddy leaves. That's how Buddy leaves uh-huh. the school. Remember, he was protesting because they were forcing him to leave. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know what? Goose egg in the championship. Yeah. Yep. Goose egg in the bowl game. Exactly. Gotcha. Let me throw my best stuff out here. <sighs> what an asshole. <laughs> Cold, sorry for bringing that up. Sorry for bringing that no. up. No, that's I know. Name. That's my bad. Yeah, it's actually your fault. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah anyways. Uh, uh, no, going back to Texas, I think, um, yeah, I, obviously NIL has changed the changed the game, right? It, you know, I think Nick Saban said it best. Like, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's the semi-pro league, right? And I, I think Texas has an edge there. I really do. I think Sark, you know, his experience in the NFL um, – calling offenses in the NFL, um, you know, seeing how the NFL works. I think, it, you know, college football is a little bit more corporate now, you know, um, and, and Texas has a lot of resources. I think they have put themselves in a position over the last three years with Sark to kind of 
Um, you know, they got to the college football playoff, had a chance to win. Um, and, you know, now moving into the SEC, I think they're going to compete. And I think they're going to compete really well. Um, I think everybody's pretty bullish on them. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm fired up. You know, I'm disappointed in the loss. Like everybody, you know, turnovers and penalties will always, always come back and get you. Um, but you know, I don't know what Quinn's going to do. I think if Quinn comes back, I think they're, they're going to be right there. They're going to be in the mix, right? I think he, he's, he's improved so much. Um, but I, again, like, I, I don't know, he might decide to take off to the league and, you know, insert Arch Manning. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Arch Manning too, that Manning factory, you know, we can, in the Manning enterprise uh -huh. in the Manning business, yeah, right. you know, I got a chance to see it operate. We get to operate alongside of it now a few different times a year. It's like when Arch went to Texas, they are completely cool with him, red shirting. Mm -hmm. And even if he's supposed to sit another year, there's not even like a thought of him. Like, going with him. yep, the boy needs to learn anyways. Yeah. Like that's yeah. how, you yeah. know, like the Manning. No, obviously they're in a situation yeah. financially where they can do that. And Arch is going to get an opportunity with the NFL. No matter what. No yeah. matter what at some point. But I appreciate the fact that the Mannings are like, no, let the boy sit. Like mm -hmm. that, is, that is what he needs to do. It seems like he's having a college life too. Oh, a yeah. little bit. Right? So he's yeah. almost living like a normal human being. I think if we go back in time, though, like the question was phrased, you're a billionaire during your time in Texas if NIL happens. Legit. You know, just like maybe an oil company <laughs> even gives you yeah. Yeah. like an entire couple bridge. Of rigs, yeah. Yeah. But that's, like that, is it? <laughs> right? Right. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy. You know, I'm 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 actually very thankful that these guys can can benefit off their name, image, and likeness. I'd you know, I don't know I don't know how the pay for play stuff works. I think that's a little bit gray, but it's obviously not changing. It's here, I mean, and teams and schools are just gonna have to adapt. Um, yeah, and I, I would say that you would have been a billionaire. Just say <laughs> at least you would have been a billionaire. Daddy. There's a chance. Oh yeah, hundred hey, million. I, yeah. I probably would have made more than what I'm making as a backup quarterback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, especially down in Texas. From what I've heard, the money that's involved at the University of Texas, and you said like the Texas uh, football team set up to be in a good spot with mm -hmm. this change of the NIL, with the amount of money around there. There's a lot of money around Austin, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and that money is only growing around Austin, Texas. Fast. And with what you were able and where your team was able to take them to, it's like in the way you carried yourself as Mr. Texas. Mm -hmm. It was like, that would have been fantastic. Pat White, same thing in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. I think about that a lot. Pat White would have made oh. all of the money. Him mm -hmm. and Steve Slayton would have made all of the money oh, in West Virginia. I loved watching Pat White play. He was such a stud. He oh. I got to watch him a lot. I, mean, he, 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 I rode his coattails to a lot of awesome things. Yeah, I love watching him play. It would be normally like the first play of the game, too. You could tell what type of game it was going to be. Because normally the first one, it's either going to be a 75-yard run, 80-yard run, or maybe mm -hmm. it was only going to be like seven to eight yards. It's like, all right, they might have a chance here. Yeah, battle. Yeah. Normally it was like, Pat's going to kill this team. But back in the day, I think about you guys – whenever this NIL thing happens, and then now the Reggie Bush yes. Heisman situation is getting brought to light, too, as Caleb posts in his penthouse. Did you see that photo of his penthouse? So nice. Yeah. Sick. So nice. And it was like an apartment was the reason why Reggie Bush yep. yeah. got his Heisman taken from him. It's, it's fast. They're going to have to do some, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's going to have to be a little Go bit. Go back. Of, yeah, there's going to have to be something. Yeah. Like, just give Reggie the damn one. Fix it. Were you up for the Heisman? I, agree. I was up a couple times. Yeah, I never won it. Prize made. Yeah, but you got to go. You know, nobody was really. You know what I mean? Like when hey, I tell you, you the, the first time I got invited for the Heisman was in 2008. It was me and um, Bradford and Tebow. Uh, Bradford ended up winning it, but it was the first time, like honestly, leaving Texas really for <laughs> at not playing in a football game. <laughs> like my mom and dad came. The um, hell? Yeah. You know, it was like. <laughs> My my grandparents came and it was every, we see the bright lights of the city. I mean, and they lay out the red carpet for you everywhere you go. We went to the Rockefeller Center. We went to the top of the Empire State Building. We ate at nice places, Italian restaurants, steakhouses. Hell like yeah. Hell yeah. it was such a fun experience. Like not for just for me, but I was just proud to like bring my my parents and my grandparents. Like it was it was awesome. So the the experience was was great. And Bradford deserved to win it. He had a great season. I heard he's a phenomenal ping pong player that's Sam Bradford, but the thought of you never being outside of Texas going to New York City Where? for that. Yeah. And then Tim Tebow, remember, he was homeschooled in high school. Yeah. Yep. He was homeschooled in high school. So you two experiencing the New York City world together. Holy shit. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. He's building real tall. Yeah. Motorcycles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what hey. I mean. yeah hey, that's first time first time getting in a taxi, bro, that was the wildest thing. Like oh. I've I've got like my suitcases coming up out of the airport and like 
the guy like comes over we put our bags in there i look around my mom's in the back seat like holding on tight like, <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome hey you ride a horse you ride a horse no, you ranch no oh yeah yeah light ranching oh you do some light ranching down there we ride horses down here come on i grew up on a i grew up on a little farm i, I mean not on the farm my grandparents had a farm close to us we spent a lot of times in the summer and a lot of responsibility. We we uh, ranched cattle, and then we we had some agriculture. We did wheat and hay grazer, and and uh, you know, so I still go out there. My dad still runs the farm, and you know, my kids love it. We go gather the eggs and feed the cows. And it's pretty fun. Would you call yourself a prolific horse rider or average horse rider? Uh, I used to be a pretty good horse rider. Like we we go and spend a week. Uh, in the summer times, up at a dude ranch, so my kids love to ride horses. Camp on a water. Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Not camp on a water. We go up to a, a dude ranch out in Colorado, um, and but when we go back to Texas, we'll we'll get on some horses, ride around a little bit. I would say I'm more of like a more I'd, more average. Are you standing? I used to ride. Are you standing? No, you sit on the horse. You <laughs> so you're not that good then. Yeah, because the people I see, <laughs> oh, yeah. they got a little stand. You know what I mean? There's a little. Well, dis- when you're going fast, when you go, when you go fast, you you got you got to stand up. Do you go fast? Have you ever gone fast? Of course. <laughs> well, it sounded like you said yeah. you only sit out. <laughs> Didn't seem like because I don't sit out when I'm I'm out there. You know what I mean? I am. <laughs> I'm getting them. You know what I'm saying? I'm out there getting them cold. I just didn't know if you were. You know, a soft ass horse rider, or <laughs> never know if we're just doing tours or something. If we're actually trying to get soft skill or hard skill, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if we're trying to. You know hey, what I mean? I see those you, you've been in the gym. I see those triceps popping out of the shirt right there. No, I've been riding horse. I'm part of Montana State Rodeo <laughs> all yeah. day. Seven time national champion, pal. I got. I'll wrestle that thing down there too uh-huh. if I have to. I didn't know you're doing actual hey. light ranching out here. Jeez Louise! Hey, I, I, I rode steers growing up. So Ooh, yes. my horse, my horse riding got a little bit better as I got older, but I rode steers growing up. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Is that the bull? You're riding the bull? You're doing the? Uh... No, when it got to when it got to bull riding, I I, I I gave up. But when I was I was probably I don't know eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve riding steers rodeos. Well, let me tell you what I do steers. Okay. Yeah. Let me tell you what I do to steers. Go ahead and let them pop out, Colt. Let them pop out and look at me sideways. All right? Same. Ha- what, 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 what? Get over here. You ain't leaving the ranch. You're dying. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. no. Throttle. No. They're throttling me. I got it done. Lay and done. Boom. And I had a nice and easy fall. Yep. I was told that that particular, what is that? That's a steer there, right? There you go. Yep. Thank you. That steer. Wait, aren't you supposed to be riding the horse? Rope the steer, Get off. jump off, or or ride the horse and then jump off the horse, grab by the horns, flip it over. No, well, we were just working on one part of it. I had sure. already mastered oh, the horse and throw right. thing. Yep. Yeah, there so they, that was off that camera. Was red red zone. That was off camera. I did, I did say like, uh, I don't want to hurt. I don't want to hurt this thing. You know, it seems yeah. like you're gonna hurt. And they go, Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Tough guy from Pittsburgh. <laughs> you're going to hurt a couple thousand pound steer, huh? That's what you're going to do? Oh, okay. Hey, steer, watch out. Watch out. A guy from Pittsburgh's here. And like that, I got, I got like ridiculed and mocked heavily. And I'm like, well, I feel like I'm hurting it. They're like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. That you do. I'm yeah. sure you're going to hurt them. <laughs> like they were talking down to me. And, and I think the bull riders are little small guys, right? And normally small guys. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because the bull rider, they hopped on this little oh, yeah. um, mechanical bull thing. Mm-hmm. They turned that on H. I think it's hard. You know, it's like rabbit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Impossible. And this little guy was flying. I'm like, geez, you wild animals out there. That's Colt McCoy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cowboy yeah, Colt. How about it, Colt? Cowboy Colt McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> Tony has a question for you, Colt. Yeah, Colt, I want to ask you about uh, Texas's potential number one recruiting tool, and that's Matthew McConaughey. Uh, we saw him. Mm. He, he was he was on with you guys on the simulcast and he didn't he didn't give a shit about anyone else on the simulcast. He just wanted to talk to you and and, and that was awesome to see. And then early later Jeez. in the game, it's true. It was true. Later <laughs> yeah, in the game, AD Mitchell scores a touchdown. And then you see McConaughey on the sideline, like, hey, you know, get, stick him here. And again, is he basically is, is he above the head coach in the players' eyes? What is I mean for all sports? Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> like what is Matthew McConaughey to the University of Texas besides you know his actual job title, which I believe is. 
Minister Le- of Culture. Minister of Culture, yes. Yeah. Not yes, ad minister. No, no, no. Because he's not an admin. No, no, no. no. It's Minister of Culture. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, of course, preaching. So, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, McConaughey is is an ultimate celebrity, and he's a fantastic guy, like good friend. Um, and you, people outside of the program may like kind of think it's kind of funny or whatever, but the dude seriously cares about mm-hmm. the football team. He cares about all the sports. He loves the university. This is his way of trying to give back and be a supporter and, you know, be friends with guys on the team and, and, you know, just be around. And, and I think, you know, he, he, he cares. I, I talked to him after the game, we walked through the tunnel and like, I mean, I was disappointed out. and he was like deeply disappointed, like really cared, really bothered, really wanted to win that game. Like he, he's, he's in, he's involved and, you know, I mean, he's one of the biggest names in the world. Like, and and he's standing on the sidelines every week and and able to, you know, be friends with some of the guys and the coaches and 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 that's just, it's it's part of it's part of it. He's he's great. Have you? He seen always him? does this. You know, I was always told you need to go this way. Well, that's he always kind of goes like this. Well, yeah, <laughs> he wants to punch you with it. Yeah, yeah. back in. Yeah. But he actually on sideline he goes. It's through the sun, through a longhorn, through his body, and then he triceps it. Yeah, out. He actually does. You've only got He's the chance done. to go to one game in 14 years. I've seen McConaughey on the sideline for like three games now. Mm-hmm. This is his move yep. all by himself. There will be no cameras on him. Nope. There will be nobody talking to him. It will just be him in his mind saying, we need a little bit of power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he does. He's all in, bro. But I've also seen him on the sidelines of basketball games. Uh. And, oh, just, uh, yeah, telling people to stand up. Yeah, it's it's a cool thing to have, just like the respect of the entire university. But I guess McConaughey has obviously earned that everywhere. Oh, yeah. He's real deal. I've got, go I've got some great McConaughey stories, man. All right, we he got is, we got three minutes. Let's make a you know, <laughs> okay, I'll give you best one. one. We, we're, we're, it's 2005, and I'm a freshman, okay? And we're going to the national championship. And this is like the last day. You know, I'm, I'm red shirting. I'm not. I've just got a front row seat to all the all, all the glory and all, you know all the wins. We're undefeated, going to the national championship. It's the day before. It's the last practice in our bubble before we head off to go to California to the Rose Bowl. McConaughey comes in kind of right at the end, and he goes and puts his arm around Coach Brown. He says, "Hey, like I got to talk to the team. I want to talk to the team." <laughs> so Coach Brown like pulls everybody in. Like we're literally getting we're, after this walkthrough, we're going to the bus, going to the airport, going to California. We're 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 the underdogs to USC. And Matthew starts talking and kind of kind of just mumbling, and, and and finally he he just says like, you know, I I, I had a dream. I got this song for you guys. And everybody's kind of looking around. We're holding. You know, he goes, "Somebody don't think so. Somebody knows so." And we kind of like look around and and I'm like, "What's this dude talking about?" And I kid you not. Like he does it again. Somebody don't think so. Somebody knows so. And uh, bro, for ten minutes, we are jumping up and down. Somebody <laughs> don't think so. so. Somebody knows so. so. Yeah, absolutely. And we sang that all week long, and nobody <laughs> believed that we were going to win the national championship. It was one of the best games on ever in college football history, and we won. And I'll never forget that moment with McConaughey. <laughs> I would have walked into practice with this song. Yeah. 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 I got a song. I got a song. Mac, we're yeah. in the boys. <laughs> yeah. The legendary yeah. national champion, that man, and obviously icon. Cowboy, Light Ranching, Longhorn. We appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, Colt McCoy. Hope to talk to you again, buddy. Somebody don't think so. Somebody knows so. I feel like he did something like that on the simulcast for that. Who knows? That was the mana he was shooting. What a legend. All right, hour two will be on the other side. AJ Hawk will join us as well. Jay Will talking about the NBA. Wemby's doing some absurd shit. Woo. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take three. three. Hello and welcome to Office Championship Wrestling live in Indianapolis, Indiana. Tonight we have a straight to hell match in which the devil will battle against our office wrestler, Dylan Boston. You might be wondering how we got here. Let's find out right now. And now we have to make a deal with the devil. 
Yeah, no big deal. Classic trial by combat situation. We got our champion, Dylan Bostic. All he's got to do, win the match, one, two, three, and we're home safe. The only man that would take the job to protect us from the devil himself, Dylan Bostic. Like you mentioned, Pat, there's probably about five or six other guys we'd rather have in this position, but we'll take Bostic, I guess. Not only are all of our souls on the line, the Office Championship Wrestling Championship, presented by Natural Light, is also on the line. No, Jesus, the devil's no, trying to put I Bostic right to hell. hell! I do not want to Good go God, to hell! No. Don't do Good it. God, no! Come I on, can't. Bostic, man! Oh, no! in hell, Pat. The goddamn Easter Bunny's out here! What the hell's he doing here? The Easter Bunny is obviously here to help Dylan Bostic. Wait a minute. No! No, no! The Easter Bunny's been on the devil's side this whole time! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus what the hell's Christ! Jesus Christ doing here? The power of Christ is compelling Dylan Bostic! Look at this, Pat! Jesus Christ is bringing Bostic back to life! Jesus is going insane! And now Bostic's kicking wholesale ass in the ring! Jesus Christ has come to help Dylan Bostic defeat the devil and defeat the Easter Bunny! What's gonna happen here? Good God Almighty, it looks like he's going up in the scissor lift! Jesus is lifting the scissor lift! Jesus is now telling Bostic to come down from Don't do the it, heaven. Bostic! Don't no. do it! Oh, oh my, my God! God. Oh. Bostic's dead! He's dead! You can't tell from home, but that scissor lift is about eight stories up, Pat! Eighty feet in the air! Oh, wait! He's tuning up the band! The devil! Super Jack! Into the casket! Into the, the devil casket. goes down! Jesus. The devil goes down! Jesus shuts the casket! Straight back to hell! The devil goes straight back to hell where he belongs! With the assist from Jesus Christ of Nazareth! Dylan Bostic saves the PMI office's souls and wins the OCW! The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice it could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport, 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 sport! Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Feel Good Friday, January 5th, 2024. Hour two of this program starts right now. Football! Is glorious. Amen. Football is magical. What? Football is a sport where 11 men come together on one side of the ball to do battle with 11 men on the other side of the ball who have prepared their entire lives for a moment mm -hmm. that comes and goes and passes by. And the play never knows who's going to make it or when it's going to come. But when it does, we have magic. We have full commitment. What? We have fireworks. Mm -hmm. That's what we're in store for all weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We're in store for massive games with big implications, with big energy, big anxiety, Woo. and massive financial situations going forward, both for the players, the teams, the programs, and the cities themselves. If you host a playoff game, millions and millions of dollars are not only coming to your program and to your players, but also to the city that you call home. The Colts can earn one of those. Numerous teams can earn some of those this weekend, and we will be following along mm -hmm. for all of it. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Already buried the Hawkeyes today, so Connor, let's go to you. Is that Black Cat because of what the Boston Bruins did last night? Well, they looked at the Black Cat and got unlucky, and now maybe they're done for the rest of the season. Is Sidney Crosby the Black Cat that oh, rolled into Boston boy. and buried the 
the Boston Bruins in a Thursday night NHL prime time. Electric factory? Absolutely not. No, we do not lose games and the season doesn't fall apart. That's not what they do. This is about till 3 a.m. probably for me. This is kind of what I did. I lit a candle right next to my bed. I put a couple old books that I've never read right next to it and I, I stared at the moon. Leather bound? For, for a long leather bound for a long time. Pretty bummed out. Pretty excuse me. Bummed out about what happened. Yeah, Butch didn't die for you. You say bummed out like a bum. I apologize. Yeah. All right, so you need to remember that. Sorry, but Butch. Shout out to Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins getting the job done against the Boston Bruins last night. We all knew that was going to be the case. One wow. half of the hammer. Damn. Cowboys tone digs. Yeah, I mean, when the greatest hockey franchise of all time was the greatest player of all time rolls uh, into. I mean, we've backed off that. Yeah, I remember. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, Ma Mar no. Sorry, no. Mario Sid. No. Red Wings no. franchise. No. Unfortunately. No. Not, nothing about the Red Wings. Wayne was pretty good. Wayne Gretzky, you take away his goals. Sure, sure, all sure. of his goals. First all-time in goals. He still has the most points in the history. Yeah, but Mario, beat, good. Mario, yeah. Mario beat cancer and chronic back injuries. So Thank you, Tony. And saved the Pittsburgh Penguins. You're Bingo. Right. Wayne, Twice. Wayne beat L.A. And from what we've heard recently, L.A.'s pretty tough to beat. Go on. Well, I don't think I will, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know because we got a chance to see the Kings game, if uh -huh. that was something about that. I should have known with the way he delivered that yeah. on this Feel Good Friday. Yeah. He was talking about something else. Oh, yeah. Boy. Yeah. yeah okay. Everyone knows. Oh, all right. Everyone knows. All right. Joining us now is a man whose brother in law is actually a Stanley Cup champion and Whoa. still in the NHL. A man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup winner, an absolute stallion, a COVID survivor. Ladies and gentlemen, father of 10, president of Ohio, AJ Hall. AJ. AJ, how you doing, pal? I tell you what, what a hockey game last night. Why don't let's just have all games like that? Just yeah. go, 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 go. Here we go. I am very excited for the NHL to have that game show up like that mm -hmm. at this time of the year. Remember, because there's not as much football. After this weekend, there's a lot less football on TV, and it's only coming on certain days. So whenever we have middle-of-the-week action like the NHL provides, we need to make sure that we're telling people about it. Because this sport, if you get into it, Fantastic. Yep. Mm -hmm. The players are people you want to root for. A bunch of dogs out there. The sport is one that requires skill, strategy, and a goalie that doesn't get absolutely sauced Jeez. in front of his net to poster knock. <laughs> okay? There's a lot of things that uh, the sport of hockey has that if you're from a hockey town, you understand. And I hope more people will continue to do that. What a shot by Eller right there. Yeah, absurd. Don't look now. Tanger. Boom. <laughs> Carter, 5-2 mm -hmm. it was. AJ, 5-2. We're in for a night mm -hmm. of celebration for the Pittsburgh Penguins and Boston Bruins. So wait a minute, is this oh. our house? Hold on. Are we 11-2-1 at this particular stadium arena? The Garden Barn. What is it called? The Garden? The, yeah, TD Bank North Garden. So that's where the Celtics, Celtics play as well? Yep, Celtics also play there. So that's where you guys spit on players from the other team in the NBA? Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. guess what? Probably NHL too. No, nah, he ain't spit on NHL guys. Maybe. You know why? Because NHL guys will actually, in their skates, jump over the glass, yep. ragdoll a couple people. And yep. Boston welcomes that. Marshawn, though, scored this thing tied up late. And obviously, this dude started his day with a conversation with us, and he almost ended our day breaking our hearts. Filthy goal. Scored sure, 41 man. minutes or 41 seconds into the game and then scored one late in the third. And then Sidney Crosby off a guy's dong through Swayman's le legs. That's a game winner. Welcome to hockey time. Boston Bruins, the Pittsburgh Penguins win again. What a night. Yep. What a night. Let's just hope you guys make the playoffs. AJ, uh, there's a lot of news coming out of the NFL uh, at this exact moment. One of them is something that's already been reported, but it involves your Green Bay Packers. Jordan Love has become a franchise quarterback in front of our eyes, obviously. It was his time to prove whether or not the draft that they made of him in the first round trading up, causing a little bit of a scuffle, but was worth it or not. They move on from Aaron in a way that was obviously very public whenever he was in a darkness cave. And now this Jordan Love guy was going to have an opportunity to prove that every Everything that has happened mm -hmm. and what the future is going to be is going to be great. He certainly has. This dude has answered the bell. He has played phenomenally. Since week 11, he has 16 touchdowns and one interception. Now, defense side of the ball, is it going to be enough to hold up to make a long playoff run this particular year that we could have never expected in this transition era? Maybe. But now reports are coming out about the type of teammate that Jordan Love is. And if you remember preseason, all the boys were coming out saying they loved him. Yep. And they didn't have to say that. And we talked about that. Like, these guys are supporting Jordan Love openly. They know he's been through it. Now there's reports 
Every single Monday, he has the whole offense over. Mm -hmm. They watch some film. They have some camaraderie. Ooh. I assume they eat some food. Mm -hmm. Who knows what the food selection is, if a nutritionist is involved and it's terrible, oh. or if the boys are involved and it tastes delicious and they're having a nice Monday night. He also invites the defense to stop over. Wow. This guy's having family parties pretty much every single week at his house. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to hear from quarterbacks. This is old school. This is awesome. I love Jordan Love and how he's handled all this, AJ. Yeah, think of the situation, though, that Jordan Love is stepping into. We know. We were here live when he got drafted. Like, I think you even said in the moment, hey, this is not Jordan Love's fault. You know, this is going to be whatever happens. Like, yeah, he, they picked him. He has to go there. Boom, here we go. But the fact that he stepped in now with all of the offseason drama, everything, Aaron going to the Jets, even like the roller coaster of their season has been, the fact that he's been able to stick with it and now he's playing his best football at the end of the season, it's been, honestly, it's been impressive to watch and not an easy situation, too. And – He's not like he stepped into a lineup that had a bunch of like household names out there on the outside to throw to and a bunch of weapons. Now, he's had these guys are proven to be really good players, but we weren't really sure of that until Jordan Love kind of stepped in. Yeah, I openly asked if we know if Gutekunst is a good GM or not. You know, because obviously a team went to the NFC Championship, the NFC Championship, instead of trying to get a piece to maybe win a Super Bowl the next year, they thought about the future. They had Aaron Rodgers. They trade up to draft Jordan Love. They had Aaron Jones, who's still a very good running back. They draft A.J. Dillon. It's like, well, you're preparing for the future as opposed to trying to win right now, which as a player, I'm thinking, let's go get a Super Bowl, especially as somebody that's friends with Aaron Rodgers. What are we trying to do? Now it's all paying off. Here we are a few yeah. years later. And I'm not saying good to Kuntz and what I said about him was completely wrong, but it was. Me questioning it, I think, was due at the time because I don't know what all has been proven by him. But this team, young, making a run, mm -hmm. mentally tough. I think LaFleur's doing a great job with uh, Jordan Love as yeah. well. It just all hinges on the defense now, which I don't think any of us were thinking about bringing up in the conversation at the beginning of this whole transition era. Yeah, but I think part of it, too, is like you, you kind of – like, it was fool's gold because we've heard that about the defense. Like, Packers fans have heard that about the defense for the last several years. Is like, hey, they're going to be much better than people expected. And, you know, it, it is what it is. Like, obviously, this year they, they needed to be better because Jordan Love was a rookie. But that's the biggest takeaway from the season. Like, it, it was it was always, hey, is Jordan Love going to be the guy moving forward? They kind of did all the stuff with his contract where it's like he was going to get more money up front this year. But then he was basically playing for his job this year on whether or not he's been the guy. And I think it's very clear. I mean, again, he's he's not going to make the Pro Bowl. He's not going to be on any of these all-pro lists or anything like that. But I think if you look, I mean, the, the stats bear it out. Like, him over the last seven weeks, he's been like a top-five quarterback mm -hmm. in the NFL. And you can very firmly say, like, hey, he is the guy for the future. What like, do we have this weekend? You got the Bears, you know, at home, winning you get in. So Huge. And, Absolutely. Wow, and, and, Huge. And, and we were talking earlier in the first hour about like teams playing spoiler and stuff like that. Like that's why it's a very interesting situation, not only because of the rivalry, but like the Bears are kind of still in that situation where it's like they don't fully know if Justin Fields is the guy for the next year. So, Flues. Exactly. Like all those guys are kind of still coaching for their future or playing for their future. So like And hot. Yeah, exactly. And they're one of the, they, they've been one of the best teams in the NFL over the last like five weeks. So like this it is kind of like a perfect storm where if you were a Packers fan three months ago or two months ago looking ahead to week eighteen, like this is all you could ask for. I'm I'm incredibly pumped for Sunday. That's how the Colts fans feel as well. And we haven't got a chance to see if Anthony Richardson is going to be a guy for an entire season for our future. But you're seeing Jordan Love being a guy on the field. I like hearing this off the field stuff. Yeah, yeah. like him hosting the party is a massive ordeal. I was going to ask. So, like, obviously, we we talk about uh, quarterbacks sitting and learning versus going in the first year. And does it help that he's been there for years and years and years and knows the team and is actually now older than a lot of the players on the offense that he's having over every week? Versus, like, if you're a rookie and you come in, can is it? Awkward, or can you do this as a rookie quarterback having all these players over at your house every week? It's so weird, that rookie quarterback thing. I watch Andrew Luck try to navigate that entire thing because I go from Peyton Manning's quarterback of team, so he's, yeah. you know, he's running team. Yeah, essentially the – Yeah. He runs – Player, yeah. coach, GM, yeah. owner, all at the same President. time. President. Yeah. What? Yeah, he runs team. Trainer, mm -hmm. sheriff. Hey, they built a golf course out around the facility. No, they didn't. We're not playing on that. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> why, why is that? Well, because we had a locker room that was from 1924. And then, you know, we just built a $3 million golf course right outside of the building. So I think there was a little bit of, uh, you know. Is it a public course, like a random people playing there? 
No, but they do a bunch of like foundation stuff, like first oh, tee. Okay. First tee's there, I think, a lot throughout the year. Like Jim Mercy had this vision because how much he loves golf, alongside Pete Dye, to make this course to hopefully make golf better and the world better and everything. But a lot of people in the locker room were like, "Buddy, we're sitting on metal seats in here. Come on, you know what I mean? Like, is there any? We have a high school locker room right now. We have one cold tub. We have one hot tub, and it's just like a little steel one. Like we're spending." So there was a decision made quickly, like nobody steps foot on that golf course, okay? <laughs> nobody even, we are not doing this at all. So then then we get a letter the next day that's like, this is why the golf course was created to help children. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It was a real, it's like that's who Peyton was. Like not only is it like practice, we're redoing it. Yeah, we are. Weight room, hey, we need to pick it up a little bit. We need to dial it back a little bit. Hey, what's curfew Super Bowl week? Well, we're thinking about it. No. We're doing this. It's like, that is what it was. And it made sense because like, yeah, that's how this goes. Everybody in the building knew it too. It's like, we are riding the Peyton Manning train right now. And as soon as it goes off the tracks, we're all done. Like everybody pretty much knew that in the building. So then we transition period. And now we have Andrew Luck come in there. And it's like, we're just coming off the winningest decade in NFL history. I got a chance to see it. Like Super Bowl conversation every year. And then it was done in a much different way whenever Andrew got there. Because Andrew, super nice guy. Like the nicest guy of all time who happens to be like the best athletically built human to be a quarterback with the biggest bright, like he was the prototype, super good human though too. So whenever you're dropped in at the quarterback position, you become the CEO of that football team, whether you like it or not. And it's like the way Peyton handled it versus how Andrew had to handle it as a young guy who showed up late during OTAs because he had to get his architectural engineering degree oh. from Stanford. And then we showed up and he knew all the plays. It's like, it's not easy as a rookie to look at a 30 year old and say like, hey, need you. Right? Like, we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. But we that need is. a little more out of you, bud. We need more out of you, pal. And you haven't even played a game yet. Like, you're in your first training camp, but you're the starting quarterback of the squad. Yeah, it's tough. But don't you think, no matter what you do, if you're a quarterback and say you walk into a vet led team or whatever and you're the, supposed to be the savior, I would say just whatever. Don't worry about stepping on toes. Don't worry about anything. Just show the guys you care. If they know you care, you could be as corny, as cheesy. You could be whatever you want. If they know that you care and you want to win, yeah, bring them. Invite them over. Tell them, hey, come on, let's do everything we possibly can to win. And I think the teammates will respect that. You got to. It takes more than a day or a week, I think, to earn that respect. But if they say, like, yeah, this guy, whatever, I don't know what he's like. Yeah, he might be corny or funny or whatever. I'm just making, like, for an example, if you care and you want to win, I think everybody on that team will respect you. And if you're consistent. I think if you're, like, yeah. the same person, everybody will understand. Like, if you're the same person every single day, I think everybody naturally is going to respect you no matter who you are, what position you are. But it's quarterback position for sure. Now, you think about times like Brock Purdy where he can't even afford to have a boy. Yeah, job. yeah. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Tougher over there. Could you imagine bringing the whole team over to his two-bedroom apartment? Yeah. <laughs> All right, boys, shuffle in. Yeah. We got some plastic chairs in the back there. How many of the defense are showing? Not a lot, right? Not a lot? I right. hope not. All right, thank God. They'll sit in the hallway, I guess. <laughs> we'll pass Williams. the thing around. Get Chipotle. Get the big Chipotle catering deal. They yep. bring the big, uh, like the big containers, and you put the little fire underneath. And you can run fifty guys through there. Yeah, and you look like you're a professional as well, which is part of it. But everybody knows that the team's only going to go as you go, though. So, like, I think that's the one thing that rookie quarterbacks have to understand whenever they come into the league. It's like everybody in here knows that we're only going however you go. So, how we are going to follow your lead regardless. You just need to know that, and you need to be an adult much sooner than everybody else if you want to have success early. I think C.J. Stroud's handled it very well. Yeah. C.J. talked about that. I think we've even chatted and asked him about, like, hey, you're a rookie, but you're the leader of a team. And he said, I just try to go to work, do my thing, trying to – I don't want to say, like, earn it, but really that's what you have to do. And I think C.J.'s done that. I think others potentially have not. No, I think dude. we witness it. I think we watch it happen. It's not an easy task to just get dropped in there amongst 35-year-olds and you're 21, 22 years old, and it's like, hey, this is your team now. But you got to be able to handle it. That's part of being yep. an NFL quarterback. Speaking of being in the NFL, Jair Alexander. Mm -hmm. Man. He's back. Is he, though? Is he? Relationship is better than ever. Is he back? He was suspended a week. Yep. After he elected himself captain and then also elected to speak at the coin toss. He was from there. Won the toss. Won the coin toss. Gets forgotten about in this entire conversation. And then almost completely messed it up, you know, because he wasn't at the pre-meeting uh, for the captains before they walked out there. Sure. Just a formality, a couple things that are absurd, but it is a very mm -hmm. real situation. He gets asked about it afterwards. Uh, did you elect yourself captain? Uh, coach just forgot. 
Coach forgot to tell me I was captain. Mm -hmm. The guys had my back. Okay? What happened with the whole we want defense, not the first situation? I just said I don't want defense on field. Mm -hmm. They're all me. laughing at me. Yeah. I don't know what everybody was laughing about. Okay. And they're like, well, we heard you the entire – oh, you heard me? Okay. Uh, what did I say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So then he gets suspended. He has sweet glasses on. We think it's one of the greatest interviews of all time. Mm -hmm. We become big fans of Jair Alexander. Happy's not on our team, but, <laughs> but big fan of Jair Alexander as a whole. Now he is speaking again about the whole situation and what he has learned. Now that he's back for a playoff game, mm -hmm. and he's one of their best players on the entire roster, here he is chit-chatting about what he learned. Oh, no. Our interviews might be a little more serious. <laughs> but other than that, no. Come on. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. All time. This is delivery. The Cut best. He's back. What do you mean? He He's takes back. a comedic <laughs> pause. My interviews might be a little more. That's how he looked at him. <laughs> serious. I love Jair. All me time. too. I want a Jair jersey. Yes. How pumped are you that he's back for this mega game against the Bears? Oh, yeah. I mean, couldn't. He's couldn't. got a pick, right? I, I, guaranteed pick yeah. he coming from Jack I, 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 I would think so with how good DJ Moore has been playing. Him. Put him out there. We need to win the coin toss. He better yeah, be. Absolutely. But it, it's interesting, too, because last week when he got suspended, there was like a lot of talk of like, hey, the Packers need to figure out like if he's even going to be on the team next year. He's got an $8 million roster bonus due. Like, and they, they kind of made it seem like there's a there's been a bunch of other issues and this was kind of like the boiling point, which you didn't really hear much of that from the media. He has, he's been hurt a lot of this year. He hasn't really played. But, yeah, I mean, this is like he needs to be on the field and he needs to be, you know, following DJ Moore. And, yeah, I expect him to have a huge game. On hey, Jair's loved in that locker room, I assume. AJ. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, you know, I think he is, he seems to like be that. very authentic. I mean, very authentic. He doesn't seem, he seems pretty consistent too with yep. everything that we have at least seen. Connor, what's your deal? Why are you so angry? He's I'm back. Yeah. I'm pissed because I want Jair being Jair. Sure, he's back. He and, just trolled them about yeah. not being a troll. Oh, well, what, where are the sunglasses? Where, 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 well, you want to see him on. Where the, these eyes. Where's the jovialness that we have seen? Run from that interview Jair. again. You didn't see it in there? I No, I didn't see it in there. No, I didn't. All right, just put the vipers on his head then and, and okay. watch us in here. And listen. Oh, no. My interviews might be a little more Dude, sure. serious. So UFO? <laughs> but other than that, no. If he had sunglasses on, he wouldn't have been able to do the look to the side gimmick. Yep. I agree, but he could, still could have turned his head. And it's not about no, the look no, to the side, and it's no. not about what he said, because obviously, no matter what it is, it's incredible. It's about what he does after he says that. If you want to run it one more one more time here, if you look at him after he does the serious, and then when he looks back, he's looking down. He's bummed. He wants to say something. He's not bummed out. He's bummed out. That was his punchline. No, no, He's no. done. He's this interview is over. You think all that's these. his only punch? He's Let got me 15 Let me punch hear. Let's run it. Oh, no. My interviews might be a little more no, right after this. serious. Look, look down. <laughs> bummed. But other than that, no. No. See, he's bummed. Next See, question. right there. Boom, boom. You saw it at the no, end. No, that bit was over. No, yeah, you saw it at the exactly. end. That bit's over. If you yep. think he only has one bit, one punchline, we know that's not true. He's no, got, that was for that. Yeah. That next bit, question. That next bit, bit was over. He's got eighteen. He could. He could have kept going. You think? You think they just asked? You think they asked him five questions in that interview that he did before he got suspended? No, they asked him one question, and then Jair was Jair, and he just took it to another level. You, you need to not just automatically think that we've lost the greatness that is Jair Alexander in front of microphones. We haven't lost it. What? Whatsoever. You just said we the, lost. The him. Packers have cut him down at the no. knees. Yeah, they have no, cut him down. No, they, no, losing something is something Did that you, you never shirt, get back. you see the shirt, Connor? I thought you'd like his shirt. He had a UFO. It looked like on his shirt. That was I for, my, that right that was there for Miami. Off. Was it? Yeah. Can we zoom man? Yeah. Allegedly, there's ten foot aliens or twenty five foot aliens roaming around Miami last night. Yeah. Alleg the, allegedly. Jeez. Alleged, alleged. Yeah, yeah. You alleged. said allegedly. Well, I, I, we didn't create the video that was is, circling the internet. Is it alleged, though? I would say no. I would say confirmed. <laughs> Everything, well, can't do that. That's just yeah. me. That's just me. Okay, let me Yeah, ask, but you can't, you let me can't ask do you what a you question. Did, especially the week that we're having. The police were called there for teenagers fighting. When's the last time you've seen a group of teenagers fighting? Not one video comes out of that fight. Yeah, or 200 cop cars are there for two. Yeah. These teenagers must be in. Get them in a good scratch. Yeah. Yeah. It must have been. Yeah. What if it was 50 on 50? We don't Could know. Could have been. That'd you know be sweet. I mean? Sharks yeah. and the Jets. Anyways, for those that don't know, on the internet, search it. 25-foot alien mm -hmm. teen fight Miami. Yep. Bingo. Bingo. Just like every other video we've ever seen, very blurry all of a sudden. Technology mm -hmm. gets better. The video stays the same. I don't know how that continues to happen. Interesting. Well, I think we know. Why? 
Bingo. These aliens got these devices. Thank they you. got these. They 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 make themselves blurry. Yeah, yep. part part of them, part of the device is inside themselves. So when when you know the cops show up, the first couple cops show up. Holy hell, we got we got a ten foot gorilla walking around Miami. Let's shoot this thing. They shoot it. Holy hell, our bullets didn't do anything, and now the things disappeared. And I just see this outline. We need to call in the cavalry, and then all Miami shows up. Okay, so that's what you think happened in that particular situation. That was not necessarily an answer for why the photos are blurry. No, I get that you just gave a full take on the situation. That's, why, that's why the photos are blurry. They become invisible, yeah, and then they just become So invisible outline. would not be in the photo, then. Well, well they, they're invisible because you can see through them. Like, if you were in an alien right now, I could see oh, they're through opaque. you. I could see through you to see that screen behind you, that Think about the city. people that have been attacking us all week. Okay, think about that. Yeah. <laughs> and then places like 10 foot gorilla in the middle of the yeah. streets. Yeah. <laughs> think about that. And then it just vanishes. What are you going to do as a police officer? We would like to let you know we did not create the video. No, 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 no. It is actually out there. We are just observing and reporting and hoping one day to be able to go shake their hunts. That's all we want to do. And we would like to be a part of the crew that shakes their hunts. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, we've earned that at this stage, that we could potentially be the ones that communicate directly. And also, we would like to be the ones that remind them. That we'll beat their ass in football. Yep. Mm -hmm. So and welcome hockey. to our planet. You want to do Oklahoma drill? Sweet. You want to get on the ice? These boys and the women hockey players. Oh yeah. Phenomenal. Oh yeah. Fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a fast sport. They'll skate circles around you. Eat. So if you want to go back to your planet and tell them mm -hmm. how bad we beat your ass, go ahead and do it. That's what we would like to do. Yeah. Now I understand there's probably political people that like sure. to talk to them. Sure. Mm -hmm. Entertainment people probably like to talk to them about Taylor and Travis and let them mm -hmm. know what's going on yep. and everything like that. Yep. We would just like to remind them that we're better than they are at sports. Yes. So we got to. You can't sport. jump right into do politics. We, do and we stuff know like that? You got to loosen up with a game of athletics. Well, the only thing that kind of questions me, uh, questions that in my eyes, is there's a guy playing for the San Antonio Spurs right now who might be an alien. Yeah. For sure. Yep. He's taking two steps from the three point line, dunking <laughs> mid stride run, not even jumping, mid stride run dunking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lopez tried to try to block him the other night, another seven footer, and he literally just put his hand above the hoop and just threw it down like this while standing on the ground. And one, he, he can move all over the place better than most humans can. Even like five foot eleven people, he's seven foot five. He's phenomenal. His team won't give him the ball. Nope. Uh, then there's this other guy that plays for Denver. He seems to not really be interested in the sport of basketball. Loves horses. Mm -hmm. Loves Serbia. Has been on the record, I think, of saying that he expects to have enough success that he can literally just disappear and never be heard from again. Yep. He's going to throw his phone away and just train horses That's forever. Right. He's only missed five shots in the last four games. Whoa. Basketball is buzzing to talk about it. Our friend of the program, former Duke legend, obviously NBA vet, ESPN basketball pundit and analyst, college game day host, a man who buries half-court shots mm -hmm. as if it was a stroll in the park. Jay Will. Yay! Yay! What's up, boys? Jay, how you What's doing? What's up, boys? How you doing, man? Good to see you, brother. Thank you for joining us again. PM, I got to tell you, I'm a little bit concerned. I'm in Miami right now, and if you're telling me there yep. are aliens here, yep. can I get the hell out of here? What the hell is going on? No, I think you're a good guy to talk to him. Yep. Yep. Jay, what you need to do, if you see him, okay, and from the video I saw, it's going to be tough to see him. I think they're kind of like blurry or whatever. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They're walking over here in between... Uh, Cop cars. Allegedly, this is the whole video. This was allegedly for a teenage fight in Miami. Mm -hmm. They have two. How many times million. do you need to say allegedly, PM? Well, uh, all this times. week. Yeah, quite a few. Yeah, a this lot. week, yeah, yeah. Need yeah. a lot yeah. of allegedly. Yeah. You know, because we kind of got comfortable, didn't we? <laughs> yes, that Brett yeah. Favre lawsuit disappeared, yeah. and, we're like, hey. and then all of a sudden we're like, "Well, that's in the rear. That never happened no again." Don't have to do that. And in our in our thing, it actually says at the end, "P.S. Don't okay. sue us." Yep. You know what I mean? In the before the show. Now we're right back in the middle. So allegedly, teenagers were fighting, and then the big story is there was 300 cop cars there. They're not there for a teenage fight. Oh, here's a here's a 10 foot, 25 foot alien walking around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Jay, will if you see one of these things, mm -hmm. you need to get a basketball. You need to do a half court shot, and then you need to look at yeah. it like this mm -hmm. and just see what they can do. You know what it's, I mean? I, it, it just makes me wonder if we were to have one representation of an athlete on this planet to combat or to fight uh -oh. the athlete representation, who would it be? We already got the like, team. Who, who would... Now, I don't think, because we want them to know that we're a, a team bunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's okay. a group. You know, obviously, you're going to send Brock Lesnar out there. Yep. Right. Okay, obviously, yeah. you're going to okay, send yeah, John Jones out there. Mm -hmm. Right. Obviously, you're going to have to send probably probably, Dewey. Yeah, probably, probably Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson. Shaq. Probably Shaquille O'Neal needs Pepper. to get in shape. Julius Peppers. LeBron. Need, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. LeBron. definitely. Okay. He's already become, yeah, he already played them in basketball one, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good point. Well, and people said he played bad in that game. He wasn't mm -hmm. as good as MJ, but he tried. People say he played bad in that Consent game. Consent MJ as well. <laughs>
But Michael Jordan still got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Especially does. with how much money he's making now. He doesn't want the world to end. No, no, Joe no, Montana no, no, no. with a football. Yeah, for sure. He, must, yeah. he saved his grandbaby. That's yep. right. Mm -hmm. yep. Anyways, yeah, we thought about it. We got him. We beat him. But let's talk about the okay. alien that's currently in the NBA. <laughs> Wemby is the real deal. Why won't they pass him the ball, Jay Will? Is that an accurate depiction of what's going on? That's all I see on the internet. I don't watch the games. I don't know basketball well enough. But I do know the internet's telling me that his teammates down there in San Antonio won't pass him the damn ball. They have no idea that they got a guy on their team that is seven foot 100 and better than you are. Is that real? Is that a real take? And how do we see it all going for Wemby and the San Antonio Spurs? <laughs> I mean, welcome to the league. Welcome to the league of young teams. Like, you know, I don't think PM, a lot of people understand like in, in basketball, too. I'm not sure how it is in football, but in basketball, when you got a guy that is supposed to be the guy and everybody, I mean, look, this is probably the most, this is the most hyped prospect we had in the game of ball since LeBron James. I mean, last night, are, are you kidding me? Like the ball behind the back, the fact that like Ooh. literally he gave a jab step on Giannis and like back cut him to the basket, banged it. I mean, you don't see anybody in the game of basketball at 7-5 doing that, right? So you have other young guys who are in the team who are also trying to get contracts too. So when they're trying to get their contract and then you got Wimby, who's the guy, there's naturally animosity. And I don't care how good of a team a coach pop is, like you can't, when you're coaching younger players, that's the hardest thing about it, right? Everybody wants to shine and get paid their payday. So how does that get fixed? They're going to have to ship those guys. I think Connor did a little research before mm -hmm. on another situation. What was the one you It was brought? Luka Doncic in Dallas. I think they shipped four to five vets out of Dallas after his rookie year. So they could start playing his style of basketball. Is that what's going to happen probably with Wemby down there in San Antonio, or is Pop going to have to figure it out? I mean, PM, think about this too, AJ. I mean, that, that, that guy's Jalen Brunson. Like Jalen Brunson, they let Jalen Brunson walk. Mm -hmm. Like Jalen Brunson, like we talk about 1A, 1B, whatever the hell you want to call him. That dude is a... That dude is a stud for the New York Knicks. Like, he was on that team with Luka Doncic. Can you imagine what that backcourt would have been? Now, they wouldn't have got Kyrie, but still, like, those are the types of decisions that go into it. So, if you're watching Giannis, and you're saying Giannis had 44 last night, Giannis's body looks like a grown-ass man body. Mm -hmm. If you say Wimby, who's 20 years, dude just turned 20 years old. If you give him five, six years and his body looks like Giannis's, yeah, I'm shipping out whoever the hell I need to ship out to bring the right bets around to understand this is Wimby's team. We're going to build around Wimby, period. Okay, well, I hope they do that because we can't wait to see him continue to blossom and play. And they've been training his ankles and everything like his whole life so he doesn't get injured, which massive humans would normally do. The Wemby experiment seems to be going well personally, but the team sucks. Maybe they'll figure it out next yeah. year. Now, AJ, there's a guy, AJ, that you love. He's only missed five shots in the last four games. I know you want to ask Jay Will about. Jay, how do you stop Joker and... When we watch all these like pregame situations he has where he's just throwing the ball up haphazardly, doesn't really it looks like he doesn't really care. I don't know if you've seen some of these clips. He's just how he carries himself is amazing. Looks like he doesn't make too big of a deal of it. But how do you end up how do you stop this guy? He seems so unorthodox how he moves, everything about him. So AJ, to me, he is a Serbian Magic Johnson. <laughs> right now, people people are gonna be like, Well, what the hell are you talking about, Jay? Magic Johnson play, you know, point guard, but also Magic Johnson jump center in the NBA Finals, right? He can play with his back to the basket. The way he manipulates the rock is uniquely different than any other player in the game of basketball right now. That every play, it's almost like, PM, what you were talking about, what you want for Wimby, right? Like, every play pretty much gets ran through Nikola Jokic, and then he gets, like, the scraps here and there, but his ability to pass the rock, his ability to make plays, the vision, all this is what makes him probably the most unique player in the league today. Yeah, it's different. You're not going to stop it. He's so big, so strong, so hilarious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All those videos of him walking in a training camp and just being so pissed that he has to do the photo shoots and yeah. worry about basketball. He was watching horse highlights on his phone, mm -hmm. on his sideline. Shoot around. And I think Jamal Murray walked over to him and said, what are you looking at? He goes, good horse. Good horse. <laughs> He's just so disinterested, seemingly. He's got to put in so much work to get to this point. We all agree. There's a game winner last night. 127, 127. How you doing? Keep it moving. Look at his celebration from him, too. I think he even impressed himself here. Well, doesn't that make you like him more? Like Not normal. Like, Look at Joker. Yes. He was so pumped right dude. there. Yeah, people are just saying walking in the pumped. gym, AJ, eating a, eating a donut and just drops, you know, 40, 15, and 20 on you after, like, a, a good Krispy Kreme. I like, love that's, every, that's an American dream. I love it. I, he has to put in a massive amount of work, though, that he just doesn't want people to know. We all agree. This is a gimmick. I, I think it's really him, man. <laughs> I think it's really him. I think really, like, when he 
he talked about it this summer when he went back to Serbia. Like, he just stopped playing basketball for a minute. And don't get me wrong. I know we live in a world where everybody has to be like Kobe or Michael and you got to have the killer instinct. But sometimes, don't you get tired? Yeah. AJ, didn't you just get tired and want to take like a month or two months Stop off? Stop drinking like, your own pee, AJ. Yeah. 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 You know, it's not, it's, not the, it's not the most fun thing to watch somebody continue to tell you how hard they work. And I'm not saying, like, either Kobe and MJ, those guys are my favorite. I'm saying the internet is flooded with people telling you how hard they work and how hard they grind. Yeah, so we appreciate the fact that Joker just doesn't do any of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking, okay, you can't just – and then come back. Got to practice. Yeah, yeah, it's some, something. I, I, I'm thinking there's some something. At that horse farm, he's at least put up a thousand – like, he has to be just with nobody around. He's so good. He's better. He has better vision than everybody. He has a better shot than everybody. He somehow never gets pickpocketing. He dribbles that thing uh -huh. like seven feet. Do you think he's like timing himself while he saddles the horse? Is he doing like foot drills? Like with Probably. The, like has to be doing with the horse something. Grip walk? What an, we need him if we're fighting the aliens. Might be a like Shane Leckler. Might just be a Leckler situation here, and he just happens to be the MVP. Yeah, so in the NFL, Shane Leckler is a guy who's like greatest punter of all time, one of them at least, and he didn't pick up a football from the time season ended until training camp, and then every training camp he was like, all right, got to relearn how to kick a ball. <laughs> that is only when your offense fails. You got to go mm -hmm. out there and do that. And that's one action, let alone shooting, passing, <laughs> dribbling, cardio, your feet, defense. Like If he's able just to shut it off whenever we hear everybody else mm -hmm. is going – 365 all day, every day, and then just getting dropped in and killing them. There's the there's an alien. Yeah. Had a baby. Yeah. Best ever. Do Way it. to go, Joker. Fun to watch, pal. Ty has a question for you, Jay. Yeah, Jay. Well, I see a lot of people saying that even though the Bucks got Dame this year, that they actually might be a worse team um, and that they're like still trying to figure things out. Do you subscribe to that theory? Uh, I know they've played in like a decent amount of close games, but there's no way that's accurate, right? Come playoffs. Damon and Giannis are going to figure things out, and they're still going to be one of the tougher outs in the NBA. I mean, you hope so. Now, look, I spent a lot of time in Indiana, boys. My wife is from Carmel. So, like, you know, mm -hmm. we're, I'm turning into a huge Pacers fan with the way they play. If they don't see the Pacers, like, it, it's there, there are certain teams out there where I know what Giannis is. Like, even Giannis making two threes last night and taking on that challenge, I know they can score the rock. But, like, it, they're going to have to dig their, their feet in the sand here defensively when you talk about how many weapons the Celtics have. When you talk about the season, Joel and B might be having, I know we just talked about Joker and Wimby, and you know, we'll talk about Chet Holmgren, we'll talk about all these other guys, but Joel and B might be having the best season he's ever had in his life. In his life. I mean, the numbers are stupid. So when you start thinking about who are those pieces, Brooke Lopez from guard play, that is going to be the biggest thing defensively. Can they really lock in? I know they can score the rock, but are they, are they just going to be a team that tries to outscore you or are they going to try to get stops? That's to be TBD. Are you guys worried over there at the NBA? About what? Well, we stole Christmas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The NFL. <laughs> the NFL stole Christmas. Christmas is done. <laughs> they, they, big, right. bad Roger Grinch Goodell uh -huh. right. came NFL. into Adam Silver's house and said, guess what? Our day now. Yep. That's just how this goes. And the numbers were the biggest they've ever yeah, been. To. The biggest they've ever been for us. And then you think about like the NHL. Oh. What the NHL is doing right now. 6 <laughs> 5 last night. Cute. Prime time. Thursday, two of the stars. Jay, is the NBA okay right now? Is the NBA all right? I mean, look, let us get to our prime time. Let okay. us get the playoffs. All right. We got a lot of value. You know what I mean? It's right. like college basketball. I was calling the Duke Carolina. I was calling the Duke Q's game the other day. You know, I, I was I was trending. You know, I was talking about the all-time Duke greats. You know, sometimes when you're a Duke guy, you're caught in an island, you know, and that's – you guys know a lot about islands and lists. You know, oh, 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 yeah, it's uh, it's it. great time for Got sports it. right now. Great mm -hmm. time for yeah. sports. Big star in the NBA. Big conversation all the time. Good comment. Yeah, Jay. Well, great time for sports. Terrible time for LeBron. Uh, they win the NBA Cup, the Lakers, and then basically the wheels just fall off. I think they've won like three of their last twelve or something terrible like that. And then the other night, Lakers lose. LeBron leaves without talking to the media. A lot of people on the internet said, "Cue the Shams tweet." Next morning, Shams tweet. People, people aren't loving Darvin Ham all of a sudden over in in L.A. What's going on there? Are we expecting uh, him to get shipped out of town? And uh, what is going to happen with these Lakers if they don't kind of pick it up before the trade deadline? Do you think they might end up moving some guys, try and bring some guys in? I mean, I think you're going to have to, right? Like, I, I think one of the things last year when watching D'Lo play and, and, and watching his regression, I think that's a big thing for them from a guard perspective. 
you know, we'll see what happens with Toronto and a guy like Pascal, uh, Pascal Siakam uh, potentially being out there if they're trying to get rid of assets and pieces. But I, I don't know, boys. Like I said this at the beginning of the year, I didn't think the Lakers were like that. Like, and I, I got love for Austin Reeves. I want everybody to get their money. Oh, racist. Uh, Whoa. I, wow. No, no. Whoa. Wow. 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 Yeah. ESPN, yeah. Link. of course. Yeah, Link. Link, let a naysayer know. You know this kind of stuff. Come on. You, All you right. were the naysayer in this particular <laughs> case of Austin Reeves. I didn't think the Lakers were like that. Listen. Oh. White guy, third best player? No, no way. He's doing it. No He's way. He's doing it. Yeah, Jokic right. is the best player in the league. White guy. Not racist. Serving him, though. Yeah, Come very, on. Yeah, very European. Yeah, Come on. Very, very white. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm joking. I love Austin Reeves. Obviously, we all got to see him with Team USA. In that Lakers team, in the run that they had in the in-season cup, it's like LeBron turned into playoff mode. Like, LeBron yeah. wanted to win that. I think the Ooh. first ever one. Wanted to do it. Did a lot of – is he still playing like that? That's what they're going to need, right, for him – for them to go. Is LeBron's going to have to be 28-year-old LeBron James? But the dude's 39, PM. I mean, how much longer like, – I, you know, look, LeBron is worldly. He's godly. We just talked about him representing us against the aliens. I understand all that. But at some point, isn't his body going to have to break down? Maybe it's not this year, but he still can't carry the load every single game for 82 seasons – 82 games. You can't – he's not built that way. That's why you had Anthony Davis – that's why you got guys like D'Lo or Austin Reeves to help carry that offensive load. But if D'Lo can't be that player, you got guys who are injured. I mean, you're going to have to make some serious adjustments because you're trying to get Bron another chip before he retires, right? Go ahead, Tone. Yeah. West is tough. Jay will the Suns, is it like once Beal, Booker, and Durant are healthy, if that is ever— When's that going to be, Tone? When that, the hell is that? That's part of it. Is that if that's ever a thing? Like, are they going to be fine then, or is that, or can we just never rely on that? And now it's like. Why is this always happening with KD? It feels like it, it just follows him that it, whoever he goes and joins, they they just never play together. You know, Tony, this uh, this shit breaks me down so much, man. Because like I'm a huge KD fan. I really think. Amen. He's the most he's the most skilled player I think I've ever seen. Um, and with look, I did the boardroom with it for a couple years, right? And we got into a little bit of it back in the day, like when I, I was trying to give a story where I thought he was more like Jordan when he was going against Giannis. <laughs> He came at me media-wise. I didn't say anything back. And then watching the way that team crumbled, right, with James Harden and Kyrie, and then James leaving, going to Philly, now James actually being on the verge of doing something dope with the Clippers, now watching Kyrie in Dallas, and now watching KD with Devin Booker, who I still think is top tier, but it's it's Devin Booker, KD, and a whole bunch of other people when you don't know what Bradley Beal's going to be able to do. And we, you guys just said it. When we talk about the West, yo, the West is – like Chet Holmgren, like we gonna start talking about Chet Holmgren sooner or later because that dude Whoa. was fucking trash to everybody. Whoa, damn. Chet Holmgren, he doesn't care. Really, he Chet? does not care. Dog. Oh, hey, he's built like a dog, man. And what's your problem? Tight end, like believe in Chet? No, I, I think he's incredible. Just the way he looks is very unsettling <laughs> to me, and it's hard racist. for me to look at him. Racist? No. That's what do you racist, mean? What do you mean Chet? the way he looks? Don't that's a racist. Mean, what he's so gaunt. He's like. Seven two and he weighs like hundred and ten pounds. I get like physically ill when I look <laughs> at it. I don't know what it's a me problem. I'm definitely I'm yeah. admitting that he's an unbelievable basketball player. Yeah, but player. he's got like moxie too. He does. Swag for sure. For juice. sure. Ty, sure. just Uber eats him, Ty. Uber eats him. Send him some stuff. DoorDash. Think about it. DoorDash. DoorDash. Love yeah. you, DoorDash. 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 Where is that at? That's on me. That's on me, boys. Where's that banner? DoorDash. <laughs> DoorDash. That's it. Come on. DoorDash. Pop, pop that son of a bitch up. <laughs> pop that thing up. That's on me. We love DoorDash. Oh, it's great. You love, love DoorDash. DoorDash. Oh, love DoorDash. Love it. Uh, yeah, we'll send it all to Chet. Mm-hmm. All DoorDash, yeah. get him in there. Get I don't, him going. You know, but we were just talking about Kevin Durant. He's remained, you know, but he's still strong. Yeah. Still able to play. Still able to do his thing. He's one of one. He's a great. I Is he going to win again? Or is, we, yes, right? Kevin Durant's good enough. He's going to win again? I don't know, man. Oh no! You're gonna get into it with him again. Goes to the Celtics. No, I, I, I mean, if you went to, I mean, if Boston had been able to pull that thing off with Jalen Brown before to give Jalen Brown that that super max, I would have thought so. But yeah. I, as I, 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 I don't know. I mean, how many times would we be willing to allow KD to go somewhere else? Right. I, I think the whole thing, and like, it's just from a fan perspective. Like, I'd get it from a Hooper perspective. Like, he gets you know three rings, four rings on his own. That's a different thing. I mean, you never do anything on your own, but if you were to get one in Phoenix, it would make you think 
it wouldn't make me think about him differently. I think it would make the public think about him differently because it was like, oh, this team's never had success before as opposed to Golden State. But can you leave Phoenix and go somewhere else well, again? If I, it doesn't work out. If I was rich in Phoenix and lived there, I would want to stay there forever. All day. You know, just because how beautiful it is. But I can certainly see how, because of how basketball is, and how it has been, I think, but not really talked about that much. I guess Scotty Pippen was pretty good at basketball. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Is what I said, you know, and they won a lot back then. You got to have a great team. And I think Kevin Durant, incredibly smart businessman, obviously has great self-awareness. I think he can tell quickly whether or not they're going to be able to win. And I think the way he handles it is potentially a little bit different than other people. But I hope he gets back up there. I like whenever KD's mm-hmm. cooking. Me too. I, I like whenever he's on the internet. Mm-hmm. I like whenever he's talking yeah. his shit. I like when every night we're watching him hit some fadeaway three to do some things. We can't wait to see it again, KD. Yeah. Love you, KD. Hey, we appreciate the hell out of you, Jay Will. Uh, we can't wait oh, to cover right, the NBA throughout the rest of the year, especially as it gets into a time when you got – when is that? When is April. It? End of April. April. I mean, it's really our season now, but you guys, we're loaning it to you guys for a little bit. But that's okay. okay. We'll talk to it. That's very nice of you guys. Ladies like and gentlemen, Jay Will. Yeah, Jay Will. Jay Will. Careful down there. Yeah, look out for aliens. Yep. Might not be able to see them. Why is that? We know why. They can change their skin to make it kind of like mirror. So you, you shape you shifters. Can, you can yep. not even shape shifters. You can see the outline, you see, but you can't see. So the they might be good at the Oklahoma drill. Kind of like that. I, I've yeah. always said that we're going to win the Oklahoma drill against them. That's going to be the ultimate. We're your alpha. We're your dad. Welcome to our earth, our planet. But there's a chance, I guess, that they win Oklahoma. Yeah. I haven't even really. You remember that it. invisible cloak uh, blanket thing that you guys were talking about that one day? Yeah. Yeah. Where do you think that guy got it from? He killed an alien. Mm-hmm. So he killed one. So if that little guy killed an alien, I'm, I feel pretty good. Real yeah. You know what I mean, AJ? I mean, if you're ten them. feet tall and you have the ability to turn yourself invisible, I don't know if we have much of a chance in any. Yeah, but low man wins. Yeah, low man Every wins. Time. Bingo. Look, can you find him? How do I find him? They have from a heat, low they man. Have a heat signature. I can't find him. Well, we, well, it's we, gonna be Oklahoma drill, so it'll be right in front of you. Yeah. All of our visors yeah, on our just helmets. Oh, lays me. I'll have heat. Oh, he's gonna lay you. Be an athlete. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. This I is for mankind. This is for chasing, mankind. You're not. Looking. I'm just pivot. chasing air. Then could pivot from football too. We, I'm we, disgusted. We can have him. We can wheel him over to England and have Luke Littler just dominate him in boom, boom. darts. Luke Littler just sunning an alien at darts. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then vaping in their face. Yeah. yeah, that's how you see him. Actually, Ooh, maybe you. that's how you see him. You blow yeah, vape smoke on him. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Swing away. We did it. Luke Littler's the guy. Yeah. yeah. He's the general of the army. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Luke. He blows big O's, too, I heard. And oh, if, yeah. they get, if the aliens <laughs> get pissed, what's Littler doing? He's taking one of those darts. He's putting it through an alien's eye. Yeah. He's actually double tapping. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like yeah. a seal. Yeah, because he can throw left. He just hasn't done it yet. Yeah. Well, he will next tournament because he lost this one righty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he, he lost the cool hand Luke Humphreys, by the way. We should probably Ooh. bring him. Too. He's a dog. He is a dog. He won the balloon dart. Yeah, he did. The mm-hmm. balloon de art. Mm-hmm. Did you see that, AJ? Look at what that. was the final score? Uh, 7-4. Ooh, okay. Nigel Seeley guessed 7-5. Mm-hmm. Luke Littler did have a little bit of a lead, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah he and, did. And then cool hand Luke Humphreys just got hot yeah. and just started Sweet finding. trophy. That trophy's amazing. Sick. Yeah. He has two of those now. Back-to-back world champion, that cool hand Luke Humphreys. He, he also did a nice close talk with Luke Littler as they were trying to mm-hmm. give Luke Littler his props. What's yeah. up, bruv? Seems like that's a thing that these dark players are doing to Luke Littler. Let the man shine. They mm-hmm. want the Littler rub. I can't I can't knock him for it. He's the biggest star in the world right now. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, too, are just saying, you know, you're, you're the next one, Luke. You're, you're next, Luke. But so. then they think you didn't hear him, so they... Exactly, so let me go back in. Luke, I said you're next, Luke. You're the next one, Luke. Maybe if Luke would respond to them. No, Luke's so caught up in the emotion of being, I don't want to be the next one. I want to be one right now. Yeah. He wants his kebab. That's what Luke's thinking to himself. Yeah. Uh, He'll get it. What's his voice in his head sound like? Uh, Luke Littler's. If cool hand Luke comes back in my face one more time, I'm going to take this dart and I'm going to shove it right in his jugular. Okay? Piss off, wanker. (laughs) All right? Now get me a kebab and maybe a bottle of Coke, uh, Fanta. Those are fun. (laughs) Obviously, fancy me a couple vapes as well. So. (laughs) <laughs> Need to know what vapes he got. Need to know. 
He's 16. He shouldn't be vaping at all. Nobody should be. I agree. But if you're going to, I need to know what the nuke's smoking on. All right. Let's talk some NFL news that we have heard. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders have come out in abundance, chit-chatting about Antonio Pierce being ma named full-time head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. Obviously, he's currently there as an interim after Josh McDaniels was fired earlier in the year. The whole team's vibe and energy changed quickly whenever Antonio Pierce was named interim coach. He brought back the Raiders mentality. Obviously, the boys are winning in a certain way. They're smoking cigars in a locker room. They're doing their thing. They're getting wins that they hadn't gotten in years and years. So now you got a lot of players talking. Here's Devontae Adams chit-chatting about Antonio Pierce and why he should be the guy going forward. How important is it just from, regardless against who gets the job, to have a resounding yes and just that energy shift that's been for him? Yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously who I wanted. That's that's my vote, and I've, I've been vocal about that, and that's – um, you know, that's, that's basically how the whole locker room feels and, you know, with good reason. I mean, he's come in and, and done, done a great job and, you know, he's continued to, to win us over. It's not just the, the comfortable thing. I think um, having AP here will, will be, uh, you know, it'll be good for this, this organization. He's, he kind of embodies what it means to be a Raider and that mentality, that swag and, you know, all the things that he endorses is, is the things that I believe in. So. Um, it's easy for a guy like me, especially having dealt with him a little bit this year now and gotten to know him and see his evolution, you know, in front of the team and, you know, all those things, all the, all the different fields of, of being a head coach. So definitely, definitely um, rooting for him. All right. So that's the biggest name on the offensive side. Let's go to the defensive mm -hmm. side. Max Crosby, does he want him? Does he want him? Let's hear. Max, yesterday uh, Devontae said if he had a vote, so to speak, that it would be for AP to be the coach coming back next year. Are you – where are you standing on the situation, where it is right now? Yeah, I've already said my piece, yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, but that's, you know. <laughs> not even going to get into this, you know what I mean? Yeah, we'll see. You know, I definitely, you know, they already have my vote, him and champ, so we'll see what happens. What, what did they do to change the culture, so to speak, or to bring the culture back to where it needed to be? How did they How did they make that happen? So um, short, such, such short time. You know, honestly, it's it's just a testament to them, um, you know, and their character, you know, as people. You know, you can't, you know, in the NFL, everybody's trying to look for the guy. And every single year, guys are getting fired, and this new guy's coming in and replacing them. So it's not an easy job. There's only 32 head coaches in the, in the, in the whole world. So um, you got to find a leader of men. And when you got one of them, you know, in the building currently, I don't know why you would let them go. Um, so I feel like, you know, we just got to make the right decision. And, um, but first, we, you know, we got to finish the season the right way. That's all that matters. Max is friends with Mark Davis. They smoke cigars together. So I think at the beginning he was like, man, putting Mark in a tough spot here mm -hmm. if yeah. I answer. But then he opened up and was like, nah, Antonio deserves it. Mm -hmm. I think everybody feels that way. Outside looking in, why not? I agree. What do you think, AJ? Yeah, and obviously I'm sure it does go a long way when you have your two absolute studs, of you know, faces of the NFL really endorsing the guy that's there. And like you said, Max was on here Whenever he was on, he said, oh, I'm actually smoking cigars tonight with, with Mark Davis, the owners. I don't know how much that does happen in other teams, but the owners will actually hang out with players. I don't know if it's a lot or not, but I think that's a big deal. So I would imagine Mark Davis is absolutely listening to these guys. But what's the process? You, you're still going to go and interview a bunch of people, right? I don't know. Do you even have to? Sure. I, I think that's everybody saying. This is like Steve Wilkes of Carolina. You know? Yeah, I mean, it seems like a prime, prime way where you can just, boom, season, whenever the season ends, here we go. We name him the head coach moving forward, but I wonder if they're going to do their due diligence or whatever and go out there and at least maybe interview guys to get some information from them. You could do that. Yeah, so Chris Ballard, whenever we're looking for our new head coach, I think he interviewed like 14 people or 15 yeah. people mm -hmm. or something like that. It's like, damn, that's a long 20 time. hours each. Yep. Long, long, long time. And it's like, did he think every one of these guys could have been their head coach or was he potentially just trying to get as much information about everything as possible? There's obviously two different ways to handle it. If they start interviewing other guys, does that mean, well, we weren't so completely on Antonio Pierce. Then does the locker room who's behind Antonio Pierce wonder what the hell is going on? What's the, what about the fans who probably want Antonio Pierce? Grew up Raider fan, love the Raiders. Like it's a interesting dynamic. In the interim head coach, I understand there could be some juice from the interim that maybe wears off over time and everything like that. But in the NFL, they fire coaches all the time, so you're going to get it wrong potentially, anyways. Mm -hmm. If everybody is seemingly on board with somebody, why not? Just see if it could take place. Yeah, I wonder if part of it, too, is with the whole Basacha situation where he le leads them to the playoffs and then they, you know, let him go and then everything kind of goes south. If he maybe isn't trying to right or wrong a little bit. But I also feel like 
Harbaugh is kind of the white whale that's just like hanging above every. Like he used to yep. started his NFL coaching career with the Raiders. Like you wonder if a couple teams aren't going to be so quick to make a decision because they in like the back of their head they're thinking, well, if there's a chance we could get Harbaugh, you know, like we're gonna we're gonna do whatever we can to sell out and try to get him. Before we end our stream here on ESPN, head on to YouTube and ESPN Plus. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah! I would like to say that uh, there's a ratings thing that's being released today Mm -hmm. about the amount of people that watch, you know, on ESPN. Mm -hmm. From where we were to now, it feels like we won some people over on TV-wise. Here we go. But the amount of people that spend their time with us on ESPN, YouTube, TikTok, ESPN Plus, every single day is absurd. Yeah. So I'd like to say thank you all so much for following along with your sports world with us, for allowing us to be a part of your day, for allowing our stupidity to influence your life, and for taking a mental vacation with us. All we ever try to do is bring a little bit of happiness, a little bit of laugh, while bringing some comedic, informative stuff to the table. I think we do it good. I'm very proud of the team. I'm very proud of where we are, and I'm incredibly grateful on this glorious Feel Good Friday for everybody that has allowed us to do this for a living. So as we continue on YouTube and ESPN Plus and TikTok, thank you all so much. Have an incredible weekend. See you Tuesday. Monday. We were live on Monday. Yeah. It's all right. Last week we were off on Monday. They get it. They'll know. They'll know. That probably got cut off anyway. Good tease for Tuesday either way. (laughs) Yeah. It's fascinating, this uh, rating shit, AJ. really is. Yeah. Wait, well, how do they even do ratings now? How do you even collect? Exactly. How, there's so many different platforms. Well, that's – that's, and, and people fake ratings all day, every day, mm, and they buy ratings, they buy views. Total audience delivered is a mathematic equation that was created by these networks to, you know, kind of get a number to wherever they need to get to. And we've always mocked it, you know, because on the internet there's a scoreboard, literally, mm-hmm. you know. And there was times where people would buy views and – by concurrent viewers and that was certainly something that was a part of the internet's history i don't think it's happening nowadays as much because it's very obvious Mm -hmm. when it's taking place it's like well there's no auction you see but you got that number but there's no so those two would correlate with each other you get exposed so i think the internet the reason why we've always enjoyed and why we've always mocked whenever these networks or other internet networks release their numbers it's like what's real you know what is and if the people are watching and they're hate watching, is that is that good? Right. Is that still is, count though? That still counts. Definitely, but does it? Does that matter? Are those people gonna ever support your never, right? So like what numbers matter, what numbers don't matter, what numbers are fake, what numbers are on in restaurants, what number you know, so like the numbers thing is something that I literally just stop paying attention to. People wouldn't believe that because I'm the person that does my own negotiating and everything like that. And when business has to take place, I will certainly do my due diligence on what our show has accomplished, not only as a live show, but with clips and our podcast, which has only grown. I think it's the biggest in the history of Disney podcasts of all time, I think is the case. So it's like, I try not to pay attention to it at all. So then now, whenever we go to ESPN, it's like, this is the second time where they're like, hey, uh, let's talk about the ratings for the show. I'm like, sweet, let's do this. Uh, I don't like to be a numbers guy because I think that kind of skews creativity. Like, if you build it, they will come. And if it doesn't work, like, certainly learn about it. But don't be scared to maybe shake, shape it up a little bit and try, try it again. So whenever these numbers get presented, I'm like, oh, shit, that's a lot of, that's a lot of people. Yeah. And we have to remember that there's a lot of people watching. Whenever we say things like birds aren't real. Well, yeah, like you said, comedic informative. How, how, who am I not to bring up something that a massive part of the world is Or that like about. a 10-foot gorilla is. Bingo. You know, doing mm-hmm. its thing. Exactly. Because when that gets, you know, written down, typed up, mm-hmm. starting a little bit different than the delivery in which context was stated. The bird what are these guys talking about? Exactly. Did you notice this morning? What's that? It's 20 degrees out. Birds were awfully chirpy this morning. Oh, is that right? That's so weird. I would have never seen that coming. Well, it was warm, and then it got cold. They are pissed. The mm-hmm. sun was out, too. Yeah, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Well, the oh, the out sun's out? Oh, okay. Morning. They're yeah, birds sure. then. Hey, that sunrise was phenomenal. So Beautiful. Nice. It was beautiful. I almost crashed the car on the Anyways, way we're very appreciative, <laughs> and we understand that more people are watching this show than ever before. We're very thankful for the ESPN folks being very hospitable. Now, there are some people actively trying to sabotage us from within ESPN. Funny. More specifically, I believe Norby Williamson is the guy who is attempting to sabotage our program. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure, 
that is just seemingly the only human <laughs> that has information, and then somehow that information gets leaked and it's wrong, and then it sets a narrative of what our show is, and then are we just gonna combat that from a rat mm. every single time? I don't know. But like somebody tried to get ahead of our actual ratings release with wrong numbers 12 hours beforehand. That's a sabotage attempt. And it's been happening basically this entire season from some people who didn't necessarily love the old edition of the Pat McAfee show to the ESPN family. Sure. There's a lot of those. We've heard them anonymously quoted in the Washington Post, mm -hmm. in the New York Post, right. in the New York Times, right. in the LA Times, right. in Wall Street Journal. Right. And they're never like, yeah, love the show. This is awesome. It's always like little things to try to tear us down. So even with the enemy within our own camp, somebody that we don't, I don't like that guy. I, that guy left me in his office for 45 minutes, no showed me in 2018. So this guy has had zero respect for me. And in return, same thing back to him for a long time. So even with that taking place and potential PR, like there's, we're still growing somehow. Yep. So we're very thankful. Yeah. I think we're doing it right. We're trying to do it as right as possible. Mm -hmm. We have good intentions every single time we come in here. We don't always get it right, but motherfuckers been getting it wrong for a long time in this specific field, long time. Every day, every single day. What do you mean? Like you said, you have the right intentions. Like we're trying to sit here and have fun and talk about sports. Bingo. And Connor and other stuff as well might pop in here or there. Every, every now and then. We can stay away from those. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes we have to talk about them because it is so relevant. And just wait for the bird bomb that's <laughs> so going to drop. If there's going to be a bird bomb this year. I know it. I can feel it in my what is, plums. What do you mean? What like do you an mean actual exactly? physical bomb? No, or? no, not like an actual physical okay. bomb. Like, holy hell. 500,000 birds just fell out of the sky and none of them are bleeding. That's what is going on? All right. Allegedly. Allegedly. Although in... Uh, I don't think the birds the, could sue us. In the 1970s... Oh, uh, people could, I mean, there would be some bird community. Yep. You can look into it. In the 70s, the CIA was putting microphones and cameras and birds. And then, sure. Yeah, okay, four times maybe. Yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> oh, it worked. And then they decided, oh, this works. Let's not do this. <laughs> no. It worked. They kept doing it. See, People this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's real. We got to remember this. It's still, though. I, I, I understand what you're saying. The birds thing isn't the one <laughs> for me to fall off. I don't always agree with this guy. He's starting to flip me on this one. All right. See, that's this can't one I'm talking wait. about. We can't have that. That's influence right there. Yep. We got to remember we have that. So let's remember that we're having a good time. We're lucky to do this, obviously. It's sports are amazing. They're supposed to unify. And if you look at our demo, I think we're one of the most unifying shows maybe that's ever been allowed on TV from different political backgrounds and obviously religions mm -hmm. backgrounds, mm -hmm. especially in the world that we're in right now with this whole thing. So these ratings are stupid. Who knows what they actually mean, but we're thankful that allegedly a lot of people watch our show. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for allowing us to do this for a living. And uh, I'll be excited five years from now where everything is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we are, mm -hmm. how we're viewed, who we are. What? And what are... What are birds? Yeah, and what are, what are aliens? Let's get you know, to a break. Five years from now. Mm. Hour three will be on the other side of this five-minute break. We got a good one. We got to pick all these games. Big games happen. Go. Yes. Big games. And then Monday, we're live from Houston. Come on. Live from Houston. That's, that's going to be amazing. That's going to be awesome. Nice stadium. That's a great stadium there. Great. Great yeah. stadium. I've actually had some of the best moments of my life in that stadium. You said that's a real loud house. Used to. Not anymore. Used to be. You know what the NFL did the NBA? Mm -hmm. On Christmas, they just took it. Yeah, ours yeah. now. Colts did it. Colts did it to Houston. Took mm -hmm. the lot of us. Because yeah. Houston was paying attention to the jerseys. Oh, 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 we want the jerseys back from Tennessee. Houston Oilers jerseys. Oh, those are ours. Those are ours. And we're like, you know what? Wow. Let's take the environment. Yeah, bingo. <laughs> Number six. Number six, loudest stadium in the NFL. Congrats to all those stadiums being on the same list as the lot of us. How about that? Hold on. Wait, who uh, made that list? Somebody. I don't know. I saw it on the internet. NBC.com. NBC. <laughs> you tell me. Was that Tommy oh, Curran? Awesome. Maybe. <laughs> Pretty reputable. Lucas Oil. Real. Man, good for you guys. Good for the Loud House. It's the Loud House. People forget, you know, that within this season alone, Lucas Oil Stadium has completely changed the narrative about itself. Yeah. It used to be the Lucas Library. Mm -hmm. The seats are too comfortable. The tickets cost too much. Right. The humans that are going in there are not actual Colts fans. They're people that are just trying to do something. At a game. Now you got people in there 
that are behind the boys. Mm-hmm. Big time. And we got a team to cheer for right now. Backup quarterback, a lot of injuries, new era, new coach. It's like, here we go. The Loudhouse is the real deal. Now, six a little too low. <laughs> Well, I was just about to say, I was critical of the Loud House at first, but I'm very proud of you guys. You guys really showed up. I saw it firsthand at that Steeler game. They were loud. There was a lot of horsepower. Yep. I just need you to know it's going to be hard to get all the way up to number one now that X Factor is coming back to Arrowhead. Damn. I saw that video. He called me uh, McAfee. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. To be fair, though. Did you see that, AJ? I did watch that one, yeah. X Factor's back. Nailed it. Nailed I'd get your two Nailed Super Bowl it. tickets in now, my friend. Do you know that he's, this he controversy. went to 43 straight years of games? Never miss one. How old is he? He's also about to be arrested because he said he was going like 160 miles an hour on the highway. So, <laughs> but he got Mahomes and Kelsey. Yeah, but that and, wolf's still in jail. Yeah, yeah need the wolf back. They're gonna all call the Chiefs to say, "Hey, let him back in." X Factor also not uh, X Factor. He will be showing up as a different super fan this time around. Is that what he said? Yeah. Not sure what exactly. Oh, what, it's a rebirth. Yeah, rebirth. Okay. He also mentioned how Red Extreme, the man who slept with the. You know, mother of his child has something coming to him. Is that what happened? That he, is what he said. He again. said that. He said Red Extreme sub my baby mom? Yeah. M- mother of his child is out It's Jay Baver for Red Extreme? No, did it? Did <laughs> what if, what did if he shows Red up Extrema? as Chiefs? He, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He knocked him out. He said, he got, he, said yeah. he got knocked out in the video. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, he said he got uh, I was T-Bow. just trying to remember my Chief super fans. Yeah, you so got he it. took his wife, or he took his girl, and he knocked him out? Yeah. And took his super fandom. Yeah, precisely. That's his. Second. I might hold a grudge. I may hold a grudge if that happened to me. Yeah, yeah I understand why he's not pronouncing my name right. Yeah, yeah. I'd say. Whew. Gump, did we miss anything in the storyline there? No, oh, spot on. I think he shows up as Chiefs Holic in the suit. Ooh. That's he how took the Chiefs. My girl. Yeah. I'm taking his gimmick. That brings the Chiefs all the way back. Interesting. Oh. He's, He's probably got, be sitting with Taylor. He'll be with Taylor up in the box. He's going to have to run like that Wolf Rant. Remember? He yeah. Ran. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Going to have to rob a bank. Do you remember that? Yeah. He's running forward somehow. We still don't know how. <laughs> His legs are pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. Run running like talk. That's true. <laughs> talk ran six miles like that every single day. Yeah. yeah. With flippers on. And you can hear it. What? This is the knockout punch from uh, oh. Red Extreme to X Factor. As you see there. X Factor is the one wielding a hammer, and uh, Red Extreme has the right hook. I believe in this situation. Yeah, yeah. I think that's his cap that is popping off um, yeah, with, with that right hook. Don goes <laughs> X Factor. Yep. After this video or after this knockout, allegedly yep. the man on the left in the yellow would go on to sleep with the mother of the child of the man with the flag on as a cape. There. Mm-hmm. Really ruined this man's life. But don't you worry, he was down but not out. X Factor's back. Never at. We don't know if he knows where he's at, but he's back. X Factor's back. He doesn't. I just hope his hands. Allegedly. Okay. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> Hour three on the other side. Let's go into the weekend in a beautiful way. Hell yeah. We got primetime Colts game tomorrow night. What? Indy cannot wait for that. You guys going? Oh yeah. Uh yeah. Somebody uh, somebody yeah. new is joining the Lad House. Are we tomorrow. off ESPN? Yeah. Okay. Fuck off. <laughs> what? What's How's that about, happen? Tony? Tone Diggs is going to make uh, an appearance. Come on now. We're being Congrats. blessed with Tone Diggs' appearance. Pumped. At the Loud House. Mm-hmm. Only night game of the year. You get a sitter. Primetime Tone. Come on now, Tone. Not you guys were not a mandatory work there? event. What'd you say, it's Nick? It's not even a mandatory work event. It's well, it optional. Is, it is kind of because we need all voices. It needs to be live. It needs to be live. Force power! I would have thought comments from those two. Well, that literally is the back row. <laughs> Getting you there. Yeah. Are you going to scream alongside them at the Loud House? No. Yeah. What about alongside us? Yes. All right. Good enough. Where the tone? Where the big uh, Drew Brees earmuffs that he had on his kid? You're going to need it. You're talking about when they beat us in the Super Bowl? Yeah, but I'm saying you guys are going to all need some kind of ear protection with it, how loud this place it's is. a big idea, Hawk. I didn't even put it together that that was how that went, but yeah. <laughs> kind of. Sure. Talk was in there cheering for the Raiders. Yeah, he was. Of Talk. course. He's a front runner. Always has been. Always will be. And then Colts win. All of a sudden, he's got his loud hat shirt on. Yep. Yep. The whole time. That's what he does. It's also, to be fair, I don't think he fully understands what football is right now. I think he's still trying to figure out the game. He knows what TikTok is. Yes, he does. Doesn't need to figure that out. Yeah. He knows what the talk is. Yes, mm-hmm. he does. I still have yet to be on there, but we got good community on there. Is. <laughs> Thank you, talk. See ya. Siegelman's stable here. He's, yeah, he's right. riding some horses. That's right. That baby talk. Yeah, baby talk. Yeah.
Yeah, really. I thought, no, I have no talk. idea. Way to go, talk. <laughs> Out to lunch. <laughs> Proud of you, buddy. <laughs> Space cadet. That guy has edited four videos just in that time we've had him he on. He just gave a right. queen wave. Well, he's in a parade. He should be in a parade. He's been dunking on Bill a lot lately. Yeah, Way to go, yeah. talk. What? Yeah. Four no. case. Kind of. All right, let's get to a break. Proud of you, talk. <laughs> that guy has an Emmy. He does. Mm-hmm. He's gonna- Think about where he, whatever he did before this. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't, yeah, he has, he has an a, Emmy. He has an Emmy? He has, oh, yeah. yeah from, uh, he, he did social media for the MLB and got oh. a uh, an Emmy for it. Yeah. Could wow. you imagine the MLB people would talk just now that we know talk? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like he's, he's like the Jokic of Twitter, or of talk, excuse me. He is. Just wants to go worry about his horses. Yep, mm-hmm. that's it. And then he'll lock in for 10 straight hours. Yep. And at 400 videos. Mm-hmm. Captioning all of them. Even different colors for different words that have yeah. a little bit more emphasis on it. Yeah. One on the live show, one on the video that I'm editing earpieces. Yep. Two different headphones. The guy's a maniac. I don't know how many of those are left. No. You know what I mean? Not many. I, don't know. I, I actually looked at him the other day as he was doing his thing. And I'm like, all right, in five years, where's talking talking be? I'll probably run his own production company if he has. How do we find another talk? And I'm like, I don't know how many more are going to be made. Yeah. Mm-mm. I don't well, know how many more are going to be made. Have him have him bring some young apprentice along and try to mentor them. Yeah, but I don't think he can mentor what's in here. That's right. You know uh-huh. I mean? See, I feel like talk's exactly. a True. head down, 20-year type guy. He doesn't want to run his own thing. <sighs> Somebody at some point is going to find out how talented that guy is. You know? And they're going to offer him something the weekend offer him. And Talk's going to hop on that treadmill. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's going to run his ass right over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But those You're people right. those people who are trying to poach him, they'll talk to him for two minutes. And this guy can't be the guy. There's no way. There's got to be another him. guy. This isn't him. Good crew here. Very lucky for it. Let's get to a break on the other side. We'll wrap up this week in beautiful fashion. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take five. Bye. Bye. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Undercover Dogs. On this show, if you haven't seen it, this is where we get recognition to some of the guys that don't get the recognition like the big names. He's an undercover dog. He's an undercover dog for sure. My first undercover dog. Travis Etienne. He had 16 carries for 102 yards, two touchdowns. He only 49 yards from having 1,000 yards this year. My second undercover dog is Khalil Herbert. 18 carries, 124 yards, a touchdown against the Falcons. Back to back weeks with 100 yards. He averaged 6.2 yards of carries in the last two weeks because of plays like this. My third undercover dog is Jalen Rager. He had a 98 yard return this week against Buffalo. It's only four pickoff returns that's been returned this this year. He bounced around for the last couple of years, but I think he found the home in New England. These are my undercover dogs. I want to thank everybody who's been tweeting hashtag undercover dogs. We're watching every week to find undercover dogs. It's been a hell of a season. Let's finish strong with undercover dogs. He's an undercover dog. He's an undercover dog for sure. Jalen Milrow often wears his own branded apparel reading LANK across the front. It's an acronym that stands for Let a Naysayer Know. Being told by his former offensive coordinator, that Bill O'Brien. That is not what I thought. Is that not what you thought? Boy, let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. <laughs> of course. The professional's right in the middle of his lead. <laughs> That's all right. I just keep I going. You almost lost me. <laughs> <laughs> Real tight up here, as you were. I you <laughs> Reese, you were too smooth with that. I thought it was going down. I thought it was going down out here. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, sorry about it. Let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. That's what we thought the whole time. That's what we all thought. I feel really good. Like, my body feels fresh. My mind clear. Like, I'm going to go do it tonight, I think. You know? Like, I'm going to go do it. 77,899 people going bananas. I thought I wouldn't be able to sleep last night. I thought that I'd wake up with high anxiety. That is not the case at all. I am so ready to get out there and do what I was put on this earth to do. I'll be walking out of that thing. This is a big night because uh, 11 years ago tonight, I had my match with Jerry Lawler. Come on! Broadcast colleagues, same night, 11 years apart, could become the first undefeated broadcast team in the history WWE wrestling. Not good. 
we will be. Only two superstars have actually commentated on the same WrestleMania that they had a match on. Pat McAfee joins that club tonight. Pontius is in and Party Boy is here. Pontius is here. Party Boy is in WrestleMania. Pontius' is cheeks are out in WrestleMania. Now he's putting that thing up on Sami Zayn. I would like to say that that's the first time I've seen Pontius' ass, but that is not the case. Hey, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. We win! We win! We win! Punches and punches from We Man! We Man so angry! Oh, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at this! Body slam! We Man! Body slam! He said he's a! We Man used to kick himself in the face! Are you kidding me? Now he's body slamming Sammy Zay! You know, I've walked out that ramp into this setting probably 10 million That's times fine. in my That's mind. Fine. There was a time where every time I walked out of a door, I was acting as if I was walking into a WWE arena. So tonight, whenever I feel that energy, just hoping that I don't have a heart attack immediately. I'm hoping that I don't get too gassed, and I'm hoping I put on a damn good show because I've been thinking about this for 23 years. Let's watch Gorilla do this thing, huh? I'm prepared, I'm ready, I'm excited. Hey, who do you want to see tonight? I want to I wanna see Pat McAfee tonight.
got beer in my ears. Like it feels like I got water in my ears. I got beer in both of my ears. But I just had the incredible opportunity and honor <laughs> to chug beers with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Have a WrestleMania match that Vince McMahon was a part of. I'm living on cloud 50 right now, dude. This is sweet. What a day, what a dream, what a life. Now I'm gonna have a couple more Steve Wisers. Wide. Maybe a little whiskey. Wide. Maybe some carbs, because I've been ketoing for four weeks. What? This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice, could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport, 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 sport! Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Feel Good Friday, January 5th, 2024, Hour 3, presented by DoorDash, starts now! Football! Got a big weekend ahead of us in Hell football, yeah. don't we? Yeah. At both the professional level, one in which this man is a Super Bowl champion, and at the collegiate level, one in which this man is a college national champion. That is A.J. Hawk. A.J., does that thing have a hood on it? Is that a hoodie? I'm, I'm oh, yeah, there's a hood on this. It's like a weird, tall hoodie thing. Ooh. Can you, I, I know you're not, I'm all dancing for you. I'm all a puppet. <laughs> okay, I'm not, but, I know that's what you're saying. Uh -huh. Can you put that up there? Is it one of those tight ones? It's pretty tight. It would be. But I got my, my ears and stuff were, were getting away. But, yeah, it's pretty. it'd be like a... No, yeah. See, it all gets all messed up with my ears. But, yeah, I've never really put it up, but you can. Is it one of those ones, though, that has, like, the high neck and then it's, like, really, really tight. tight to the face? No, yeah, I, mean, I don't look like a like I'm, you know, an illusion or a bobsled or something. Kenny from South Park? Yep. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy what South Park does, just haven't seen a whole lot of it. <laughs> Recently or ever? You know how people usually with South Park, they've seen every episode. I have not. I'm not no, one of those you people. You couldn't have seen every episode. There's 50 yeah, seasons. Yeah, yeah, I love them. I respect the, show, the stuff I get. When they send me the clips and stuff, I respect what they do. Yeah. I, that's a documentary, obviously, as well. Yeah, Frank, Matt, and Trey, they're not scared to swing the bat a little bit. Yes, they've right. sat in the uh, seat that uh, we have sat yep. in the last few days for about 20 years now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's a phenomenal thing. Shout out to DoorDash, by the way. We appreciate the hell out of them. Love you, DoorDash. Thank you, DoorDash. Right now, DoorDash uh, enjoys zero dollar delivery fees and reduced service fees on all eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership. Sign up for Dash Pass and get your first month free. Wow. Whoa. That's what DoorDash is doing. Now, nice. listen, you're going to enjoy that first month free, and then you're just going to roll right into month two, three, yep. four, right. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve without even think before you even know it. Yep. Because how convenient and perfect it is. AJ, I don't know what DoorDash is like in Ohio, but I know here in Indiana, phenomenal. The goat. Yep. I mean, I would say multiple times a day I use DoorDash now. So yeah, everything. By the way, it changed the world. It changed. It changed how I operate. It changed how everyone operates. Yeah. I feel like around me. Shout out to DoorDash. Love you, DoorDash. If you get the DoorDash credit card like I did, they just give you the Dash Pass for free. Ooh. DoorDash credit. There's card. a DoorDash credit card. Oh yeah. Are you a guy that signs up for a lot of credit cards? That's Mickey Skates back there. Are you a credit card sign up guy? I'm a active reward point user. Yeah, so you yeah. sign Miles. up. So when you're checking out at a store, they say you want to sign up. You're like, yup, I want everything I do here to be tracked for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Love that. Take it. AJ, well, you do that as well? Absolutely not. When they Never. sit there and I'm, yeah. hey, you want to uh, you want to get a credit card to this store? No, no, sir. I don't want to sit here and give you my email and spend 25 minutes checking. Yeah, are you a member? You know, a member, you save uh, seventeen fifty dollars and fifty cents right now if you just sign up for this. All I need is your email and your cell phone number, social security number. Right. Hey, just check me out. Yep. I'll pay more money actually for you to do this now. Mm -hmm. I don't want it. Actually, how about an extra seventeen bucks? To get me out of here right now, so I don't have to do this conversation. <laughs> but they try everywhere. Yeah. And I've seen, I've seen certain friends of mine, moms, mm -hmm. they have a wallet. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Mm. All of them. Yep. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I got a... <sighs> this one's expired from last year. Shoot. I've been a member. You know, right down to the next one. Right into it. Boom. Yep. 1,255 points on this. That should save me about a buck fifty on this, right? Mm -hmm. That's how this thing should go. That's how it is. I didn't know you are one of those guys. I love that. Do you do couponing? No, no couponing. Uh, just certain services, especially like DoorDash... 
save like a thousand bucks a year. Well, how about tra- air travel too? There's ones miles. like with travel yeah. with miles. Oh, yeah. I, I use my, my credit card. Yeah, I use it for Amazon uh, gift card. It just goes right to my Amazon account. That's that's the most valuable. That's like handing you cash. Look at us being smart. That but, one is. Yeah. I, I got an Amazon credit card. I mean, there's no reason not to. With how often most people are on Amazon, because then every once in a while I'll go on there and get something, and it'll just be like. Hey, you have two hundred and fifty bucks in you know credit here. Do you want to just use this for your purchase? So it oh, sounds okay. like Amazon and DoorDash, with the way we operate, oh yeah, should so, probably be yeah. credit card. Look at yeah. me, I'm becoming a, yeah. uh, my friend's mom all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. Amazon too also plays in uh, Whole Foods. So every time I go to Whole Foods, I, I, you go to Amazon on your phone, little app. You just when you walk it. in there, does it just automatically make you lift your nose up? Like this? Uh, so I, I eat like the same exact thing every single day. So I, I don't even, I don't even. You go to Whole Foods every day. Uh, every other day, uh, every day, yeah. Well, you might be the most consistent whole fooder in oh, the country. Oh yeah, I go a ton, but I, I just beeline. I, I go to the same exact things. Funyuns the out of there. No, I don't sell funyuns in Whole Foods. I don't sell any of the good stuff. You've come a long way. Well, I I don't have the option. If they're there, I take. But DoorDash them. gives you the option, and that's why I use DoorDash so much. Thank you, DoorDash. Thank, Thank you, DoorDash. DoorDash. DoorDash still doing it. Obviously, we'll be able to do it forever. There's a lot of things happening around the sports world. Will Howard has committed to Ohio State, the former Kansas State quarterback. Obviously, with the transfer portal, with the names going here and names going there, and who's going to the NFL now, they thought they were potentially transferring. It has been the wild, wild west as the college football season is still happening. Mm-hmm. By the way, so mm-hmm. the national championship has not happened yet, and there's already been massive moves in a lot of different places. DJ Uyunglele is mm-hmm. now the quarterback for Florida State. After Cam Ward, who was potentially going to be their quarterback, said he was going to go to the NFL, but he's not hiring an agent, so will he or will he not? Finn from Toledo ends up at Syracuse. There's people on the move everywhere. What will Will Howard do? Kyle McCord went into the transfer portal after almost leading a team to a college football mm-hmm. playoff, except for one drive having an interception Ooh. against Michigan. It is insane. Will Howard going to Ohio State. He can move. He can throw. I'm a big fan of the way he plays football. Ryan Day had his eye on him, or, or how do you think this happened at Ohio State? I'm not sure exactly how this does happen from, like, the end of the season till now, how they all work out. I know Pete Samuel, though, didn't he say the Ohio State coaching staff evaluated all the quarterbacks in the portal and they really liked what he had to offer? Yeah, so that's what, you know, because Justin Fields was a transfer. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, from Georgia. Yep, yep. He had a lot of success, obviously. C.J. Stroud, was he? Uh, no, day one. Oh, he's yeah, Ohio yeah. State Buckeye yeah. through and through. So Ryan Day has had success with both here, you know? And obviously the conversation about Joey Burrow transferring out of there, going to LSU and having success. Teams have had great success with transfer quarterbacks. There has been misses, though. Has been misses. What do you think Ryan Day does with this Will Howard team? This automatically says we're back in national championship conversation. And how are the Ohio State Buckeye fans treating Ryan Day now after a loss in a cotton bowl the way it went down? I think people may have calmed down a little bit. I don't know. Maybe not. You know, you lose the Michigan, obviously, people. That sticks with you for the whole year, but we know how good Michigan is. I definitely know from watching them up close and personal a couple of days ago. Good. But also, I was listening on some Bobby's radio show today on Friday. I call in, and right before I, I called in, I was listening, and they're talking about, is there going to be a, a true quarterback competition in the spring? Because there's this young kid, Aaron Nolan, coming in as well, mm. and Devin Brown is there. And they're thinking, no, like you can't bring a – Mm. A tra- like a graduate transfer, an older veteran transfer, and not give him some kind of assurances, right? Why were people saying, yeah, I would assume that the money is getting paid. That's why he chose Ohio State. There's probably other places that would love Will Howard. Very successful, very good quarterback. I saw some people on the internet saying, this is just like Kyle McCord. Why'd you do that? They haven't seen a lot of Will Howard. No. no Will no. Howard got wiggle. Yeah. He's, got, he's got real yeah, he wiggle. He's better. He's yeah. bigger. He's a lot bigger. Like He's like 6'5". 6'5". Like five, six six five. Five. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think a lot of people look at him and say, he's on the all-white team. Exactly. Guy, that is yeah. not the case. Will, Will is he's a good player. Will Howard's uh-huh. a great football player. I think Ohio State got better there. Now, will that stop them from pulling tiles out of the back of players on a sideline? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Will that help them be able to win against Michigan back in Columbus this year? That is the case. Happier Ryan Day's life is a little bit better, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hopefully. Well, What's your now. problem, Ty? Well, I don't know if it's just because we were kind of at the center of it with the Lou Holtz stuff, but after they got beat in the Cotton Bowl, I got about 10,000 mentions of, you know, oh, I, I, Lou Holtz needs to come out today and, and kind of respond to this. A lot of Ohio State fans, but there are so many, so maybe maybe that's just kind of in my world. I mean, I guess AJ's closer to it in Columbus, so he would know better than I would, but at least on the internet, it's kind of been the, the same old song and dance for Ryan Day, I think. I'm sorry. Hey, you earned that. Yeah. You earned that. Good coach. He's the man. Tough gig. It's a bummer that like he does go through it because he was the man when he came on the show. Came on the show, stared at Lou, a fake Lou Holtz. Mm-hmm. Was not aware that that was happening. Nope. 
Ty Lue Holtz. Yes. There. Yeah, didn't we? No heads didn't, up. No, no. Be, I feel like people Which, don't once again, that. a lot of people, you know, in old school sports media do not appreciate the way we go about doing things. Sure. Are you telling Ryan Day about this? Mm, Absolutely no. not. Why would we tell him now? That's no, now's not the time it's to too, tell him. Too late. Still got time to back out of this whole thing. Well, no. Yeah. Backfire. What do you think? How do you think he's going to handle it? Well, we'll see. Gonna Whatever he does out. is awesome. Yeah. And by the way, I'm here too. I, right. I could probably save mm -hmm. Ryan Day. Yeah. However, if he punches him in the face, I'm going to celebrate. That's awesome. I'm going to yeah. celebrate. Yeah, I want yeah. that. And if he doesn't, I'm going to celebrate. Like, however he handles it is a win, but that's hard to get through sometimes to, like, PR people and everything like that. So we got a chance to actually see Ryan Day, I think. Yes. Like the human oh, yeah. that Ryan Day is. And he was awesome. And that was, what, night before a massive game in which I could have lost to Penn State. It's like, he was fantastic. I'm a big fan <laughs> of his. And... uh that was a cold, rainy ass yes, day in Columbus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he made time out of his day to come talk to us, especially just a couple weeks removed from the entire Lou Holtz yeah. thing happening because of our show. He is a good boy. Yeah. yeah. He is. Ryan Great is a good boy. He is. Great He's boy. Good boy. And he was. He was grinning ear to ear when I walked onto that stage. Like I it when I was in that truck kind of waiting to go up there, I was like, okay, like be prepared here. Cause like he he might not think this is funny and like swing on me. And and that would be awesome too if that happened. But right when I got up there, like he started laughing, was grinning ear to ear. I was like, oh, okay, this is this is going to be awesome. Yeah, it was. And it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And they were going to win the game, obviously, so maybe you should talk to him the day before sure. yeah. games all the time. Maybe that's an added element to the mm -hmm. entire thing. Could be. Other news happening, Travis Kelsey, just a couple weeks removed from talking about Bill Belichick and his massive respect for him, talked about Coach Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Travis Kelsey, great of – people can make easy argument that he's the greatest tight end of all time. Yes. Okay. Yeah, now, granted, sure. there's other people that can do the exact same thing. There's like a handful mm -hmm. of tight ends that can do that. Travis Kelsey is one of them. Thank God Taylor Swift introduced him to the world mm -hmm. because yeah. he's a good one, a great one. And when he speaks, we should listen because he has a football IQ through the roof. Here's him talking about Coach Mike Tomlin and Mike Tomlin's future. Another note on the Steelers-Seahawks game with the Steelers' Week 17 win they secure uh, head coach Mike Tomlin's 17th consecutive non-losing season. Holy. How about, how about they were talking about. They were talking about firing him, uh, what, seven weeks ago? They're talking Tony Dix, The media is so dumb. Why are we? <laughs> media, why are they're talking about you, video? Tony. Well, I don't think so. Yeah, just I never said that. Just a bunch of jackasses. <laughs> just out here fucking. Talking nonsense. One of the best coaches the NFL has ever even seen. Tony. About to yeah. possibly yeah. get his 17th consecutive non-losing season. Jesus. Dude. Jackasses, he said, AJ. Now, Tone Diggs, you're potentially one of those uh, donkeys he was referring to. Mm -hmm. Would you like to respond to You think to I'm one of them? Uh, I mean, I I'm never, thinking our show is potentially I mean, I never a always, show that gets in I front never, of Travis. I, I never Pop. said that. First off, I never said that. Uh, I said wholesale changes. Who knows what that could have meant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, wholesale means everything. Also, I'm sure Travis is spending a lot of time uh, watching Steelers games when they play at the exact same time most of the time, and I'm sure he's going back and watching the film and seeing how the Steelers are playing. So, whoa, 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 Tony, whoa. Tony. Tony. Maybe, Tony. maybe stick to know what you know. Okay, first and foremost, yeah, football. He knows football. He knows NFL football. <laughs> yeah, does he? Yeah. I'd say. Don't come at <laughs> T's for his boyfriend. Yeah, I'd say he does. Oh. I know he knows how to play tight end really well, and he knows the ins and outs of the Chiefs, but other Dancing. than that. Dancing. He knows how hard it is to win. Exactly. Because he's been on the Chiefs whenever they weren't good, and then mm -hmm. he's been on the team whenever they've been great. He knows that it's not easy to win. So for 17 straight years to have a winning season, I think a lot of people in the NFL go like, you got him. Hang on to him. Yeah. But boy, these Steelers fans have not been thrilled with these winning seasons as of late, A.J. Hawk. Yeah, I, I mean, so for real, though, I know Tone sometimes uses maybe voice and all of that. How does he really feel? How does he think the rest of Whatever. Pittsburgh feels? Well, we don't okay, know. That's a good question. You're right. You'll never know because I don't know, okay? Mm. That's good. I have no idea how I feel right now. Not Is a lot it? of sports shows will say that. <laughs> Not a lot of jackasses in the media will say that. <laughs> no does, it right? does it feel great? Does it feel great right now? Ours. It does. Last two weeks have felt great. Did it feel terrible two weeks before that? It did. Am I smart enough to know? No. But are you smart? I know how invested enough to know, yes, like I'm invested about sick of being in the middle of the road. I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Would we like a fucking playoff win again? That sounds. That even sounds ridiculous. Saying, oh, "We like a Super Bowl again." I don't give a shit about a playoff win. Yeah. Oh no, you've changed. No, 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 no. Oh, I, the expectations I, there. I, that became a Detroit Lions expectation. It did. Yes, it did. Like it. I it just did. want a playoff win. He yeah. said. It did. That's Lower, what, lowering the standard there, aren't but you? that's what I sucks. thought. The standard was the standard. Exactly. Yeah, it is. Which just puts us right back where we were a couple weeks ago. Now I'm sad again. No, 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 no. It's Feel Good Friday. Yeah. 
We're gonna make the playoffs. We're gonna win the Super Bowl this year. Boom. Let's go, Mason. That sounded like a maybe voice. I mean, they're just they're yep. never gonna they're never gonna have like what the Patriots have this year. Like they're never gonna have the opportunity to get a guy in the top five. The the only thing of them getting like a big Ben type is for either a stat class or they hit on like a Brock Purdy. Dak Prescott in the third or last pick. That goes back to uh, Mike Tomlin telling Chase Young, "Bingo, I ain't never gonna lose enough games. Get a guy that looks like you." Mm -hmm. And Steelers fans heard that and were like, "Yeah, you ain't lying. (laughs) You ain't lying. We ain't ever doing that." You're right. Great defense. Mm -hmm. Mason Rudolph has been playing. George Pickens is a whole new player. Mm -hmm. Feels like over the last few weeks, Jalen Warren, Mm Naj is doing his thing. There's a renewed sense of energy in the Pittsburgh Steelers organization. Let's go. You're right, though. Like Backup quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens? No problem. Pro bowler. Bingo. He is a pro bowler. People forget. Okay. And when, when the Steelers and Ravens play, you know what you can do? What's that? You can throw who's playing and the records right out the window, my friend. Really? Rivalry game. Rivalry game. Get Fun fact for you. 12-0 and 0 is the dog against the spread in the last 12 Ravens-Steelers games. So it really doesn't matter who the favorite is, who's playing. Like, I watched Charlie Batch go into Baltimore and win it against, and he had no business going. I've seen Snoop Huntley. He's won and two against Steelers. He's won against Steelers. Uh, RG3 won against the Steelers. That was a pretty good Steelers team. So wow. What? Wednesday afternoon football. It was. Yeah. 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 He ran 37 yards. Blue yeah. Sammy. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, it, it honestly, four, four. It, I don't think it matters who is playing in this one. I, I was shocked to actually see the Ravens as dogs, even though Lamar's not playing. And, you know, Mason is a backup quarterback. Um, kind of. This one is not like a, hey, Steelers are definitely going to win this ball game situation. I don't He's know. Playing on defense. Are, I don't know. Anyone sitting out on defense for the Ravens? I would assume. I would so, assume right? if Lamar's resting, there has to be some others. And Odell said, like they asked Odell about his uh, 250k, I think it is for like five catches or something like that, and he said, "Don't bet on me doing that." He said, "I got a, I got a shoe collection. That's like seven of that. Yeah. yeah. So could sell five. I'm, I'm here to be healthy and go win a Super Bowl. I like that Ravens team a lot. Yeah. And Harbaugh would love. The well, Ravens would love Ronnie. Ooh. Would love. Well, yeah. think about it. they won. But the Ravens with backups to knock the Steelers Ooh. out of the playoffs. They, and they won what twenty some straight games uh, preseason. So like they they know like the backups know how to prepare and take games seriously and stuff like. I, yeah, this is this is anything but a given. Uh, other news that we have not covered this week: massive deal from ESPN for I believe collegiate women's sports. Yeah, yep. Ty, you mm-hmm. read up about this obviously because the Iowa Hawkeyes legend Caitlin Clark mm-hmm. is a massive piece of this, alongside Angel Reese and that LSU team that was fantastic to watch in the women's March Madness last year. But women's sports, ESPN inked a huge deal. What did you learn about it, and where are we going? Yeah, it was like eight years for sixty-five million dollars annually, which obviously is way bigger than anything that they've the NCAA women's uh, basketball has ever had. It kind of puts them. It's obviously not the same as like what the men are getting every single year in terms of like a piece of the pot with the broadcast deals, but they said that pretty much over the last like the last year alone has done more for women's college basketball than the previous however many years that it's been on TV. So it's kind of just like more games are going to be on TV now. Obviously, it's not, not just, just gonna, basketball. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. It's not just going to be the tournament either. It's not just basketball. Like we're going to see more women's sports and obviously like this opens the door for more NIL deals and stuff like that. Like they're, they're very cognizant of the fact that like they can make stars in women's college basketball. And like, like Caitlin Clark is the throw out men, women's like she is the biggest star by like 150% at the university of Iowa. Like it's not even close, you know, like you could probably, I mean, you, you could put her up there with just, like college sports in general, mm-hmm. like she is, she is a true household name. So like, yeah, this just in terms of like growing the sport. It's, yeah, it's a shame she's coming to Indiana next year. I, Hell yeah, I don't yep. know. I really don't know. I can. Are you talking about this new if, sixty-five million dollars a year deal with uh, women's sports with Caitlin Clark? Mm-hmm. Uh, still another year of eligibility. Yeah, and another year to do whatever she's got to do. And NBC. Uh, messed up the clock sync there. They did. Gonna happen. So a lot of people said she did. She did. Yep. Actual clock still not there. Look for the red. Look for the red. Ball's out red. Go, yeah. get, get. There's a she- picture from behind going around everywhere too. Ball's clearly out before the uh, the buzzer went off. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, if they if they win a national championship this year, I think you could probably argue. Well, I guess it would depend too on where she's at in the all time scoring ranks because I would assume she wants to break that record. She wants to be a member of the Indiana Fever. I don't know she's if breaking she does. it this year. Yeah, there's a good chance she breaks it this well, year. Well, then but Angel Reese doesn't want to go back to school another year. Okay. Well, actually, we she, she in latest you know uh, ESPN W um, 
WNBA mock drafts. Yeah, she's she's not even in the top ten. Oh come she's on, she's falling. Yeah, really? she's falling. Oh what? come on. What don't, happened? Don't worry about Kaylin. She she's coming to Indy whether it's this year or next year because we got Aaliyah Boston and who knows how the season goes. Really, to be honest, the number one priority for the Indiana Fever need to be Caitlin Carp. I don't mm-hmm. care if it's this year or next year. Yeah, so WNBA is going to have to figure some stuff out because I think all those Iowa farmers are paying the shit out of Caitlin oh, yeah. Clark. She's she signed a deal with Gatorade with State Farm. Like oh, those, she's, will, those will stay though. Those right. will stay. Well, yeah, she comes to the I mean, those get bigger. Probably. Yeah, absolutely. But also, yeah, like the opportunities she has in Iowa, like it's. But farmers insurance is dropping her. What? How? Once you leave Iowa, you can't have it anymore. There's farmers in Indiana. There are. A lot of them. There are. You're right. A lot of them. See those commercials. Right. Mm-hmm. I've seen them. I've driven past them a lot. Those are farms. Have you driven past farmers too? Probably. Yeah, for sure. It's tough to leave Iowa City. It is, you know. And if you can have another year, maybe pick up a, another bullshit degree, you know, just by having fun. <laughs> Why not? I know Why plenty not? of people who have done that. Praising hell. <laughs> Praising Dale. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> Caitlin Clark. Mm-hmm. Iowa City. That was all. That women. The Angel Reese. LSU story, and then the Caitlin Clark Iowa story. Mm-hmm. That was fun, man. Yeah, you know, that was a lot of fun last year. Well, and even like the other women's sports, like when, whenever Oklahoma softball is on, like we watch it, we, we go to it and we watch it. And it's one of those things where it's it's the only time it's on is when they're in the the final. Like if they do have more of those games, like I would absolutely watch Oklahoma. Volleyball, too. volleyball, volleyball, this volleyball year. is volleyball. awesome. Yeah, volleyball yeah. is killing it now. Volleyball is. I think they made a giant jump. I feel that's yeah. a great sport. But I got a chance to play in high school. Very lucky for that. We had a men's team at our high school, and we're actually we did really, we were good. Uh, only played. I played my freshman year for like a couple months, but it was right in the middle of like soccer. Yeah. Then my senior year after I signed to go to West Virginia, wasn't playing soccer in the spring. Played volleyball in the spring for an entire season. Favorite sport I ever played, organized. It was so much fun. So the amount of strategy and athletic and like everything that is involved in that sport, fantastic. And these women are monsters out there. Yeah. What in Nebraska? Nebraska sold out the like 80, stadium. 80,000 mm-hmm. plus or something like that. So you bank on <clears throat> women's volleyball being shown to more people, it's going to do well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gymnastics, it's what are we thinking? Electric. Yeah, think whenever so. we watch Olympics, we all buy in. The yeah. only thing I think that's tough for gymnastics, and we'll see how this changes with NIL and everything, but I think because it's so, ex- like the equipment is so expensive and like you always have to, like very few places have a field house just specifically for gymnastics so you have to move everything into like the basketball stadium or whatever like i think that is a lot of times one of the sports that ends like if there are budget cuts like i think that goes a lot of the time well i hope not because whenever we watch every four years of the olympics yeah Mm -hmm. hey this is our sport Mm -hmm. i mean that's that's what everyone's going to watch that and you know basketball obviously but like that that is the main draw i think outside of you know the track and field events. hey congrats espn and women's collegiate sports i think softball was part of it too i think the whole was 115 million a year for all the yeah every, all everything combined that yeah that, that that's just that's a massive piece. investment mm-hmm. that's Dude. a massive investment more sports is better though yeah, yeah. definitely you know what i mean because there comes a time where we're watching some terrible shit on tv yep. like we get some competition out here please. please and then you flip over and all of a sudden you see a softball game and it's like nine eight or something, yeah. mm. and like the fifth or sixth, it's like here we go. Yep, we got some live action balls, mm-hmm. just like that NHL game last night. Yep. Yeah, so who sweet. won last night? Uh, I I don't know who played. Ooh, I think the Oilers and the Avalanche yeah, last night. Did they? They played? won that. Yeah, the Abs won that one. Another, the, uh, the lads, the lads beat Texas hockey in overtime, uh, and the uh, Red Wings Dallas won as sucks. well in a shootout last night. The Red Wings played in the yeah, NHL? Yeah, oh, yeah. Actually, Patty King in Hollywood, hmm. in, in the King's Barn. Mm-hmm. In front of Big Mike? Oh, yeah. Sorry about it, Big Mike. Big Mike? What? They didn't do that in front of Frank Agnone. Did, uh, you're, you're telling me they did that in Sorry front of Sorry about it, Frank. They did it in front of him, too. Another shootout loss. Fuck. Shit. They need to practice these shootouts. I don't think <laughs> they've uh, they get a point. I don't yeah. think they've won since we've been there. Uh, that has nothing to do with us. It's only been a day and a half, come yeah. on. I'm just, just stating the facts here. <laughs> Let's make some picks. That's hockey wood, baby. Hey, incentives this weekend. Let's break this down. There's people playing for a lot of money this weekend. Let's remember that as we're watching the games. And we can also gamble. You know, potentially gamble on this particularly happening. Because some teams, some coaches are looking out for their players saying, yeah, let's make sure this happens. And then there's some places, you know, where uh, maybe not so much. Odo Beckham Jr. said that probably not. 
right, for his yeah, type of thing, yeah, okay? Yeah. So we'll go past that, although he had a lot of money on the line. Jordan Love, $500,000 to make the playoffs with a win. He does that. Additional $500,000 per playoff win. A potential million dollars in the next couple weeks for Jordan Love can be won. Congrats to him, pal. Hell go yeah. get it. Yeah. Alexander Madison, uh, running back that was – Tasked with filling in for Dalvin Cook after he left. 74 more yards for $250,000. Nice quarter mil this weekend. How about a half sack for Javon Kalani for $750,000? Another $500,000 if he's on field for at least 50% of the defensive snaps. An additional $500,000 for at least 60%. Okay, He's currently at 57.4%. If he plays 100% this weekend, yeah. will it be enough to bump him 2.6% of the snaps over the season? Who knows? I assume he's going to be trying to get that. That's another two point two five million. Sheesh. Damn. No, one point seven five. You get it. Do quick math, Pat. Uh, Baker Mayfield, if top ten and top five finishing of NFC passer rating, touchdown passes, pass yards, completion per, uh, percentage, and yards per attempt, three hundred thousand dollars for each. Oh, he had a hell of a year. This yeah. is whenever they say they sign a veteran quarterback. Not a lot of money, salary, but a lot of incentive base. His incentives are all those things: T- touchdown passes, pass yards, completion, right. yards per attempt, passer rating. Right. So like he could actually affect those, go for those, mm-hmm. and have real thing over there. A lot of money. Money on the line for him. Congrats to him. How about Austin Eckler? Remember, he redid his contract there. Maybe earn himself an extra $115,000. All he needs is 110 more yards for that. Uh, the Chargers need also to be at least 27th in average rush for yards for some incentives. Currently ranked 20... Sixth. Sixth. Jeez, I didn't know if that was 26th or 28th. I was about to say, if that's 28th. Boy, that sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Boy, that sucks. DeAndre Hopkins, seven more receptions uh, to reach 75, currently at 68 for 250000 and a big one against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then uh, two more touchdowns for him to get 250000 Dalton Schultz, six receptions for 250000 170 yards for two fifty. dollars uh, Devin Singletary, obviously, has a lot of money up for grabs. And then look at Chris Jones. All he's got to do is fall on a pile. <laughs> That's yep, it. Yeah. Half sack, $1.25 million. Good luck out there, Chris. Ooh, go get him, boys. Go get the money. Remember, he sat out the first couple games, missed a couple game checks. They did a deal that wasn't really, you know, that much more. But if you had another $1.25 million for it, certainly going to make it look a lot better. Shout out to DoorDash. Shout out to the boys. Go get your money. Go ahead and get your food, your neighborhood favorites. And let's go ahead and make some picks for the weekend as we sail into the greatest football weekend we've had. In some time. Let's go. Now the Pittsburgh Steelers take on the Baltimore Ravens. Three-point favorites are the Steelers on the road taking on Snoop Huntley and the boys of the Baltimore Ravens. Win and you're in for the Pittsburgh Steelers. AJ, how do you see it going? Who do you like? Man, I've gone back and forth on this a few times, I feel like. I really have. I don't know who the Ravens are going to play on defense. That worries me a little bit. But I think they would love to play spoiler here, so give me the Ravens. It's going to be a bit of a weather game, uh, mid to high 30s and a bunch of rain, if that factors in at all. What did you just is Ricard, say? Is Ricard playing? I need to know. If Ricard's playing, I'm definitely <laughs> uh, I doubt it. He's got to be playing. Now, Ricard's got to at least play some. Tone, what did you say the record was? 12-0 and 0 in the last 12, the dogs are. ATS oh. against the spread. That's something to think about. Give me the Ravens plus three. Steelers might win. Yeah, Always close in this one. Boz? Boz might hit one home. That'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, to win by two, win by one. And but I think the Ravens are going to go ahead and cover. Zito, what you just say? Could that was a lot? You could have just said that in the microphone. One player will be <laughs> resting that he knows, but they will be rotating like crazy. Allegedly, okay, is the news that he got on from source says for what team? The Baltimore Ravens. Okay. <laughs> on defense or offense? Yeah, defense. Okay. Defense. <laughs> Only one person misses, but they're <laughs> Zeta, you should have said that in the microphone. I appreciate you getting that information for us, though, as we make picks for Week 18. Houston Texans, Indianapolis Colts, Saturday Night Football on ESPN. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Miss Lisa, one-and-a-half-point favorites in the lot house are the Houston Texans. This game could be for the AFC South if the Jacksonville Jaguars were to lose to the Tennessee Titans on Sunday. And this is definitely for a spot in the playoffs. Who do you like, AJ? How do you see it going? So I know this is in the loud house, and they 
have recently been ranked the sixth uh, <laughs> loudest barn in the, the whole NFL, but give me C.J. Stroud wow. in the Houston Texans, wow. minus one and a half. Okay, A.J. obviously loves what D'Amico and C.J. have been cooking down there, and Will Anderson, obviously phenomenal. Good for them. They got a team seemingly for the next 15 years, and a team that we thought we had for the next 15 years looks nothing like the team we have right now. This era transition with Shane Steichen, and I know it's first year for D'Amico Ryans as well, did not start anywhere near how we would have wanted it to start. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Distractions and injuries. And all Shane Steichen has done is go to work. You're getting a point and a half at home. The Indianapolis Colts and this culture oh. have an opportunity to go to the playoffs, potentially host Ooh. a playoff game, potentially hang an AFC South banner with this team, mm-hmm. and they're getting a point and a half at home? Are you kidding me? Come on. I like the Colts, although the PR guy for the Colts can't talk right now. Yeah, that's oh, bad news. No. And he's still in the building. That's not good either. Yeah, he needs not to, he needs not to be sucking face with anybody. Yeah. He's coming out. He was down out. He was on the IR with a thing. Now he's on the other side of it, but he still can barely talk. Yep. So need him to keep his mouth away from Gardner Minshew's mouth. Yep. Give me the Colts plus one and a half. Come on, Colts. Come on, Coach. That could be a game we can affect, boys, with our with our mice. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Let's make sure it's a lot house. Tony, it's gonna be great to see you down there. I'm gonna cheer as loud as I can. Hell yeah, Tony. Boom. Clip it. I don't know if you're going to be winded or not. You haven't been to a game all season. You, you know, that first quarter. Oh, ah! Just wait. I'm that second be, quarter. Yep. Ah! I'm going to be very winded. We appreciate the fact you're even showing face. It turns out losing weight does not put you does not put you in shape. <laughs> what was that, Gumps? It had a baby tone. Yeah, we're proud of tone, huh? Yeah, yeah. why is Tony? Tone. Can't Tony's, wait to making, see him Tony's making an appearance. That would be cool. With, Love the, you, with the whole office? What's up with the Hammer Down boys today? Well, I think Gumpy's pointing out some facts and Tone's like, excuse me, I'm can we add just... full context to this thing? That's mm-hmm. that's kind of what's going on, I think. No, get it. Whether I'm reason. around or not. What's that? What? We love you around. What's, yeah. up? what's up with the Hammer Down boys? What is going on here? It's just shaking all I wanted to do was watch a game of football with my friend. That's all you've been trying to do all year. That's all, all I've been trying to do all year. Now we're doing it. I'm excited. Sorry, Tony. I apologize. Do you have any response for that? I don't accept. You don't accept. Don't yeah. accept. Yeah. What is going no, on? Good Friday. Just accept doubles. it. Just accept the apology. I accept it. He said sorry. He said sorry. He said sorry. I accept. Thank you, Tony. Stick to Ashley, boys. Hell yeah. I'm put your... Look at the HDBs putting their swords aside. Mm-hmm. Way to go, boys. Can't wait to see you both in the at the game together. I love those games, man. So fun. They are so much fun. They are. And like. We talked about this last year. It wasn't when we were going to the games. It's not like they're four and thirteen, and the games are entertaining. Like the games this year, all of them have been entertaining. They Shane Steichen scores. Yeah, they they've scored twenty plus points basically in every single home game. So we get to hear. Lighthouse, dude. Yeah. Top six. We're having a good time tonight. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go to the next game. Thank you. I can't believe you're picking the Texans after learning about the Lighthouse. Mm. Yeah. Con. Jets, Patriots. Patriots favored by two at home. Hell yeah. Now, this is a massive game for huge game. The Patriots, because they can obviously earn their way to, to the number two pick. The big game, actually, for Commanders and Patriots is Falcons, Saints. Patriots lost to Saints earlier in the season. Falcons lost to the Commanders earlier in the season. Winner of Falcons Saints will change the strength of schedule for both the Commanders and the Patriots. So if the strength of schedule there ends up tied and the Patriots and the Commanders have the same record, which won't happen because we'll we'll beat the Jets and the Commanders will lose, then it would be head-to-head and the Patriots lost to the Commanders at home this season, I believe, in Mac Jones' last start. So then the Patriots would be the number two overall pick. Yes, they would be. And Bill Belichick would be drafted at number two, potentially for the first time ever. Yeah, hopefully Bill Belichick. There's been a lot of stuff these these last 48 hours about uh, Matt Groh the director of player personnel being a huge reason the team is, uh, has been assembled the way the team has been this year. Now, I have Ball no guy. idea. Yeah, exactly. I have no idea what the case is there. There has also been uh, about 15 players who have been asked about the possibility of Gerard Mayo being the head coach, and they're like, yeah, we'd run through a fucking wall for Gerard Mayo. So it's either Bill or Gerard Mayo. And I, I mean, The enemy's always within your own case. I hope to Bill God. Bill created Gerard I Mayo. I know. Yeah, it better be Bill. 
it better be Bill. In, in the whole GM thing, sure, bring someone in. And if Matt Groh is the real reason that some of these draft picks and players weren't re-signed and were picked, get his fucking ass out of town now. I like that you don't know who that is, never heard of him, fuck him. Oh, I read yeah. in, I, I, about a half hour this morning was spent. Oh, no, you learned a lot about Matt Oh, Groh. I learned a lot about Matt Groh. I know what Matt Groh looks like. I've seen his face. <laughs> And I and I don't like it. He's seen yours too. Yeah, bingo. What do you think he thinks? Probably doesn't like it either. But I don't care. I'm not the director of player personnel for the New England Patriots. It would be sweet if you were. Though. If I oh. was, you know what we'd be doing? What's that? We'd be poaching everybody. Hey, Mah hey, Mahomes. You getting sick of KC? <laughs> how you feel? How you feel about this? Well, he just the, became friends with Taylor Swift. You think he's going to want to leave there? Uh, how do you feel about two uh, percent of the New England Patriots? Oh, so you're a director of player personnel giving away crap? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Try to turn this son of a bitch around. Let's get the 10 Super Bowls, please. All right, I got the Patriots in this one. AJ, your thoughts? I got the Patriots here, minus two. Uh, I will say, zip on the ball, Zappy has nothing on Trevor Simeon whenever we come to having a good time. Maybe. No, okay. no, no, no. Tonight, because we we've know. seen Simeon out and about. He's a good boy. He, he is. is a good boy. He's a tall boy. He's a tall boy. Fun. Fun boy. Yeah. He is a fun boy. That's a good time. He does. We appreciated that. Yeah. Goofy boy. I enjoyed that he was he is kind of goofy. Yeah. yeah. But in the best possible way, boy. Hey, man. Yeah. Does he like the snow? There's a nor'easter coming through. So I'm gonna that question asked as if he was a cocaine right. user. No, no, no. Yeah. I do not think he is a cocaine no. user. No, they're legitimate. One to three during the game. Yeah, there will I hear be. what you're saying, but the way you phrase it with everything we were saying, yeah. it oh, sounded like you're you right. were asking, like, you're right, you're hey, right. is Trevor Simeon like to party? Or? <laughs> no, I think you have a good time tonight. You know, I think he just has a couple. Yeah, fancies yeah. himself a bit of booze. A couple mm -hmm. cocktails. Yeah. yeah. Has a good time. That, Maybe I, a vape. We don't know. Yeah, Maybe sure. A couple of vapes. Uh, the Nor'easter thing is big because Brees Hall, I don't know if you saw what Brees Hall tweeted. After the Pro Bowl, because people were dying. He's like, I'm going to be an All-Pro next year. I'm going to be a Pro uh -huh. Bowler next year. You guys are going to eat your words next year. So, snow game. I mean, we might have. Well, an Hackett, I just saw. An upset on our hands. I just saw Hackett interviewed. He just found out that Brees Hall is good at football, too, he said, which is wild. What did he say? He's like, I had no idea Brees Hall could catch the ball. Hackett said the offense coordinator. I'm, exactly, I'm, exactly par what he I'm said. paraphrasing a little bit. Okay. Because we met okay. him, too. He seems yeah. like a good boy. Good, good boy. boy. Had a good yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, par I'm paraphrasing a little. Got it. Maybe face a bit. Maybe voice a bit, I mean. Yeah. Got it. But paraphrasing more. Anyways, Aaron Rodgers was named most inspirational teammate by him. Congratulations. Yes, him another award. Congrats. Congrats. <laughs> that one on the mantle. That one got released today. Inspiring week. I wonder what the uh I wonder what the response. <laughs> oh. You think Aaron has seen it all? Uh no, I don't think he's seen it all. I think he's he's seen some stuff, maybe, but yeah, not, he's not digging in there trying to get in the trenches. Buddy, I think you should learn some stuff about it. There's some people really pissed. You know what I mean? Would be funny if uh, right after that he just laughing to himself like, "Oh boy, there's no chance I'm checking my phone all week now." Oh, like just muting a tweet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was wild that happened. Obviously, Jimmy Kimmel ain't rightfully so incredibly pissed mm -hmm. yeah they've talked a lot of shit about each other that's a serious allegation i'll be excited to see how it all ends up but yeah on um, thursday afternoon offense coordinator nathaniel hackett spoke about running back Brees hall and his involvement in the passing game i think that there was a transition for him getting into football shape missing all the otas and all the training camp which you could see how dynamic he was going to be i don't think i was ready for him to be as productive as he was in a pass game yes, Tony. exactly i mean that's that's yeah. a problem with society not right exactly, right exactly, not exactly. Verbatim. Town's not the only human that took that that way. Though. To be honest, no. I didn't see the first two sentences of that quote. I only saw I wasn't ready for him to be as productive in the past game. I, this team next year, I hope they start fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they better. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> I hope they start fast. That could get real loud real quick. We got the Patriots, though. At home, you know, this could be Bill's last game, or Yeah. Fuck. Is it going to be packed? That whole yeah, place. They're do a tribute, like a tribute on the scoreboard, you think, maybe pregame? No, 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 no. They won't do that. Will it be packed? Uh, I don't know what the Nor'easter yeah, I honestly no, don't. No. No. What if they made a song like Matthew McConaughey did? Goodbye, Billy B. Hey, to watch you leave. But your team suck badly. Defense yeah. didn't. Defense is top 10, all categories. But. Yeah, I, I have thought about that possibility. I've completely deleted it from my brain. Monday is the biggest day of my entire life. 
oh, that's getting carried into Tuesday. Yeah, they're yeah. meeting on Monday. Which, which, maybe. Yeah. Which, which, I'm, which I am completely fine. T- take time. Don't just, like, finish the season and be like, okay, let's move on. Like, Ron Rivera, get his, like, sure. He, he, he can get his head chopped off Sunday after the game. But you can't <laughs> do that to Bill. Take time. Now, once again, that was a metaphor. A met- metaphorically it's chopping his head fu- coach head. Fired. Yes. But I'm saying, like, with Bill... Don't be ra- – just ask what the plan is, and Bill will give it to you. Like, he's going to have a top five pick in every single round. Like, who was a top five pick in the second round last year? I don't know. Laporta? Yeah. L- Musgrave? Yep. Yeah. Like, Keep going. Like, there are a lot of – Who was the seventh round Joey, pick? Joey Laporta? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> we're talking about this guy as if, as if he's just fucked every draft pick the Patriots have ever had. And, you know, sure, like every other GM – Oh, yeah. By the way, this is the GM Bill we're talking about. Like every other GM, he's missed on picks, absolutely. And the guys after that, the picks that he's done that weren't right were very, very good, sure. But, like, give the guy a fucking break. They, they were talking about today. The, the only other time he's finished last in the AFCs was his first year in New England in 2000. Like, are we really going to go 20 Three years without finishing last in the division, then as soon as he, as soon as thing turns bad, like okay, get him out. Yeah, well, and obviously, whenever I said he was the greatest GM in the history of the NFL, you heard a lot of people just start pointing at his draft picks. It's like won six Super Bowls. Yeah, so he's a GM that constructed a team yeah. that won six Super Bowls over a period of time that will never be duplicated ever again. Joining us now is a man who has a decision to make on whether he's going to travel to Houston to watch his Michigan football team play, or he's going to stay at home because there's a chance massive news is coming out of New England and other places. Senior NFL insider Adam Schefter joins us. Schefter! Adam, what's going on? Hey, congrats to your Michigan team. Okay, we get it. We get it. (laughs) We're we're very pumped for Monday. Hey, speaking of Monday, have you decided on whether or not you're going down to Houston? Do we think this New England news is dropping on Monday? That's carrying into at least Wednesday, right? I don't know when it's going to happen. You know, I just don't know yet. That that is that's the real question of the week, right? Like, when do the Patriots and Bill Belichick come to some sort of resolution? Whether that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I I, I don't know when that's going to happen. That that is obviously the biggest event in the NFL that will happen next week, and I don't think they know right now. I I really don't. Like, to me, Bill Belichick is focused on the end of the year, and then he's focused on the exit meetings that he's going to want to have with his players. He's not going to want anything to disrupt that. Now, Robert Kraft could decide, hey, Bill, I want to meet Monday morning, 9 a.m. That could happen. But he has not said that yet, so we don't know exactly when they'll be meeting. Do you have a good relationship? We'll pivot away from that real quick as we try to, you know, extract as much information Mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. Don Yee, you got a good relationship with Don Yee? I've known Don for a long time, you know. But Pat, I've done this. I've done this job now for thirty-five years. So I would hope that I would know a lot of people. Before. Congratulations! Congratulations! Not right? easy. Like I knew, I knew AJ when he was launching his podcast career and had me on as one of his very first guests. Wow, podcast! Yes. Yeah. That's right. Thank Bring it back. Chef. Appreciate it. Thank you for helping him launch that. Because without the well, sh- without he launched the- it himself, but I just no, no. Out. Without oh, the Chef the episode, mm-hmm. yeah. without the Chef the episode, we map. have no idea. No, no, nothing. We have no idea. I was never. I wouldn't on. be here. Yeah, you were. I wouldn't be here right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah, the- there we go. <laughs> yeah, I love my yeah. time on the Hawkcast as well. It was uh, <laughs> your favorite podcast. It was an absolute blast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Don Yee for Harbaugh, and obviously what you said earlier in the week has caused a big discussion, especially because they're leading in the national championship. But the reality of the business is, when do these conversations start happening between agents for coaches? and ownership is it already starting are they waiting until the season ends like we all know the firings normally come on monday the day after so we know officially how many spots are going to be open pretty much but when does don Yee start knowing what the actual market looks like for hardball well don's job is to go out and let jim coach football and let him make all the calls that he has to make and if anything ramps up or gets serious then obviously i think the proper channels have to be observed and a NFL team, I think would have to officially request permission to speak with Jim. And I think everybody's going to be respectful till after their season ends. So I think once Michigan plays Monday night, uh, I think Tuesday, starting Tuesday, everything is on the clock and everything's an option, but Don is, you know, Don's job is to kind of feel it out. Okay. Would you be interested? How interested and have conversations that occur so that when Michigan season's ready and Jim's ready to talk, 
he has a lay of the land to know how it might lay out. Is that happening right now, you think, or already has happened since he signed with Don Yee? Again, I, I, I would be of the mind, I don't know that specifically, but I think you hire Don to go do whatever he oh, does perfect. in the background, right? And then, okay, when everything's ready, then, then we go take the steps that we have to to make things official. All right. Well, have an incredible weekend. We appreciate you hopping on here out of nowhere. Just saw the alarm. I, uh, I'm hoping to actually see you in person on Monday. Yes. That is my hope. Hell yeah. And, and every, But I will say this. Every time I think it's done, I'm met with another little setback. Like even just now, Whatever. I think I've arranged it. I think I've arranged it for me to be there on Monday. And then I get a call. Are you aware of the 15 inches of snow that's supposed to be around the New York, Connecticut area? And so I'm like, no what? So it, 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 I don't know. Like I'm trying to fly out Sunday and now I'm hearing of 15 inches of snow. So maybe I'm not going to make it there, but if no. it's not for that snow, I'll be there. Okay. So will you have a set down? I think we got you a set down there too, right? Don't you have a set up crew all day Monday? You know, the great part is we could do the show in person. And if there's any Patriot news on Monday, we're right there, ready to rock and roll at any moment. All right, beat the snow, Shefty. Beat the snow. Mm -hmm. All right, we need you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Michigan man, Adam Sheffer. Thank you, buddy. All right, so we don't – Patriot uh, next week. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Extension, finish the contract, firing. Yeah, no extension. No way there's going to be an extension, but, yes, finish the contract. You think Bill Belichick's going to go into his last year of his contract? I like just as the businessman that he is. I don't, I don't know. I don't think he'll want to, but if it comes down to that, then I think he'll leave. At what point next week, say it gets to Thursday, Friday, and we haven't heard anything, what day do you start just losing it? If, if it get Monday. Mon <laughs> Monday's going to suck. No, but what if you guys beat the Jets? Yeah. Don't matter. Beating the Jets is worse for me. All right, let's go back to the games. What did you learn what there? If Bill wants them? What if Bill wants a change of scenery? What if it's mutual? And they're like, Bill's like, you know what? I, I want another challenge. I want to go take on another team. Yeah, I'm actually – the thought of this even being possible here has kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah. And, that, and that could be the case. But then he, he's getting traded. It's not like he's just going to walk out the door. That's just, that's just not going to happen. Hmm. All right, let's go to the next game. We like the Patriots. Bill's going to win his last game. We, we Potential last game. 9-0 and against the Jets. Browns, Bengals, Bengals favored by... Seven. Seven. Seven, yeah. Nobody's playing for the Browns. Joey Flacco's out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Njoku, out. Uh, uh, Driscoll's the star. Amari Cooper, out. Amari yep. Cooper's definitely out. Uh, Miles Garrett. Definitely. Uh, Miles Garrett, defensive side. Let's go through who's all out on the defensive side of the ball. M. Denzel Ward. Taki Taki, probably. Seven points a lot. Yeah. Yeah. The Bengals have not looked the same. No. No, and who's playing for them? Did you see that interview with Jamar Chase at his locker? I did. I, I like Jamar. I think we get the camera on Jamar more. I'd like hearing his thoughts. I would, too. Those questions were absurd. I, I thought yeah. if he's representing himself, fair questions. If he has an agent, I think that was kind of, you know what I mean? I think that was yeah. a little bit. Yeah, it's weird. I, I mean, I think he handled it well for himself, but like, yeah, what are you supposed to say? What are you, like, come on, I'm not going to negotiate against myself through the media. Hey, do you want guaranteed money in your first two years? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, would, you, what would, you, would you like your money up? Yeah. Will you take a pay cut for T. Hick? What? What are we doing? What are we even, I'm happy with the way Jamar handled it. I think he has a great personality, but man, I wish there would have been a potential just role reversal, flip script, how unprofessional this is. How bad you're potentially screwing me for mm -hmm. like generational wealth here. Like all of that stuff. And he handled it beautifully. Is he playing? Who's playing in this game? So uh, I found a tweet here from Ari Miroff. Uh, Flacco's out. What about Dove? How's, how's, I haven't wow. seen that. Oh. Uh, Flacco's out. Miles ah, Dove's out. in it right now. He Big is. time. He is. Dove's what, in the what blender. Happened? Well, there's some aggregator hate going on from a, an account that didn't know who was sending it from their own account, Game Day NFL. They got to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. Guy had to code something on Google Chrome to get back TweetDeck. Oh, yeah. Really? Allegedly. Allegedly. And Dove has been out there doing it. But Dove yeah. said, hey, what are we talking That's about? That's bullshit. Fucking talking liars. The internet's the best. Yeah. <laughs> I listened to that whole eight minutes. Oh, yeah. I listened to that whole eight minutes. And at the end of it, I'm like, the internet's the greatest place on earth. <laughs> This guy allegedly been hiding in the background of their Twitter account, mm -hmm. launching bombs. That's what they're alleging. Yep, just waiting to pounce. Just launching bombs on people from somebody else's account, burying people from hilarious. somebody else's account. Yeah. That's a hilarious thought that that's even happening. And then him, that's not true. What are we even talking about? Listen I didn't to these do guys. They're liars. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah that's the best. Dove didn't report any of this? No, this is from Ari Mirov. Ari Mirov might be the only one that survives. Yeah, yeah. Is bad. There's a chance. Ari is. This is the time. But uh, he said Flacco, Miles Garrett, Amari Cooper, Juan Thornhill, uh, Greg Newsom, Dustin Hopkins, Mike Ford, Anthony Walker are all ruled out right now. Okay, give me the Bengals. I'll take the Bengals. Even though I didn't hear David Njoku's name. Mm. He could win it himself. He can kick. How long has oh, Driscoll yeah. been on the Browns? Because... It was obviously they brought in Flacco when it was PJ Walker and DTR and Deshaun Watson. When did when did Driscoll get there? Probably recently because he was Bengals. Oh, so he knows their defense. Oh yeah, and give me the Bengals. I'll take the Bengals as well. Uh, Jags Titans. This one's for the AFC South for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and for the Tennessee Titans, it's because losing, awful. Any other fucking great ideas, Gentry? <laughs> Mike Vrabel. Not having it this week with the media. Three and a half point dogs at home. Trevor Lawrence listed as questionable. Doug Peterson said true game time decision. AJ, who do you like? So I know Tannehill will be starting for the Titans, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Three and a half seems like a lot, but I love uh, I love that for myself, and I love the Tennessee Titans here. I'll take the Titans as well because I need them. Oh, need them. Need them. Let's go Houston yeah, Texans, New Orleans Saints. Is there anything on the line here? Or, I'm sorry, Atlanta Falcons, New Orleans Saints. If the yeah. Bucs lose, the winner of this wins the South, I believe. Yes. Okay, so Artie Smith could still potentially win the NFC South. Yep. Mm -hmm. With the year that he has had and the way the crowd has turned and came back on his side and then turned yet again. Three-point dogs on the road in New Orleans. AJ. So I feel I feel like I've picked the Falcons every single week, and I don't know if I've won a pick when I've picked the Falcons. Have you? Uh, I've picked the Falcons alongside of you, I think. So I don't know. Against the Jets. I don't know our history. With They're them. a very back-and-forth team. I like the Saints at home. I, just strictly because they're at home, that's a tough barn to play in. What's the last thing I saw? Derek Carr was doing it, right? Yeah, they just beat yeah. the fuck out of the Bucs. Yeah, mm -hmm. last week. Dude. All right, I'll take the Saints as well. No offense, Artie. We appreciate you. Love you, Artie. Yeah. Love you, Artie. Great. Bucks, Panthers. Bucks can seal it. Baker Mayfield's got a lot of money on the line and incentives. Mm -hmm. Take it on the Panthers in front of 50 to 60 people. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Electric atmosphere. I think it's going to be tough to so what Diggs might know, or is anyone on the Panthers' side here? I'm not saying they can't win. We know how the season goes, but I'm taking the Bucks, obviously. Yeah, heavy Bucks action. Yeah, I'd assume. And remember, We've been given a couple gifts. Yeah. I'll take the Bucks as well. Minnesota Vikings, Detroit Football Lions. Dan Campbell, fresh off a tough radio interview. Mm -hmm. A tough loss to the Cowboys. Yep. Some ref fuckery. Oh, well, yeah. What's on the line this weekend? Nothing. We could move up to the two seed if the Cowboys lose, I believe. And yes. also, we did just hang our NFC North Champions banner in Ford Field. Whoa. And there will be a ceremony, they said. Banner game? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, boys would have to lose the commanders for them to go up. Three and a half point favorites at home. Banner game for the Detroit Lions. First time in 30 years they've been able to do this. AJ, wow. what do you think? I mean, banner game at home. Dan Campbell, like you said, coming off a, a, a testy uh, radio interview. Give me the lines at home. I agree. Let's go. Broncos, Raiders, three-point favorites at home. Broncos, certainly something. Raiders, awesome right now, f seemingly. Broncos' future is hilarious to think about. They got a bunch of dead cap space staring them right in the face. Mm -hmm. They have a Russell Wilson situation that's going to come to an end. They got a full rebuild potentially this offseason so Sean Payton can build the team in his vision and his view. And then you think about the Raiders, they've seemingly figured out what they want. Mm -hmm. They want Antonio Pierce to lead the squad back to relevancy. Three point favorites at home. Con man. Stidham came from Vegas. So this defense probably very, very familiar with Stidham as well. Okay. AJ, who do you, who do you got? So, I mean, what, the Raiders find ways to win when Aiden O'Connell throws for, like, 40 yards in a game, don't they? They did, 62, yes. yeah. Recently, yeah. So, yeah, give me the Raiders. They find a way. We saw some clips of Max, Devontae. They seem to be feeling good. I like the Raiders. I'm not a professional gambler. I assume professional gamblers are like, give me the Broncos for some reason. They'd be able to have some sort of take and, like, deliver it very properly yeah. mm -hmm. and professionally. They bench their quarterback. All hell's breaking loose. Yeah. The Raiders are dancing, doing the soul train line again. I like the Raiders. Yes. So I'm going to take the Raiders. That, what I just said, is the exact public thought yeah. in sports gambling. The other side thought would be Broncos. You know, they won last week's Stidham and Raiders got yeah. beat by Colts. 
well, the Colts. At the Loud House. Broncos. Yeah, it's not easy to win a Loud House. No. Broncos are home against Easton Stick. Cowboys Commanders, here we go. Come on. 13 point favorites <laughs> on the road. Dak Prescott, Mike McCarthy, right. Micah Parsons. Right. The team that is Brant, Brandon Aubrey. Right. right. Pro Bowl kicker, rookie, hasn't missed. Most points in the NFL this season. Dog. That's crazy. Travel to Washington Commanders who are just waiting for Ron Rivera to be fired to move on to a new day. Yes. Who do you got? How do you got him, AJ? Man, 13 does seem like a lot. I wanted to ask you quick about this guy. When he kicks the ball, his ball flight is crazy. It's like a, a bit of a fade into a hook, right? It feels Is it every kick like that? It ends up being a draw, inevitably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hits that's what I mean, like... Yeah, like, but he hits like a – it's a weird, like, slow-moving draw where it almost feels like, oh, here we go now, oh, right in, uh, right through the uprights, right in the middle. It's it's crazy to watch. I feel like a lot of them are like, oh, that's, oh man, he's way, way wide right. And then, you know, just tucks he, it right he in. He brought one from outside the post in last week, and right. I assume yeah. he had no worries the entire time because that's his ball flight. Just like a golfer off the driver, like, he hits it. And he's like a smooth swing, and he hits it. There's guys that hit fades. You know, like Matt Prater hits a ball that goes like that. Mm -hmm. He just plays it. You know, he just plays it. I assume he has no idea why it happens. Is it safe? Is it safer? I know I've heard golfers say uh, they don't want to hit a draw because they said, uh, what, a, I can hit a fade. I can talk to a fade, but a hook won't listen. That's what I've heard people say. Yeah, I assume that a hook is probably his miss. I, I do, I'm not 100% sure if that's his miss or not. But, like, for him, there is a little bit of an advantage because where the block point is, as opposed to being middle of upright, oh. Yeah. He probably aims a little bit to play it mm -hmm. around. So it might actually help in that case. And there's a chance, like, later in his life, he'll just be working out, and that'll stop happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he'll just have to, like, you know, like, you want to fix your slice, you want to play it. Like, for him, his draw, like, he just plays it. And when it stops, you just got to have the mental toughness to be like, all right, the ball goes straight now. Or it slices uh -huh. a little bit and get through it. But whatever he's doing, I hope he does forever. He's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Fun to watch. 13 points. I like the Cowboys as well. Bears, Packers. The red-hot Chicago Bears. Justin Fields said, there isn't much to do in Green Bay except for watch football. Ooh. Okay? And then, obviously, Jordan Love knows the importance of this rivalry, watching Aaron Rodgers proclaim himself as a landlord of an entire city, the third largest city in the United States of America. The Chicago Bears are playing their best football. The Green Bay Packers are playing their best football. Right. Jair Alexander might be captain, certainly back for this big one in Lambeau to secure a playoff spot for the Packers. AJ, do the Bears play spoiler, or do the Packers get a massive win? Man, I think the Packers get a massive win. I'm taking Green Bay here. I think they know what's on the line. And this, I mean, the Bears team that they were playing today is much different than the team they played early in the season. So I think it's going to be a good game, but give me the Packers. So Jalen Johnson, pro bowler, I think, might be out for the Chicago Bears defensive side. Mm. Here's all the scenarios for the Green Bay Packers. A couple ties in there. You know, you tie. Yeah, yeah. The scenarios are bananas. Yeah. We appreciate Dirty putting these all together. Yeah, baby Dirty. Baby Dirty. Dirty. Baby Dirty. You're taking the Packers, AJ? Yep. It's going to be a loud house times two there. That's 425. That's what they said last year. This is two weeks in a row. Romo and Nance. Call it Bears. Oh, Romo and Nance. Okay. Yep. Chris, Let's not forget, Cole Komet's back. Christian Watson is tracking to play as well. The Packers, I think, are getting several guys back that haven't played the last couple weeks. What's the weather going to be like? Is it going to be a cold. nor'easter up be there? Tundra. Nor'easters don't go to the Midwest. That, no, I think there is that'd supposed to be a little bit of idiot. snow that's kind of traveling from that way, but no, I think just very cold. <sighs> Justin Fields and Eberflus going into the offseason would love, right? I mean, this would be a nice this little, day. Be nice little Green Bay day on Sunday. Justin. What's that? Yeah. Nice little Green Bay day on Sunday, 36 and son. Oh, it's not bad at all. Yeah. Justin Fields. Beautiful. Did just follow Jackson Smith and Jigba and DK Metcalf on Instagram, I believe. <laughs> Something to think about. That is correct. Seattle. The people are saying now Seattle, Justin Fields might be a match made in heaven. I mean. That's just what people are saying. Hey, I, it's maybe he just saw just... some content and was like, that's dope. Sick. Well, Jackson Smith and Jigba doesn't make much sense either because when Jackson Smith and Jigba actually played in college, it was with Fields. So how come he didn't follow him before? That's what I mean, man. Right? <laughs> right? Right? That's a great question. Yeah. That's a great question. Give, me the, give me the Bears. Give me the Bears. Ooh, right. No, no, okay. Packers. Give me the Packers. All right, all right. Did the same oh. thing last time. 
Give me the Packers. Give me the Packers. I don't want to sound like a hater sure. because I made a comment in March. <laughs> that gets thrown in my face. Yeah, but you said that earlier today. You said, hey, I was wrong. Well, I've Looks said like, that a hundred times. Well, I know, but, you know. Never really gets brought up. You know, we're talking live action in there. Give me the Packers. They're going to do it. Jordan loves it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. He is a guy. And they'll be able to stop that Bears defense, I think. Or Bears offense, I mean. I think. Yeah. They had a very good, I mean, again. Two completely different teams. Week one, obviously, Justin Fields has played a lot better since then, but they had a very good plan for Justin Fields week one. This is good, though. That's a good chip on their shoulder. For our the show? Guys. Yeah. You think? You think? <laughs> yeah, our show. <laughs> Give me think? the Packers. Good luck out there. What's that? I mean, you just you just said you think Joe Barry can stop Justin. Uh, do you see what Joe Barry? Did you see what he did last week? Oh, yeah. Jalen Hurd. I mean, he, he can spin it. No, there's no Jaren Hall. There, excuse me. There's no doubt. What you call him, Jalen Hur? Yeah, Jalen Hur. That's a player. <laughs> that's a player somewhere. That's a player somewhere. 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 The O'Connell decision to start him was, yeah, quite even, the decision. Even oh. yeah, why was that? And then they bring in Mullins came yeah, in. What happened? Went right down halftime. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what was it? Was that last throw? When 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 uh, what's his name? Jaren Hall. When Jaren Hall stepped up in the pocket, clean pocket on too. third and fifteen, and he let. <laughs> He threw a football. Yeah. He threw a football. It came out of his hand here. And then got he away just, from him, Con. Yeah, got okay, away from him. That's fine. But you saw Kevin O'Connell go. I can't have What it. the fuck was that? That can't be representing our team. And that was it. Give me the Packers. Seahawks, Cardinals. Cardinals getting three at home. Who do you like, AJ? I like the Cardinals here. I don't know why, but I do. I'm just trusting my instincts. What's the implications on this one? Anything? Green Bay loses. Seattle wins. Yeah. Seattle's in. All right, give me Seattle Seahawks. Even though I love Kyler Murray and Colt McCoy. Love him. See, I, I heard Seahawks. Colt talk about it. Sorry, that, that's what got me. I heard Colt talking to you, and he was singing the praises of Kyler. So that, that really kind of put me over the edge there. He said he was bullish on the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He ain't coming back off of them. You already picked the Seahawks, unfortunately. Man, tough. These are some tough. These tough. are some tough ones. Tough. We have no idea how these games are going to go. Like, Well, every week. but certainly. With all the different people playing, though, now, like, how are you going to – it's going to be fun, though. All right. I'll take the Seahawks there. Uh, L.A. Rams, San Francisco, 49ers. Niners favored by four at home. What's on the line here? Nothing. Nothing. No one's Wentz, really playing. Wentz versus Darnold. Yeah. Puka yeah, needs Wentz. 28 yards, I believe. Mm-hmm. So he'll get Wentz versus Darnold. Should be a great Kind game. of exciting. No. Two sprains versus the Gase effect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Dream matchup in 2017. 2023, even better. Yeah. yeah. Different kind of dream. AJ? I like what Sam Darnold does. I like Sam Darnold. He came in and slang it oh, a couple weeks ago. I know he threw a pick at the end, but I like what he's doing. Give me San Fran. If Carson. You got to take Wentz. If Wentz Carson, is an old, he's no Colts. He's a Colts quarterback. You got to go. for a little bit. Yeah, for sure. But like, if, he, uh, if he's on. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just thought mm-hmm. of Baker Mayfield. It was Sean McVeigh. Yes. Yeah. And if Carson's on. Yeah. That is very possible. For with sure. Puka. With Puka. With, yeah, with McVay, you know, drawing it up. <laughs> yeah. two, two out if he's not. If he's not on. He's going to turn the ball over six times. And throw another two interceptions that get dropped somehow. Exactly. Even though the Niners defense probably doesn't do that often. No. There will be eight potential turnovers. Yeah. Let alone a fumble that maybe he scoops back up himself. Right. And scores. <laughs> with McVay. McVay said with Puka, you know, they want to be really safe with him, but it would also be cool to see history, which he needs four catches and 30 yards. He's lined up a running back the first four. Yeah. A couple yeah. swing passes. A couple, couple, couple wheels. Let's get a wheel right out of here. Let's get him yeah. out on the flat. Mm-hmm. Let's get him a completion. Maybe one of those jet sweeps across. Yep. Yep. Push pass. <laughs> get one of those. Get this thing figured out behind the line of scrimmage so we don't have to worry about nothing. Give me Carson Wentz. Okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Right. <laughs> Love it. Great pick. Love it. Yes. I mean, AJ hasn't seen a snap of Sam Darnold. Because if he has, then he would know that Whoa. On, on third and eight, Sam Darnold's fucking right through his hands. Fourth down. <laughs> that thing was fumbled immediately. Right. Carson could do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but Carson's picking that son of a bitch up. He's rolling around. He he's, might long snap. Throw yeah, backwards. he's throwing it 70 yards to Tutu Owl. He might gra- He might go through his hands. He'll bend over long snap yeah. mm-hmm. through his legs yeah. to a tight end. Puka, 40 yards. Or he'll pick that thing up from 40 yards back trying to make a play and get sacked and be looking at a fourth and 74. Which we've never seen before. No. It would be cool. 
end up with a punt, losing 35 yards <laughs> yeah. from the first down. All right, give me Carson Wentz. Yep. Yep. <sighs> tomorrow I say it, tomorrow I like it. Yeah, yeah let's go. He's been training in, again. in Indiana, hasn't he? Say it yeah. again. It so. was a Gruden right before. Yeah, Hopefully he, you know, deleted his email and didn't pick up any possible phrases, habits. habits. Yep. Phrases. Say it again. Jimmy Carson wins. Hell yeah. 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 Kansas City yeah. Chiefs, Los Angeles Chargers. Chiefs getting three and a half in L.A. Obviously the L.A. situation is what it is. Fired the GM and the head coach middle of the season. Yep. That's not fantastic news. No. Who's playing for them? East and six quarterback, I can tell you that. Love that. Who's playing quarterback for Kansas City? Blaine. Gabbard. Hot Rod. Gabbard. Yes. Who do you got, AJ? I like the Kansas City Chiefs here. Yeah. Me as well. They have to. Yeah. Yeah. Philadelphia Eagles, New York Giants. Philadelphia Eagles favored by six. What's going on in New York right now? I saw Dayball and a reporter had a little give and take about hair, Bruce. What, what do we think? Hmm. Yeah, Dayball was jealous of that guy's hair, I, I suppose. Ty, Tyrod will be slinging it around. Um, probably lose by, you know, a field goal, a point perhaps. But I think we cover this. Okay, I like that's for the Giants. Do you believe in him, uh, AJ? I, I believe in Tyrod. I really do. I love what he can do, but I'm taking the Eagles. Now, the Eagles could win the division if Dallas loses. Everybody's playing for the Eagles? I believe so. Even if they're not, they want to go in the playoffs on a roll. They don't down, want to, con- they want, they want to feel good about both it. Both 11 and Philadelphia five. clinches NFC East division title with Philadelphia win and Dallas loss or tie, of course. Philly tie, Dallas loss. A lot of ties. Yep. Yeah, a lot of those. Give me the Eagles. Sorry about it, Bruce. Yeah, I need it. And the matchup of the weekend. The Buffalo Bills will take on the Miami Dolphins in Rick Ross's town Ooh. Oh. for a shot at a title. Do the Buffalo Bills, who have a quarterback who did not make the Pro Bowl, who has the most counted for touchdowns in the entire NFL, mm-hmm. continue their hot streak since Kadarius Toney couldn't line up on sides against the Kansas City Chiefs? Ugh. How about Tua and the Dolphins? Obviously a little bit worried about this Dolphins team. Is it Joe over after they lose yeah. to the Baltimore Ravens? Joe Bover. Yeah. Or are they going to respond and bounce back? I did not watch Hard Knocks this week. Gumpsh, what are the vibes of the Miami Dolphins after Joe Bover makes an appearance against the Baltimore Ravens? Everybody and their dog is on the Bills, and it moved to two and a half. That's all you need to know, my friends. Boom. Explain that a little bit more, please. So if all the money is on one team and they move the line the other way, they usually feel good about the other team. When did this most recently take place? Literally just a couple days ago. Yeah, it just happened. Michigan Bama? It yes. was. Yes, yes, it was. Exactly. Michigan Bama. Yeah. And then Michigan ended up yeah. mm-hmm. doing what Michigan did. Mm-hmm. Normally the sports books know because they're time travelers. Yes. Yeah. You're saying this bodes well for the Miami Dolphins who have played well against the Bills in Miami? If Mostert's in, I feel a lot better about it. I think we can still pound the rock. We got we to gotta keep Josh off the field. Like That's got to be the game plan because our defense is banged up. Yeah, they're saying it's Vic Fangi. Over. Not just yet. We're still we're still in the playoffs. An AFC East title would be massive, though. It's been 2008, I think, the last time with uh, Chad touchdown Pennington Whoa. threw it. What? AJ. What's your deal? Who cares about your division title? It matters how deep you go in the playoffs. No one cares if you won your division title. How about a, how about a oh, home on. playoff game, AJ? Does that? Yeah, that, you yeah. better win it. I'm saying, yeah, it's cool to do. Like They, don't, they just want to go deep in the playoffs. So they should rest so they everyone, won. then. Yeah, why are we even oh. playing the game then? We're already in the playoffs. Right. Yeah, okay. So who do you got, AJ? I got the Buffalo Beals. I don't know if, uh, if you were there, I believe, on the way home or whatever. After the you know the, the Dolphins had a tough one against the Ravens, I said, what's going on with them, Gump? And he said, it's just who we are, pal. And he acted, He didn't sound like he had much confidence in the team. Oh, so he was I'm going dead. Bills here. He was. He was. It was it was Bubba Gumpino over. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you show me yeah. anybody who feels good after watching that. I, I'd like to meet him. Well, we were watching on a laptop <laughs> there for a while. That yeah, was a good spot. It's a great spot. Great sports. Things board. were going better while I was on the laptop, actually. And then we get it on TV, and all of a sudden the Ravens just say, "Oh, hello, I'm him." Mm-hmm. Hello, that's right. Hello, that's right. How you doing? Oh, nice like, to meet you. Hmm. My name is him. What's your name? Not him. We still doing it? What's that? He him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, like the, <laughs> he he is him. 
Like all the players saying, I'm him. Is that we still doing that? No. Well, you don't like that? I think you, you introduce like yourself yeah. now. I'm him. Now okay. you have to introduce yourself. Okay. I have it in my uh, email signature. I'm him? No, he him. No, of course. That's still happening. But I thought we were talking about naming yourself him. Well, now I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> You're talking about Himothy? Yeah. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Him McMahon? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bingo. We still doing that. Him Kelly? Yep. Mm -hmm. Him Julio? Himnasium? Yep. Boom. Him Cameron? Yep. Him Ursay? <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Mm. Is that what we're talking about? Yep. Yeah. Him What's Perfect? your name? Him Anthony? I don't know if that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Anthemi. Pretty good. Yeah, there I like that word. Anthemi. He was right there in the middle. Yep. <laughs> or, or, or just Hemi. <laughs> H-I-M-Y. Himoni. <laughs> <It's my money>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who do you got, AJ? You like the Bills? Buffalo Bills. <clears throat> All right, give me the Dolphins. Boom. Hell Look how yeah. good the Bills are going to feel, though, Pat. They're leaving Buffalo. They're going to arrive in Miami. Like what I do every single time I fly anywhere in the winter. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh. There's warm weather out there. You're right. The joints, so the joints and the muscles feel better. And the Dolphins have been doing it all week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How, many, how many injuries you guys got? All of them, huh? X is out, Chubb, Phillips. Oh, yeah. Give me the Bills. Okay. Yeah, I'll take the yeah. Bills. Bills are the only – I'm not the only team, but they've had their full offensive line every game this year. I think they are the only team. Yeah, they must be. I, I think the Ravens for like a little because Morgan Big Moses deal. went out. That is a huge deal. Huge Their deal. center, uh, Morse, is questionable with an illness right now. Our guy, Mitch? We know Mitch. Oh, Mitch, yeah. Mitch will be there. Yeah, Mitch's Mitch going to play. Gonna what, play. What's the illness? Uh, that's what I thought. I'm playing. Mm -hmm. This illness, though, that everybody's been getting is a, no a nuisance. Oh, yeah. It's the worst. It is uh, congestion, mm -hmm. yep. throat. Yep. Oh, Coughing. Whole thing. respiratory deal. Yeah. Hope everybody's okay, including Mitch Morse. That's right. Yeah. All right. Let's end in the weekend in a beautiful fashion. Remember, if you want to go to any of these games, you need to go to one ticket buying platform and one ticket buying platform only. That's the greatest ticket buying platform on planet Earth and the, the moon. moon. That's our friends at SeatGeek, Connor. Yeah, and you can use po code PAT30. P See, this is why this is why we can't, yes. we can't play anything. Yes. Anything that is playing involving me, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. My brain, it can't just work. keep going. It can't work with my brain. It, it has worked, just like SeatGeek no, no, has it, for many, many years. Forever. For 28, 28, <laughs> 28, uh, 28 million <laughs> downloads. Yeah. yeah, 28 million users. Incredible. Best best app on the planet right there with DoorDash. And right now, what happens? Right now, code PAT30, P-A-T-3-0. Get, uh... <laughs> Yep, here we go. <laughs> get, get, get $30 off. I wasn't sure if it was a percentage. $30 off. Football tickets. Football tickets. But again, you know, some limits apply, rates and stuff like that. Sure. Uh, you got it. You got it. <laughs> if a ticket. Yeah. If covering you're, the legal. If you're, if, you're going to, if you're going to a Panthers game and tickets are 5 bucks, you're not getting 25 bucks back for going. Yeah, to they're not game. paying you to go. No. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to be at least 30 bucks. we think. Exactly. I, we think. We think. Yeah. Seeky is the best, though. It, it is, is not even a they, question. They love that read. They definitely love that read. Uh -huh. Dude, he nailed all the uh, talk. Right. Hit them all. Fucking watch. Why don't you do it, motherfucker? Don't fucking come at me. <laughs> don't need negative vibes. Whenever you go to a game, it's good vibes. Good, I'm no, not good, attacking good, good you. Good Friday. I'm not you attacking you. So good Friday. I love it. Yeah. I'm not attacking well, I, you. I thought, I thought we were having around this day in history as well. I thought you might cap it off with Around me. this day. <laughs> about son a of a year bitch. Ago. You son of a bitch. That's my favorite segment we have. Anyways, I don't know how long it's going to last. Anyways, we appreciate Sea Geek. Here's a... Here's a quick story about SeatGeek, okay? It happened within the last two days. So the national championship, uh, championship in Super Bowl tried to take all the boys, you know, like a celebration. Not always possible with passes and hotel rooms and availability for everything. So there's a group that travels to these, and then there's a group that works their ass off back here at the Thunderdome kind of doing their thing. So for national championship, I'd like to celebrate the whole team here. Let's get everybody going. So to watch the game last year at SoFi, we got a suite on the sideline Ooh. that the boys who were not calling the game were able to get into because <clears> we're only <throat> given so many passes and tickets for the game. So we get this suite. Perfect setup. We get to head in there. Can't see the game at all from the suite. I mean, it's the worst suite. Those are the worst suites. But we bought the suite, and we had it perfect setup. So for Houston, we thought the same exact thing. We'll just get a suite for the boys. We'll be able to do the field pass thing. And then afterwards, we'll head back home. It'll be a nice celebration. So we uh, asked uh, ESPN friends if they could get a hold of the suite people for the college football playoff and do some business with them or whatever. Mm -hmm. We get a hold of the person. The person comes back. He's the plug, right? This is the suite plug. Mm-hmm. This is the plug. It's supposed to get. Hey, we got a suite for you, $100,000. Oh, 
hundred thousand bucks, fourteen seater. Mm -hmm. I love it. Four hundred level. Mm. Only got two suites left. Obviously, big game yeah. sold out. This one perfect for the entire team. Oh, we appreciate that. I go, hey Bruce, get on SeatGeek right now. Let's see if there's any suites available. Same level, four hundred level, eighty three thousand dollars. So you're talking about <laughs> come on. You're talking. You know what I mean. So you're talking same exact size suite and everything. So we had the plug, the actual plug, allegedly for the suite. SeatGeek still beat the price of that particular person. So SeatGeek is the plug. SeatGeek is also a ticket buying platform that'll tell you the truth. If it's a bad ticket you're getting in bad price, they'll have a red dot next to it. It's like, hey, this is not going. If it's green though, it's like compared to all the other tickets on the internet that we have scanned, this is a great price for a great ticket. They'll never catfish you either. Right now, PAT30, get $30 off your purchase of any football tickets. Doesn't matter if you shopped on SeatGeek before or not. Shout out to SeatGeek. We appreciate the hell out of them. Love and shout out to that plug guy thinking that he was gonna be able to fuck. Yeah. You, yeah. Come on now. You think you're gonna uh, mm. okay. Joe Bover for that guy. Yeah. Mingo. And also <laughs> no sweet for the boys. No. We bought a nice collection of tickets. Mm -hmm. Boys are gonna be sitting down there. Eighty three thousand dollars in the four hundred. One level. game. Kidding me? One game too. Yeah, sorry, I can't be doing that, but Shout out to SeatGeek, at least getting us a much better price than what the plug mm -hmm. was going to give us. Best in the biz. It's awesome. SeatGeek's the best. As are you for allowing us to do this for a living. 2024 has certainly started in a big way for us. Hell yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Great week. It's going to continue yep. this weekend. Big football tomorrow. Big football Sunday. National championship. We'll be live from Houston on Monday. Then game day on Monday. Right. Then a national championship right. on Monday. Right. Then we fly back, and then there's Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Hell okay. yeah. So everything's going to slow down for us over the next few days. Absolutely. That's good news. That's really good news, AJ. Anything to say to the people here as we head into a great weekend, AJ Hawk? No, I think we should look forward to some great football. We have a great month of football ahead, and it starts mm -hmm. tomorrow. I agree. We're lucky to do this. We appreciate you all. Have the greatest weekend of your life. Boys, great work this week. Hell yeah. You too, Pat. Right back at you. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, yep. Some mm -hmm. of your finest, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, I read, agree. I read some stuff about me. I don't know that that was your fault. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff being said about me. Yeah, those people, though, they also think that a field goal from the 35 um, is longer than it actually is because the end zone. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that on the internet. Mm -hmm. It's good. We're lucky to be here. Amen. A couple shots to the shins this week. That's a nice little reminder of life. Good for mm -hmm. the cows. Harden them up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hell, yeah. Yeah, you know. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <clears throat> all right, that didn't go in. <laughs> we'll see you all uh, on Monday. You're the greatest people of all time. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice that might change their life. Goodbye.